Previously in this Let's Play, I built this incredible industrial town built around a working road network. And over the next 1,000 days, I'll be expanding this area with new factories, farms and mega builds, including a ridiculously good emerald farm, a fully automated create factory, as well as copper and diamond factories. I'll also be heading to the nether to create an entire piglin village, as well as a crazy gold farm and a fortress farm too. And I'd do a whole bunch more than that as well. If you want to play along, the FXNT Create mod pack I'm playing can be downloaded directly from CurseForge. And I've also offered an updated version of this world as a world download to my patrons. And the links to both of those are in the description below. Let's create. Piglins and zombified piglins. That's what we're going to be doing today. And in the last video, we built this incredible netherite factory that produces netherite. And I've got six of them. Actually, I've got 50 blocks of it now, all thanks to this lovely farm. But this farm isn't working 100%. You see, we've got plenty of cinder flour, we've got plenty of obsidian dust, which means we've got plenty of netherite dust, and we've got plenty of ancient scrap. We've even got plenty of XP, but we've got no gold. And that's because turning quartz into gold is not very efficient. So we need a new way of getting gold and in order to do that we need to go to the nether and i think this is the perfect building to do that it also means we're going to need to go through the nether roof and to do that i'm going to need some obsidian some nether act some trap doors some levers and most importantly some tnt i'm also going to need some ladders and some ender pearls which i don't have many of and coming back into this building we're going to need a big old portal which i've already built and as you can see i've surrounded it with netherite blocks because i'm netherite rich so let's get this portal lit and find out where we're going to come out before i do that let me just pop down a warp plate we're going to need one of these and I need the little bit of flint out the middle now we're going to go into the nether and find that we're surrounded by la oh that's useful isn't it oh this is very useful place to come out into the nether let's just get rid of a little bit of this lava and there we go we're a little bit safer so we need to get up to the nether roof but I'm not sure what part of the nether we're in so let's use a little bit of free cam have a bit of a fly around and see what's going on we're not too far from my lava farm just up a few blocks which means we really don't have too far to go to get to the nether roof so I think digging up could be a good plan. And here we go, now we've found some bedrock. But we need this bedrock to be one block thin, so I probably need to do a little bit of digging around it so that we can find a good spot. And something like this would probably be ideal, because I'm pretty sure that's about as high up as we can go. So let's grab ourselves some ladders, get on these ladders, chuck up an ender pearl, and there we go. We're now above the nether roof. That's very convenient. And I want the hole that we're going to be making to be directly above that little hole that I've made. So these four blocks here are directly above my little hole that I've just dug. So let's get rid of some of this bedrock. Oh, and I almost forgot I'm going to need a bunch of pistons too. And we'll start with this spot just here. We put a piston there. We put a bit of obsidian there. We put a bit of nether there we put a tnt there a tnt there we put a trap door there and we put a lever there and then all i need to do is hold some pistons if i flap that trap door i can go underneath and then i just flick that lever aim on oh, and I've, I've ruined it oh geez start again let's try that again piston nether act tnt tnt lever trap door right we'll do it right this time flip the trap door flip the lever oh i popped out again quick so far, this isn't going well. Okay, third time lucky. Piston, netherrack, TNT, TNT, lever, trap door. Go under the trap door. This time, don't come out of being under the trap door. Lick the lever, put aim just there, and hopefully with a bit of luck, boom. We should have underneath that a hole. I did it, guys. I made a hole in the bedrock and now we can get... Oh, jeez, I can't get down. And you might be asking, why are you building a hole in the roof when you've got warp plates and waystones? Well, that's a good question. I don't need to at all, but I want to because it'd be really cool to have an elevator that comes all the way down through the nether, all the way up into here. And at some point today, I'm going to need power. To break the rest of this bedrock, I don't need to do that trick anymore. You see this backpack that I'm wearing? The handy traveler's backpack has a trick up its sleeve and that's that it can put out a bed. And because I'm using the carry-on mod, what I can actually do is move this backpack away from its bed and put it down somewhere else. And now, when I do that, and I put some blocks in front of it, it still thinks that's the bed. And when you pick it up properly, boop, the blocks disappear and the bag goes on your back as it thinks it's still got a bed. So I can duplicate beds doing this and I can also break bedrock. So let's put it down here. Let's pick it up. Let's pop it down there. If I try and pick it up properly to get my sleeping bag back, boom, the bedrock is gone. How very cheaty. You know, how to do that that's cheating no nope, i'm using the tools at my disposal mate in order to achieve the things i want to achieve just might take me a few minutes 
So now I've got a big hole in the top layer, I need to now get rid of these next layers. And that really shouldn't be too difficult, just following the same process that we've just done. Put down a bed, grab the bag, put the bag down, move away a bit, pick up the bag, and there we go. More bedrock just gone. But where does it go? And what about all of these sleeping bags that I'm duplicating? Does that mean I've now got three sleeping bags? Well, no, they just disappear when I get rid of them. So I'm not duplicating anything. In fact, I'm just losing blocks. I'm losing all of this bedrock. So after a few more beds, to break the bedrock i'm now down we've got a big old hole down here which means that we can add in elevators and power and all that sort of stuff which is fantastic but what i do want to do is throw down a warp plate take that out of there pop that in there and now i don't actually need that nether portal at all because i can just pop out here which is very convenient and now i can pop back in there and appear here which is also very convenient and what i could do is i could even put a waystone down and call it the nether roof and now when i click on there i can go anywhere i want Want. and then i can head back to the nether roof which is also very convenient so we got a whole bunch of different ways in and out of the nether roof now but what are we gonna do up here well a piglin farm obviously but before we do that, I want to talk to you about the last video. You see, in the last video, I asked you what mods you want me to add to this world and what builds you want me to do. And I had more comments than I've ever had before. But before we start talking about what mods I'm going to be adding to this world, I want to talk to you about the plan. You see, the most requested build idea I got was to make a diamond factory, a little bit like my netherite factory there. So I've been fiddling with my own mod again in order to help us achieve that in a not very cheaty way. Because you see, farming diamonds is quite a cheaty thing to do, but then so is farming netherite. And I think if you do it in the right way, then it's not quite so cheaty. Other highly requested plans were to build an airport, a zoo, and a factory for all of the different create items. And whilst an airport isn't immediately on my list, and neither is a zoo, I am planning on doing a factory for all of the create things. So I'm definitely going to do that. So that just leaves what mods I'm adding, and we'll talk about that in a little while. Because right now, it's time to head back to the nether and build that zombified piglin farm. So if I understand things correctly, which I probably don't. A zombified piglin farm is just a big old circle up in the sky that zombified piglins can spawn on, then you anger them, they all run towards you, and then they fall down a hole and then you kill them for their gold. But that's not very create. But before we do anything like that, we need somewhere for them to spawn. But we don't want to be building that directly over this portal, we really need to be building it a little bit further away. So let's head off in this direction a little bit and then build upwards. So I'm just going to place some blocks randomly every few blocks. No doubt gas and things will spawn on those and make my life miserable, but that's okay. Okay, actually I've got a lot of gravel, and whilst gravel is spawnable, I can now make gravel layers, and I'm very much hoping with these new blocks that I've added in my mod pack, although that's not available on the download yet, you'll have to wait a while, but I didn't just create new gravel layers, I also created sand layers which can be piled up, as well as mud layers, and mangrove roots layers, and grass layers, and rooted dirt layers, coarse dirt layers, and dirt layers, and this is going to help me a lot when terraforming new areas, and there's another type that I created as well well but we'll get to that another time so now that we're 64 blocks away from our hole over there i'm gonna go upwards and just see how tall the actual nether roof is because i don't know ah 255 is the building height okay in that case we'll come down to level 200 and we'll build our platform up here and i'm gonna put a warp plate down here get rid of my big old tower that i've just made and just put a temporary warp plate down here instead so that we can hop up and down there pretty easily but we don't want this platform to be spawnable so let's throw down some blackstone slabs why didn't you just make it out of slabs? I don't know, because I'm an idiot. And speaking of slabs, wouldn't it be nice if we had grass slabs and dirt slabs and gravel slabs and sand slabs? Well, I have. See, I can make sand slabs. I can make gravel slabs. I can make dirt slabs. And I can make grass slabs. I can even make coarse dirt slabs. And what's really good about these slabs is, well, they work like slabs. They don't have gravity like other gravity blocks, which is fine. I don't really want them to have gravity. But again, this is really going to help me out. Ah, no, I'm falling down. But again, this is really going to help me out with my terraforming. And what's really nice about these slabs is if they're at the top layer, like that one there and these two, I can put flowers on them, but not the gravel one. But I can even put it on sand so we can have sandy flowers. Anyway, that's enough talking about slabs. So next, I need to build the big old spawning platform where the zombified piglins are going to spawn, and that's going to be up there. And doing a little bit of research, zombified piglins will aggro around the player within a 67 by 22 by 67, all the way up to 111 by 20. 22 by 11 area so i don't want to be if i'm afk at this point more than 22 blocks away from the zombified piglins but they're not going to be aggroed on me what 
So here on my creative test world, this is my little plan. We've got a platform with some zombie piglins on it. And if I flick this lever, that deploy is going to spin around. It's going to fire snowballs. And that's going to anger the piglins and they're going to fall down this hole. And they're not going to like it down there. And once they're angered, I can actually turn that off because then they're going to get angered by this deployer. And that's got a sword on it. And that's going to drop us a whole bunch of goodies underneath there. And what that means in terms of design is that these deployers need to be within 22 blocks vertically of the piglins. But I don't. I can be further away from them. And because things won't spawn until they're at least 24 blocks away from the player, I actually want my platform up there by about 24 blocks. So about this height should be ideal. However, it looks like I'm making a magma cube farm rather than a zombie piglin farm at the minute. So this biome probably wasn't the best. In fact, I think that zombie piglins only spawn in nether wastes. So I made a good magma cube farm and that's not what I wanted at all. Oh, geez. Now, according to the wiki, zombified piglins will spawn in crimson forests or nether wastes. And I'm not near any of those. So I guess I've got some flying around to do. Well, it turns out if I'd have just gone north a little bit more from where I was, here's the map. Here's where I am. That's where I built it. And that's our hole then we've got some nether wastes all around here which is ideal so let's craft ourselves another waste stone plonk that down here call it nether wastes roof and now we can hop back over here and destroy everything we've just built and move it over there and that's easier said than done because of this lovely magma cube farm now i don't know if magma cubes are affected by light level but i've got another plan for that and that involves talking to you about what mods i've added see last episode i asked you what mods i should add to this world and there was a lot of responses so let's start by talking about which mods that i'm not going to be adding and that starts with a very highly requested one which was immersive engineering i'm not going to add that because it's not available for forge on the version of the game that i'm playing destroy for create was also very popular and i'm not adding that because that's in beta still and it's basically got a lot of references to drugs and alcohol which i'm not adding to this world likewise any mods that include guns or war as their main theme i'm not going to be adding to this world because i don't think that's appropriate for this let's play tinker's Construct was one that was recommended a lot and I'd love to add that but it's not available for this version of Minecraft. Create Dreams and Desires also looks good but that's still in beta and Create New Age which I've actually tried to add to this world before but it totally broke the world the entire thing just became completely unresponsive so I can't add that and of course I got a whole bunch of comments for Create Connected and Create Power Loaders so a lot of you obviously watching Shells again both of those are still in beta I don't need the Power Loaders one because I've already got Mod Loader on this pack which is well more convenient than that one and the create connected does look fantastic but i'm not adding anything in beta because beta mods tend to break your world or at least change a lot and then break things that you've done with them but the mods that were recommended the most were mechanism which i've played before i absolutely love and i am planning on adding that to this pack at some point when we get into a more futuristic technological age add astra which takes you to space so that you can go visit all other planets in nice little spaceships and i really want to add that but that's a big part of the series that mr beardstone and i are playing on our create astral series so that'll have to wait too and the mod that i got recommended the absolute most was ars nouveau i think that's how you say it and that is all to do with magic in fact i got loads of people requesting that i add magic mods and good news i will add it but just not now the see i do with this let's play in phases we're currently on phase three and each phase has a different theme and a different idea and i'm not planning on my magic phase for a little while so you're gonna have to wait for that one but it does look like something that i'd like to add so what mods have I added? Well, we'll get to that later. Except for the Torchmaster mod. See, I can make mega torches now, which means that I can prevent mob spawning in certain places. And I can almost make those. I just need some diamonds and some gold. And the bad news is I'm completely out of diamonds, but I've got loads of gold. So I think I'm going to have to go mining. So there we go after a little while i've now got nearly three stacks of diamonds so we need diamonds gold wood and torches wooden torches yeah torches made out of wood mate easy one mega torch please thank you very much and now if i pop this down over at our magma cube spawning thing we shouldn't get any magma cube spawning so let's just hop up to that little mini platform that i made chuck that down there and then just disappear for a minute hopefully when i go back all those magma cubes will be gone ah, yes they are good right and get rid of this platform now so now we've got a big old platform in the correct biome and we're actually getting piglins, which is quite surprising because I don't get... Oh, jeez. Because I've got a mega torch. 
Although, I didn't put that down until the piglins had already spawned. So that's why that's there. Get off me block, you. And I'm currently just going around the edges of this, making it a little bit more circular. And it's not really going to be a circle. It's going to be more of a squashed square. But I think that's fine. Now, realistically, this platform's probably nowhere near big enough. Because the aggro range is much bigger. And I've only gone out 24 blocks in each direction. But before I start adding more layers and making it even bigger, I want to make sure it works. So now we've got a little hole for them to fall into. We're going to need a deployer in there. That's going to need power, which we can take from below. It's also going to need a smart shoot below it and a smart shoot so that we can filter it so that the sword that we're going to put in there doesn't disappear. And it's also going to need a shoot above it. So we can throw on... Really? I've got a... Oh, I see. It's an advancement for another mod that I've added. Oh, jeez. Okay, and then we can put the barrel up there, set this into attack mode. And I've got a handful of swords here that I can use. This one's got looting and sweeping edge on it. That'll be useful. I've got three of those. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay, and this one as well. Okay, well, we'll chuck all of those in there then. That's good, and they've all just fallen straight out of the bottom and gone all the way down there. That's why we need a filter. So we need to tell this filter, no swords. And then if I put that on there, and I put the swords back in the barrel, they're not going to pop out of there anymore. And just temporarily, we'll throw another barrel underneath there, so that if this thing does get any drops, it's got somewhere to go. So that's the killing system done, without any power. Which means we now need the aggro system in place. I've got loads of snowballs already, so that's not a problem. Now, power-wise, obviously, if this thing's going to be directly over the center, to here it would make sense for the shaft to go down there but then that's going to get right in the way of our little killing system and we don't really want the piglins to have to pathfind around that to get to the deploy will you stop so we'll have to power this from above and then we're just going to put the mechanical bearing down straight above that like that although we are going to need a clutch on there so that we can on and off it that should potentially work one thing we need to consider is how we're going to push the piglins that end up in these corners here into that sword fortunately for me though i do have a bit of biodiesel and that works fine in the nether so we can just push them towards it like that and in which case it would probably make more sense if that deployer was in the corner rather than in the middle unless i had two buckets of this that should actually be close enough with the deployer there because, well, it just will be. And if they land on these bits, yeah, I think that'll be close enough. We might occasionally get some stuck in the corners, but we'll figure that out when we get closer to that point. So that should be everything we need up here, except for power. So we need to go and get some power. And where are we going to get power from in the nether? Well, I could pop myself a portal here and just have buckets of diesel actually just sent through the nether and we could power our power station from that. Or like we've done previously, we could power things from lava on water wheels. Because we don't need much power so we'll use lava and water wheels so let's chuck on some big old water wheels throw ourselves on a speed controller and now we've got power and now that's all in place well we can test this thing now if i turn this off let's get rid of that torch go into free cam hopefully we'll see a bunch of piglins start spawning up here They're, oh we're getting normal piglins not just the zombified ones okay what happens if i fly up to this level here oh now we get a bunch oh and a gas that's a problem if that gas shoots a fireball at our snowball machine it's got blow it up oh geez okay right let's just turn on the snowball machine and then go ah the gas is shooting me down here stop it turn it off free cam well that fired fast and now they're all going in is it working are they going to keep getting aggroed on that deployer down there it doesn't look like they are so turning the snowball machine back on they are still angry at that, but they're not carrying that aggro across to the other piglins. Oh, they don't like me very much, and I've not done anything. Why do you not like me? What have I done? Oh, well, this might not be a problem. And the new one's spawning in and coming down, and now we're getting drop bears as well. But I bet we're getting a whole bunch of drops down there. They're all getting minced like I hoped they would do, so that's good. And yeah, look at that barrel. It's absolutely full of stuff. In which case, I probably just want a little AFK platform up here, because they're still managing to spawn in and get upset about it all. I just need to consider how we're going to get rid of the other mobs so that they don't fill up the mob cap. Magma blocks. And yes, I've got a little AFK spot just up here now, and it seems to work for the piglins at least. But before we start worrying about magma blocks, I want to tell you about which mods I've actually added. And why do I keep coming over here to tell you about these things? Well, it's not dark and dingy like the nether. So with the latest version of my mod pack, I've updated as many of the mods that I can, which means that my Embedium mod actually lost the zoom function. So I've re-added in OK Zoomer, and now I get that nice zoom effect. As we know, I've added the Torchmaster mod, and I've also added more villagers which means we can get a whole 
bunch of different types of villagers with a whole bunch of new types of workstations. And due to very, very popular requests, I've added Create the Factory Must Grow, which adds a whole bunch of new blocks as well as oil and pump jacks and all of that sort of stuff, so we can fiddle with all of that at some point. And the final mod that I've added due to, again, great popular requests is Alex's Caves, which means that underground in certain places there'll be huge caves full with a whole bunch of new mobs and new things to do and that sounds very exciting and that's it that's all i've added so uh yeah magma blocks and i'm hoping that this system over here has produced enough of us to start getting on with it uh 31 that's really not going to cut it is it i've got 67 in my inventory well that's really not going to even do a tiny bit of platform so i guess i've got some nether digging to do so i'm going to need this and this and this and this and this i need to go back to the nether and we'll go to our lava area this time and i need to find somewhere where there's a whole bunch of magma blocks and i don't think this is the right biome for that now this area here is pretty much directly below where we're working upstairs and the nether waste does have a lot of magma blocks around it however none of these areas are particularly good for putting down my machine so instead i think we'll do a bit of vein mine ah oh. so instead i think i'll set myself on fire and do some vein mining now this is pretty slow going, although I have already got quite a few stacks, but there's something else I can do. See if I make a netherite diving helmet, I can actually go swimming in lava. I'm going to need netherite shoes as well and a back tank, but all of those should be relatively easy to make. So a few minutes later, I'm now ready for the nether again. However, my back tank needs charging up, so I assume that means I need to plug it into something that's going fast. And this looks like it's going fast. Is that working? No. When placed, powered by kinetics, it collects pressurized air. Okay, I think I understand it. If I put that there with the shaft there and put that directly under it, there we go. Now it's getting charged up. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about is there's no recipe for netherite diving leggings. So I'm just assuming that the normal netherite leggings are what I need. So let's find out. Oh yes, I can. I've reached the goal swimming with striders. But my, I don't have a jetpack now, which is quite annoying. And let's see if I can enchant any of these things. We obviously want unbreaking on them. Oh, when I can. And now these have got a bunch of different enchantments. We've got unbreaking protection and respiration on the helmet, protection on the back tank, and unbreaking protection feather falling and soul speed on the boots. So I'm definitely ready for lava. So hopping back over to this area here, it's time to put on my back tank, put my jetpack safe in my backpack, and now I can go swimming in lava and grabbing a bunch of this magma blocks. Although I can't see under lava. I still can't see. I thought you'd be able to see under the lava. And now I, I appear to be, I, I can't get back up again. Was it just really really deep yep i guess it was just really deep okay well i guess we'll just stick to the surface then but at least now we don't have to worry about getting got by the lava oh look at all this magma so much of it and gravel so now that my pickaxe is pretty much dead and with my jetpack back on because i like to be able to fly i've now got 3372 magma blocks and i think that's plenty so it's time to go home so i think rather than replacing all of this because it's going to take me ages to dig it all the way i'm just going to place all my magma blocks on top of it so let's put some magma blocks in my offhand then if i just click there like that there we go we get a whole patch of the stuff excellent there we go the entire thing's now covered in magma blocks and i've only got 239 left so that was close and if i need to extend this platform any i'm gonna have to go digging for some more and i think i've decided that when i'm at this farm i'm not gonna use that deployery system with the snowballs to upset the piglins because if they're gonna be angered on me anyway i might as well throw the snowball in which case in my afk spot i'm gonna need some slabs around here like this so that i've got a little window to throw the snowballs through i'm also going to need a barrel full of snowballs and considering i've got them all in my inventory anyway i really don't need it but what i am going to do is put a bow and some arrows in there instead so let's get rid of the torch again pop back up there and see what happens this time are we going to get any piglins spawning we are zombie piglins they're all spawning in let's get a bow oh do we still get drop bears now i just got to shoot one of them there we go, we've got one. And now they're all going to come over to me, go down. Oh, I didn't put the trapdoors down. Oops. I'm really good at Minecraft, guys. Right, here we go. Oh, they're already mad at something. Oh, they're mad at the drop bear. Well, that could be a problem. Thank you, Alex's mobs, for ruining gold farms for me. There we go, I got one. Now they're all going to fall in there and get minced. Excellent. Oh, this is good news. So, so far, I would say this is a resounding success. Um... That's not ideal. Ah, stop it! You're breaking my AFK spot! Oh, Jesus, hardly any of it left! Stop it! Are you really spawning on the water wheels? 
Jeez. And after a few minutes of fixing things, I've now got a system where I can flip open the trap doors, upset a piglin, that one's got some clothes on, and then close them again, and hopefully that means they'll still be aggroed on me, which they are, and hopefully it means the gas are not able to see me to shoot me. But they really should start getting aggroed on that deployer down there. Now the new ones are coming in. Yeah, look, they're looking at the deployer now. So they're angry at that. Oh, this is good. They're not angry at me anymore. Though sitting here for a little while and watching this run, as you can see, we've got a big problem. And that is drop bears. We've got absolutely thousands of them. And I've done a little bit of research online and I've seen quite a few people have had the same problem. These drop bears just ruin gold farms. And there really isn't anything you can do about it except to turn them off. So hopefully now I've done that, none of them will spawn anymore. But I need to despawn these ones. And I also need to stop these piglins from spawning on these water wheels, which shouldn't be a big problem. But before I do that, let's just run away. So hopefully everything should have despawned by now. I can hop up back to this platform, stick a few bottom slabs on these water wheels to stop things spawning on there. So let's hop back upstairs. And hopefully we won't see any more drop bears on here. We should only see zombie piglins, the occasional magma cube, and it, there's a drop. What? I'm doing a little bit more digging. It turned out there was a config file that you could change that actually changed which biomes they can spawn in. So I just stopped them from being able to spawn in the nether wastes. And now we shouldn't get any more drop bears. We should only get zombie piglins, the occasional magma blocks, and a few ghasts. And hopefully that means this system is now working. As you can see this seems to be working and it's been running for a little while now although i don't think it's as optimized as it could be because we're getting quite a lot of gas we're getting quite a lot of magma cubes and they're not going anywhere which will eventually mean that we're not getting any zombie pinklings what we haven't got however is any sort of storage system hopping down underneath this thing you can see i've got a big old container that's collecting all of the drops but we don't have any way of getting those back to the factory so that's what i need to do next first of all what we need to do is get the items out of here and all the way down to the bottom Bottom. Oh, no, don't shoot me down here. Thank you. No. Oh, jeez. No, no, stop it. Just die. Just die. <laughs> Come here and die. Anyway, before I was rudely interrupted by the gas, what I was going to say is what we first need to do is get all the items out of here all the way down to the bottom. And I think we can do that with just some shoots. But before we start sending items down there, we should probably organize a system down here to actually collect them and deal with them. And that, of course, means getting out our storage drawers. So we'll start with the drawer controller. We're going to need a bunch of drawers for all of the different things. And we're probably going to want some compacting drawers for the nuggets as well. And that's not a compacting drawer. That's a compacting drawer. And if I'd have done these two the other way round, so the compacting drawers were on the bottom and the drawer controllers on the top, I can then just grab a whole bunch of chutes and just run those all the way up to the top. Here we are, popping out of that level there. And now we're just about up here, so we've just got to sort of dogleg this round a bit. But I could really do with this container being in a bit of a better position. So now we've got a smart chute on there, which is filtering out all of these items. And they're mainly the ones we want to keep. But we are getting some more stuff through there as well. Mainly swords, but we are getting the odd bit of art armor too. So, what? Protection one twice? Huh, I think that's a keeper. Right, okay, yes. Anyway, crushing wheels. That's what we need, which means we need more power down here, which of course means we need more lava and more water wheels. And after a couple of minutes of faffing about, I've now got a couple of crushing wheels coming down somewhere underneath this, so we just need to get items down there. So again, we're going to need some chutes, and we're going to need a smart chute, and we basically need this filter, but the opposite. So those, 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 and those, all in there like that deny list tick and we're going to put that on there like that and then i'm just going to extend this vault over that and that should allow all of those items to get crushed and hopefully we're going to get mainly gold from that but we might get a few other things as well let's put that there and hopefully now there we go we're getting nuggets coming through from all of the things that are being squished wonderful now we've even managed to get some iron somehow so i think we're going to need a few more of these storage boxes just in case anything else comes down here oh i wonder can i get those crushing wheels going any faster 160 not 170. Well, 160 is probably fine. So now I need to bring all of these items out of here and I need to get those over to the farm. And that shouldn't be too much of a problem because a long way down here, we've got that portal which links back to the farm. But it is quite a long way. So I think the first thing to do to make life a little bit easier is to just delete this portal. And I'm going to just rebuild it up here. And hopefully this will still link up. Let's find out. It did. Excellent. Good. Let's just spawn proof that. What I'm going to do now is get rid of all of this. And a couple of minutes later, we've now got track all the way down here. But well, that's not going to go through the portal because it's too steep. 
really do with this portal in the floor. I really want to break any more obsidian. Yes, I do. You don't really, do you? No, not really. Sleeping bag down. Move that around. Try and pick it back up again. Boom. And there we go. Just five sleeping bags later. And we've now got enough space underneath that to put in the floor a little bit lower. So let's break it again. And we'll bring that across there instead. Relight the fire. And now my track should be able to go all the way into there and pop out through the other side. Amazing. So we're just going to need a train and a way of loading all of those items onto it, of course. And now we have ourselves a fancy little nether train. And this is going to be my driver. So, no, you're not going to work. I need to put some blocks down. Throw you that way. Get on there. There we go. What a wonderful little driver you are, sir. So now we've got a driver. We've got a train. We've got a track. Must be time to collect the items. Let's throw ourselves on. On a bit of trim there and a draw controller slave there we'll have a couple of item drains coming out that way with a bit of casing and an interface on it and of course these are going to need some funnel and they're also going to need some of those on there to stop things spawning on it now if i just bring this track around here to link up with this like that we can get rid of all of these bits that we don't need pop this little chap on there instead get rid of all of this and look at he's connected he's doing a good job so we need to put his little station just about there near the gold farm pick up and look at you filling up with all of that tasty rotten flesh that I don't need. And the only thing I actually want to take from here for now are the nuggets and the ingots. That's all I want. So if I put that on there instead and spin those back around again, now we should just fill up with the things that I actually want. So now we just need somewhere to go. And it looks like the track's already coming through here. It's not really in the ideal direction, but that'll do. If we get him to come back to about this point here. What we'll do is we'll dig a hole underneath this, stick an item interface there, and hopefully we'll be able to pull it out from the top there so let's drive the tiny little nether train through that portal and see where it ends up and what we need to do in terms of spinning things around and there he is he stopped at the station what a good job you did disassemble train there we go reassemble train just need to move that slightly to there instead and now that's connected wonderful so now all of the items are going to come down here and we can deal with those in here and get them sent straight into our storage system down there in which case we'll have a bunch of trim on the top of that one a bunch of trim on the top of there with the slave there some shoots coming through the roof we just need to get them from there to there how hard could it be what could possibly go wrong it's going to be a bit floaty for now but that's okay if we just stick a vault there stick a shoot on there they're all going to go into there we'll put one of those lovely brass funnels on there and then they should hopefully all come down here and go into this chute they are oh that's wonderful but just to make sure we don't have any issues with them just pouring off the edge i'm going to actually put that chute there and put another one of those there and now we've got a fancy system that's getting all of those tasty items out of the nether which means we can produce a whole bunch more netherite oh geez we've got loads nice so this guy needs to go to the nether gold farm pickup and he needs to go to the nether farm drop off and both of those we're just going to have him on cargo inactivity for five seconds and then he should just go backwards and forwards between those two stations picking everything up and dropping it all off there you go look at his little hat that he's got he's so wonderful and now he's off again back over to the overworld one thing that does mean is that this area needs to be chunk loaded let's just load both of those so all that's left to do is just make this farm a whole bunch more more efficient and I know exactly how I'm gonna do it but it's gonna take a while As you can see, what I've gone for are some rings of magma block. The idea is that if the magma cubes spawn on here, they'll bounce off the edge rather than going to the middle and taking up the mob cap. And I'm not quite finished. I need to add in a few of these glass trap doors to actually encourage the pigmen to step off that platform and land on the one below. And likewise, I need to do the same here. So what I'm actually going to do on the top layer is just bring that back a block so that they've got more chance of actually, well, deciding to fall off it. And those are the last few trap doors to throw on there. We should hopefully be good to go. And there are a couple of other changes I've made too. My AFK box is a little bit bigger now, and that's just so that there's actually room for me to move around inside without accidentally standing on the warp plate. And if I go on the warp plate and go all the way down to the bottom, oh, I can't actually see. Okay, we'll go to the top and fall down. You might already have guessed, but there's no middle section now. We've got this bit and the item vault and then the chute and then the power just goes all the way down to the bottom and everything's powered off these water wheels down here. So I don't have to worry about other little platforms and things like that. So uh, I guess it's time to figure out if this is actually going to work, which means breaking my mega torch. There we go, hopping inside and seeing what happens. And hopefully we'll get some piglins. Oh yes, they are spawning. Let's get myself my bow and arrow and find one that I can actually shoot at. You look like a prime target, sir. 
I've shot that pigman. Hopefully. Yes. Yes. They go. They're pathfinding over the trap doors. That's brilliant. Hopefully, they'll all end up down here. And hopefully, they'll all get very upset with that deployer. Although, they do seem to be focused on me. So, I guess I'll just have to stand right here in the middle. Well, that seems like it's working. Oh, I have just seen magma cubes spawning up there. They're not spawning on the layers below. Now, are these. Oh, they're angry at the deployer now. So, they're not worried about me anymore. So, that's good. I was a little bit worried that with these rings we'd get slightly less spawns. But it looks like we're still getting plenty of pigmen. But for all intents and purposes, this farm looks like it's working. The gas shouldn't be a problem because they'll just fly off and despawn anyway. The pigmen are just spawning in nice and quickly. They're all ending up down in the hole. We're hardly getting any magma cubes and the one we do get just end up falling to their doom. Oh, it's all working out rather well. I knew I'd get there eventually. Piglins! You said that last time! Yeah, but this time it's not the zombie variety, we need the normal variety. And speaking of the zombie variety, this farm has been running incredibly well. I built it in the last episode and I've been AFK pretty much all night and it's been working perfectly. It never ever stops. Although there are a couple of improvements I can make. First of all, we get a lot of magma cubes on here and that can be resolved by just putting another layer at the top that's not magma blocks, that's not spawnable, so we can sort that out. And another thing that I I can sort out is the swords in this killing system here because they're just diamond and I can improve them with my hyper enchanting system but the magma cubes are causing a bit of a problem because they fall down there they land down here and well they basically make a big mess of everything so I do need to sort that out for sure and in terms of what we're getting we've got over 111,000 rotten flesh and why is that useful well we can turn it into organic compost we can also cook with it to make dog food and that's about it really and it turns out this is a diamond farm although five diamonds in about six hours is not really all that great really but we're getting a little bit of iron a little bit of leather some diamonds and even some diamond shards so i'll take all of these things i even got some netherite shards and we got a handful of arrows too but how much gold did we get and how much xp well we need to go and find out don't we and we've got 190 gold and 3000 xp well, that's not as much as i was expecting and that's because the nuggets of experience actually overflowed the storage drawers so i've took them all out put them in my inventory and then i'm going to put them somewhere else the gold has all been used turning this netherite scrap into another 5000 netherite so we've got plenty of that in fact we've got so much netherite now we've got a over 10 stacks of netherite blocks so that means yes i can definitely make a beacon from netherite if i wanted to and i just might so coming back to my library where my hyper enchanting setup is we've almost got a full tank of xp here so adding all of those nuggets of xp into here might not be the best idea but the real reason i'm here is i want to make a handful more swords and i want them all to be netherite swords and yes i could have just upgraded the ones in the gold farm but why not have more when we've got plenty of resources and these are going to need unbreaking four on as well as looting for and i'd also very much like them to have smite on as well and i don't know if i've actually got a smite book in here no so i need to get my hands on one of those and that's kind of crazy because my original sword does have smite four on it but i guess i must have got that from an enchanting table so i think we need an enchanting table and some books and where am i going to get books from in this library i just don't know now we've still got a couple of spare rooms in this library so i might as well use these and we'll set up a little enchantment station in here and we'll make it a big one. And now my little enchanting setup's complete. We've got an anvil, a grindstone, a box with some books in, a box full of lapis, and an enchantment table. So let's see if we can get ourselves some smite five. I don't think either of those are that. And now I need more levels. It'd be really useful to have an XP tank in here full of levels. And there we go, a little bit later, we've now got a tank, we've got a whole bunch of nuggets of XP in there, that's all going in there, so that means I can stand here, wind that handle, and give myself a whole bunch of levels. Good, right, okay. Let's carry on enchanting these books. No, no. Well, I've been rolling books for a little while, and so far I've had no luck. I've managed to get one Smite 4 book, but I need two of those to make Smite 5. I was really hoping I might come across some Depth Strider as well while I'm here, because I need that too. But so far, no luck. No, 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 no. No, 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 
No, no, no, no, no. At last, Smite 4 again. Excellent. Still no Depth Strider though, so I'm wondering if that's like a lower level enchantment. And I know you can arrange bookcases in certain ways to try and force certain enchantments, but I'm not too interested in that. What I am going to do is give this thing all of my levels back, eventually. Combine these two Smite books to make Smite 5. And now I can go and teach this to one of my amazing blaze burners. You, sir, need a book. And here we go. Let's do this. And of course, the final enchantment these swords need is sweeping edge and there we go those are some pretty nice swords there's one more thing i need to do here and that is to enchant the helmet and the boots i made in the last video with mending and i do happen to have a couple of mending books so let's just throw that one on there and that one on there and now those can get nicely mended when i just wiggle this a bit there we go lovely so the next thing I need to do is come in here and turn all of this off, I think. I think we've got enough netherite for now. Going underground, all of the liquid is being pumped into my power station through this. So if I was to replace that with a clutch and stick a redstone link on it in receive mode, well, let's give that some netherite. Then I suppose I could come over here, throw some case in between these, put another one on there with some of those, and then we'll just put a lever on. And now I should be able to stop the entire power station from going. And with that stop, the gold should start to accumulate in there from our gold farm and we're going to be using that gold to feed our new piglin friends which obviously we don't have yet so we've still got all of that to do but before we do any of that i need to hop all the way up to the top and give these swords to that deployer so a little while later i have now upgraded this farm completely adding in a full glass roof over it to try and prevent the magma cubes from spawning and i've added in the netherite swords down in the killing chamber below so there's no time like the present to test this thing out let's hit that piglin there hopefully he'll run towards me and fall down this hole and hopefully with our new swords they're gonna get wow they should get one shotted with smite five so smite six is a bit overkill really if you're enjoying this video then consider subscribing and like the video because it really helps me out well i would say this is a roaring success so piglins then i want to make somewhere nice for them a little piglin village not like this piglin village here which is not very nice oh geez i forgot about you horrible mosquitoes no thank you but yeah th this isn't th this just doesn't look very nice for the piglins it looks all sort of worn down will you stop it stop stucking my blood oh another one yeah, the piglins don't really want to live where there's giant mosquitoes interfering with them all the time and there's horrible, nasty, black stone, not very nice looking places to be. So we're going to build them a village. And we're going to do that up here on the nether roof where we've got our big old hole and our big old portal. And I thought a little village surrounding this portal and this hole could look quite nice and be a good place for a bartering farm. So I guess without further ado, I better get cracking. And in order to get cracking, I made myself this fancy little workshop just in the hole below the nether roof we dug out. And that gives there's all this space up here to work on. Well, slowly but surely, I feel like I'm getting somewhere. We've got this tower that's now surrounding our hole that we come up through in the middle, and at some point that's going to have an elevator in it that'll be able to go up there. I moved the nether portal over here and made that into a little engine shed so that when our train comes through, it parks in there. It doesn't really, it goes into the overworld. And I put some gravel slabs down on the track, and I've blended this into the sides here, and I've put some fence around it so that when we've got some free-range piglins in here, they're not going to end up on the tracks and get hit by the train. Speaking of the train, it seems to have stopped. Where's my train it's here but my baby piglin is dead where's my piglin gone piglin well that sucks but there's nothing in here to kill him i wonder if he was taking damage every time he went through the portal <laughs> but fortunately for us we have a brand new candidate here waiting to get on this lovely train come here you you are now train driver get on that seat sit on it please come on oh there we go now he's got on excellent and he's got a schedule and now you can resume that schedule Oh, yeah, 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 it's the height of the... Oops. So you killed the driver. And no, it wasn't me. I didn't kill him. It just died a bit. You killed him. I didn't. And there we go. That's much taller now. Let's put the track back together and put the gravel slap on there. Plus, bro, don't take damage. Ah, there we go. Perfect. 
Anyway, right, it's time to crack on with this build. Obviously, this isn't really a village, it's more of just a big dirt patch with some walls and a tower. The piglins are, of course, going to need houses to live in and little ponds and things. You can't have water in nether. Nobody can have other fluids. So I guess it's probably time I place a few more blocks, add a few more things like that in, and think about how I'm going to include a bartering system into all of that. Now, if I remember correctly, a piglin bartering system looks a little bit like this. You've got a dispenser, you've got a hopper and a barrel or some sort of container your piglin stands on here ideally on some sort of carpet or something so he doesn't get stuck in the hopper you put gold in the dispenser and then you kick off the system and if an item goes in there that should encourage that dispenser to drop more gold to the piglin so let's imagine that i'm the piglin for a second that gold's going to come out of there i'm going to decide i want to barter something so i'm going to chuck it down and then i should get another piece of gold and i'm going to think about this piece of gold and then i'm going to chuck an item down and then i should get another one but what if i chuck a whole stack of items items down. Do I get another piece of gold immediately or does it wait till it's gone out the hopper? Well it looks to me like it's going to wait until it's all gone out of the hopper which can slow things down a little bit. Should pop out any second now. There we go. But that's not necessarily a problem because it gives the piglin plenty of time to think about what he's got. However if I didn't want to do it that way I could just bring a plank there instead of this one here. Pop a little bit of redstone dust down and now if I'm a piglin let's just start this by that. I get my gold. I throw something in there and and then I get another piece of gold immediately and this works now as soon as I put it in. The problem with this design is though if the piglin puts a big stack in it's going to give him gold back and he might finish thinking about that and give us more items while there's already items in the hopper which means we're not going to get any more gold and that's a problem. So I think the original design's probably better but we need to do it without any visible redstone and that can be achieved all thanks to create with our favorite little redstone links. So we can put a redstone link down there we can put another one on top of the dispenser and now if i'm a little piglin let's see what happens i get my gold i like that bit of gold i'm gonna give somebody a present let's give somebody 16 of these red dye and i get the gold back immediately and that means that if the piglin throws a whole bunch of stuff in there well it's gonna wait for the hopper so that's not really ideal however the problem here isn't necessarily the setup it's the fact that this is a hopper and hoppers can only transfer one item at once but again with our favorite mod create we've got these which can transfer six 16 items at once and we've got smart shoots that can transfer 64 at once however again one of these shoots will actually process a whole stack at a time if you throw a whole stack in they'll only do 16 at a time if you're like feeding it with a conveyor or something so we don't need smart shoots we just need these but how then are we going to get a comparator signal out well i'm pretty sure i can take a comparator signal directly out of that shoot let's just find out if i throw in a stack of items in there no i can't can a smart observer give us an output so let's stick a redstone lamp behind there and then throw an item in and it goes on. What if we throw a whole bunch of items in? It goes on. So we can use smart observers instead of the comparator. And now this system just looks like this. It's quite simple. It does need to be raised another block off the floor and it does mean accessing the barrels quite difficult. But we're not going to be using barrels. We're actually going to be using storage drawers. So we're going to be having storage drawer controller slaves there and then I guess coming out the side of that we'll have a bunch of trim running underground. But let's see if it works. Works. If I stand on here, I guess I need to activate this at least once. Give myself a bit of gold. I've decided I quite like that gold and want to give something in return. So I'm going to drop an item down into this chute. And I yep, there we go. I've got another piece of gold. So this should work. And if we need to put a delay in, that'll be nice and easy as well. So now I need to build a bunch of these, make them all look nice, and then build a bunch of piglins' houses too. So I'm going to be very busy for the next few minutes. So I better play that music.
And here we are, our little piggly in paradise, complete with houses, a big old tower that's got a netherite and gold flag on it. We've got the marketplace bartering system down here with piles of gold and netherite around that. We've got a few of these piggly in houses around here. I've updated this station to use the same type of roof blocks, and we've even got a little ward next to a stable so the piglins can ride whatever piglins ride. Over this side, we've got a river of gold, which is actually just honey, and of course, the piglins are growing some carrots and potatoes because they need something to eat and the majority of this area has been made using these layers which is from my fxnt bits and bobs mod that i made myself and there's another block that i've used in here as well that i haven't even told you about and that is this thatch for the roofs which i'll talk about in a minute but before i talk about that these block layers are actually now made using the stone cutter and there are now over 40 different types of block layer that i've added to the game and why am i using these instead of frame blocks well frame blocks are quite limited in their sizes if you want to step up you go from a floorboard to a trapdoor to a slab to a full block and that's not a very nice gradient whereas these layers go up two pixels at a time which means you can make a full gradient all the way up to a full block and when you reach a full block height it actually just turns back into the block you made it out of and these just go on the stone cutter and you get eight at a time pretty handy and i have actually decorated the insides of these buildings as well so each one's got a little kitchen some flower pot and some herb pots we've got a little sink and cookers and sofas and i've gone with the gold and netherite theme as much as i can and just quickly running into each one you can see the difference this tiny house has got a sofa and a table and a bookshelf this house is slightly bigger so this one's got a farmer's delight kitchen with some potatoes and some more bookshelves and a desk and a sofa this one's got farmer's delight in it and it's got a little storeroom and this small one's very similar to the other small one and finally this bigger one over here has got a little bit of a kitchen in it as well so plenty for the piglins to be cooking their food and making their potatoes and their carrots and even chilling out and why is there no beds you can't have beds in the nether they go boom so this thatch then why didn't i just use hay bales or the chipped versions of hay bales well thatch is different so let's come into the sunshine to talk about it in the real world thatch's main ingredient is water reeds and when it's first made it's quite light and vibrant and over time it tends to get quite dark and desaturated because it ages so i've made three variants of it we've got thatch we've got aged thatch and we've got old thatch and these will actually age over time a little bit like copper i'll show you that in detail in a minute we can use honeycomb on them to stop them aging if we want to although if they're in a frame block they're not going to age anyway but they are rotatable so you can get the thatch going in different directions but there aren't any water reeds in minecraft and there's one item that we hardly have any use for at all and if you look closely at thatch it kind of just looks like a bundle of sticks and what item gives you a bundle of sticks when you break it that is of course dead bushes well it gives you a stick so i've made it so thatch is craftable from dead bushes so here in my test world i've put out a big layer of copper and a big layer of thatch and you'll see they age slightly differently and that's because i've had to create my own aging process for this and while the copper does gather in groups like it is doing on the right hand side of the screen the thatch all ages from the edges slowly filling in from the sides towards the middle and because there's only three stages of thatch i've made it so it takes about the same amount of time to fill in the entire area as it does for copper to fully fill in and thatch is actually going to be a key ingredient in our diamond making process a little bit later in this phase but enough of that for now let's get back to the nether and figure out how we're going to do this bartering farm then so this has five slots for five piglins we've got droppers at the top rather than dispensers because we didn't need to waste all of those bows and surrounding those we've got these shoots and there's no shoots in the corner so i'm really hoping the piglins will either drop to the side or to the front but it ain't gonna work if there's no piglins in it and it's also not gonna work because none of this is linked up to any form of storage system there are storage drawers going into the top to feed gold in when we actually get some gold and i was thinking we could put the actual storage drawers along the front here so that we can see what the piglins have got the only slight problem with that is that means destroying these blocks here which isn't too much of a problem but i can't destroy those because they're shoots so i think it actually makes more sense to have our storage system in here where the elevator is going to be although there's probably not going to be that much room to have it but maybe we could just have a wall full of storage drawers and all of the control system from there we'll be able to dump our gold in there it will get sent to the piglin farm and that way we don't have to risk our lives actually coming and seeing these piglins so i'm just going to throw a whole bunch of drawers down here for now and that trim that i've just put in should be just about there there we go so we can take this all the way across to over there and link it all up and making ourselves a little 
little highly cold underneath our little area here we can see we've got these shoots coming down into the ground we've got the observers facing them so we need our trim to come along to here we need it in between all of these shoots we need some of these draw controller slaves at the bottom of each one of the shoots and now all of those are connected with those storage drawers and the system should be just about good to go i think but of course it's not going to work at all unless we've got piglins in it and i could go down underground and find a whole bunch of piglins to bring them over here but i've got another idea and that involves going back to our gold farm and that's because this gold farm is in the nether wastes and piglins will spawn in the nether wastes but before we do anything i'm going to need another mega torch because i don't want things spawning right now and i'm just going to throw that down here and then make a big old platform of netherrack and I think that should be about big enough as a little spawning platform. But now I need something else. I need seats. And I'm going to need a lot of seats. Let's make a whole bunch of white seats. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place a seat every other block like this. And my idea here is, although I've got no idea if this is going to work, is that when things spawn in, they're going to pathfind around a bit and they're going to accidentally find themselves on one of these seats. And now all of the seats are in place. I need to put some fences around so that they don't walk off the edge of this thing away from the seats. And I should really probably think about getting myself some golden armor. Oh, I've already got some. Let's have some gold boots. And now that's all in place, we should be ready to start spawning in some piglins. Let's get rid of that mega torch, come away a little bit, allow things to start spawning, and hopefully not just get loads of gas and magma cubes or anything, apparently. Come on. I think I know why things aren't spawning. My AFK account is currently up at the top of here running this farm. So you need to go, mate. Bye, Chalk. So now if I go away and despawn all of the piglins that are on the roof and then come back, over here we should hopefully get things spawning on my little patch of netherrack they're the wrong type though we don't want normal zombie piglins we want the other ones and none of them seem to be pathfinding onto the seats well this hasn't worked very well at all and here it is my amazing piglin picker upping machine and what i'm gonna do is put a torch down there get rid of that assembler and hopefully that's just gonna go across there and pick up a bunch of piglins as it goes past it worked oh they fell off again when it stopped oh that's annoying the baby one didn't know oh the fences the fences are causing the problem Problem. and now they're old oh, now they're all outside the fences okay well that's fine i just need to move it forward a little bit there we go that should be better they can't get out of the fences now and the good thing about this little device here is when i want it to stop i can just get rid of a redstone torch and i can decide right which of you idiots do i actually want to keep well i don't want you you're the wrong type of piglin and they can't fight back because they're on their seats yeah we got loads now and we've got the right type of piglins as well oh this is good so what i just need to do is get this thing moving so that it's going to pick up as many things as possible deal with the things that i don't want and then we should hopefully get the things that i do want no thank you no thank you no thank you and now we've got a bunch of piglins that we can steal and hopefully, because I'm wearing my gold, they're not going to be irritated by me. I can just pick these guys up and take them over to their new home. This is wonderful. And you are going to be my first little test subject for our bartering farm. Please stand in there. Where did you go? Huh. Did you go underneath it? Did you go in the chute? Where did you go? Did you go out the back? Hello? It just is, It's not even showing on the map. That's weird. Let's grab another one and see if I can do that again. Okay, if I put you down there, you've just you've disappeared. Is it because I've got a torch over here to stop things spawning? I didn't think that despawned things. It hasn't done previously. Uh, let's get rid of that for now then. Hopefully a load of things won't spawn. I've done my best to spawn proof this area, but it's not perfect. And let's just grab our little friend here, take them over there and see if we have the same problem. In fact, before we get there, let's just pop them down here. That's fine. Now, if I was to put a torch down and then pop one down, ah, it disappears. It's, it's the torch. So I only need the torch gone while they're there because the game thinks they're spawning in when I place them. Right, I need a bunch more piglins then. Oh my goodness, we got a bunch of them now. They're all the wrong ones, but oh no, we've got some that are right. Excellent. There we go. We've got a piglin. All right, let's first of all do a manual test. Have a bit of have a bit of gold. No, you don't want the gold. But you're a piglin. You both take the gold, mate. What if I put it there? Ah, there we go. Now he's took it. Are you gonna throw items out and drop them all over the place? Oh, well, I suppose I could maybe use a slab. Will we get away with it if I put a slab there? So here, have another piece of gold and try that again. Okay, fine. We'll have glass at the front of each one instead of a thing. Okay, so now all of that's in place. We've got our piglin. If I put some gold into one of these drawers here, that should disappear and it should start going straight into these. And I'm hoping it will evenly spread, although I think it's going to go in the one closest to where the system is, which should actually be this one straight above this piglin's head. If I get rid of that and look in there, yeah, that's working because I just dropped an item down there and now he's going to start bartering. But he's going to give it to me instead of that because I need to put the glass on there. 
but that's good. I've got one more thing I need to do, and that is to get a bunch more of these redstone links and put them all on the wall. Ah, the wall like this. And the reason I need these is to kickstart the system. Should the piglins ever stop for any reason, or if I add more gold and they haven't had any, that'll just fire a piece of gold out of each of the, one of the dispensers. However, it's not going to do that with a lever. That's just going to lock things on. So let's just use buttons instead. And now if I fire that, that should give that piglin some gold. There we go. It's working. Excellent. And now he's thrown his items in. He's got more gold. Oh, yes. This is all working rather wonderfully. Do it again. Yes. Perfect. Ah, until it falls on the side there. So we need shoots on these bits as well. But I was just wondering, instead of using that glass there, what if instead I did that? Is that going to work or is he going to throw it through it? It does work. It went behind him. Oh, wonderful. So we should be getting a bunch of stuff coming through here now. We are. Oh, wow. We've got spectral arrows, fire charges, nether bricks, blackstone, string. Well, with this one being a roaring success, I don't see any reason why we can't get more piglins in here. I need that torch back. I'm going to have to get those piglins in here fast and then I can put that torch back down and stop things like this from happening because you're going to trample all me carrots and me spuds. Get off. You know how hard it is planting carrots and spuds in the nether? There's no light. you got to put torches and lanterns and things everywhere. You're just the menace. You're a pain in the... So I've just gone and got my second piglin, but of course my first one's gone because I didn't name them. So I'm going to need my name tags. And just to keep things nice and simple, we're going to call all of the piglins Jeff, because I think that's the perfect name for a piglin. There you go, Jeff. So a little bit of backwards and forwards in later. We've now got a whole bunch of piglins living in our little piglin village. I've put a few of them in the houses. I've put a few of them just dotted around and they're all called Jeff. If you would like to adopt a piglin, you can do by suggesting the best piglin names in the comments and the best names will get put on the piglins and then you'll be able to consider that piglin your piglin. Hurrah! And we've got a full piglin bartering farms with the piglins as well. My only concern here is that these shoots are around the sides. If they do happen to drop on the edges, they're not going to go in. And I can't actually add any more shoots into this system because these ones are in the way. So the only way I can get around that if it becomes a problem would be to make these full blocks instead of fences, which I kind of don't want to do because I like the openness of this. So now I just need a whole bunch of gold and I need a whole bunch because I need to fill every single one of those dispensers before this system will start backing up so there we go got a whole bunch in there now as you can see through a little bit of testing we are getting a few different items in here now so i've added some more drawers because it was actually full in which case we should activate the system give each one of the piglins a gold ingot and see what happens they should all be bartering now you're not bartering the rest of them are though why is me red one not doing it it's got seven gold ingots in the chute the dispenser's full that looks like it's set up correct Anyway, the rest of them are all really having a good time doing a whole bunch of bartering. I just don't know why that last one isn't. Anyway, let's see what we're getting now that we've got all that going on. Wow, a whole bunch of stuff. We're getting ancient hog shoes. That's just what I wanted. Brian obsidian, fire resistance, iron nuggets. Oh yeah, boots. Ender pearls is good. I think we might need to do some filtering here to get rid of a few of the things we don't want. But we'll worry about that once this gets full. Okay, we're going to give you pink dye instead of red dye and see if that solves the problem. Uh, is it giving him an ingot? Yes, it's giving him an ingot. Is he going to get another one though when he drops that item? Yes! Okay, he's working then. Ah, and there we go. We've got our first problem. This one's dropped string on here. He also dropped some soul sand on... Oh, jeez. Yeah, we're going to have to put solid blocks everywhere. And what I think I'm going to do is just put more glass along these bits like this, and then they're not going to be able to get it onto the wrong bit, and it just looks a little bit more uniform altogether. Now they can't throw it anywhere it's not supposed to go. And now we should have a fully functional piglin bartering farm. This is wonderful. Speaking of piglins, they've been dropping me off a bunch of items now. I've put in quite a lot of gold, I've been getting through it, we've got a few things, and we've been getting these hog shoes. And I don't know what they do. There's no crafting recipe for hog shoes, but they can be enchanted. And I cannot put them on my feet. They will not go on. They also don't go on my leggings or my chest plate slot. So I can only assume you're supposed to put them on a different mob from Alex's mods. And if I look through the book, I can't find any reference to them at all. But surely horses. Horses make sense. But pig Piglins don't ride horses. Piglins ride striders. And that's why we've got stables, so that we can put striders in it. And I've got a way of getting striders into here. I've got a warp plate. I'm going to pop that down. I'm going to put this one in there. And now I'm going to go find some striders. And after flying around for a couple of minutes, I've found a few candidates. We've got one here, one over there, one there, and one there. And that one looks like it's a lot closer to the land than the others. 
Ah, and I was going to say I'm nether protected now, but I haven't got my back tank on, so I can't do that. But what I can do is put that warp plate there, put that in there, grab a bit of fungus and hope it's done. No, no, gas, don't blow up my thing. Stop it. No, no, stop it. I'm trying to catch striders here. Now, are they going to come to me for this fungus? Do they do that? Is it the wrong type? Of yes, he is. Come on, this way, this way. I guess I probably need to put him some blocks down. So let's just throw some nether rack down at this point here. Can I get underneath there? No. Hmm. In that case, let's equip my back tank. Take my gold boots off and do a little bit of swimming. And hopefully... No, I still can't see underwater. People told me it was my brightness mod that did that, but it's not. And the other thing I've realised about swimming in lava is that these diving boots are not ever so useful because they suck you down to the bottom. And it turns out you don't actually need the diving boots to go in the lava and be protected. You can just use standard netherite boots and then you don't sink. You can actually swim in the lava. Well, anyway, I've got a little platform here for our little strider guy. Come on, little strider guy. I need you to come stand on this teleporter, please. If you could just walk this way nice and quickly. No messing about. Thank you. Onto that teleporter pad there. That's it. Just stay there. And any second now. Why are you not going? Do I go? I go. Oh, there we go. I got him in. Don't go back again. Don't go back again. Just go. No, I don't. Don't. don't geez. Why don't you pick him up? Oh, yeah. I should have just picked him. Oh, I fed him now. Didn't want to feed him. Right, anyway, I'm going to go get you some friends. So in the last episode, I mentioned that I couldn't see under lava, and a bunch of you said it was because of my brightness mod. It's not that. Other people said I needed to drink night vision potions in order to see under the water, but it's not that either. But I'm sure there'll be something in this pack that allows me to see under the lava properly. I just don't know what it is. Just come on a little. There you go. Just stay. There we go. So now my little striders should be in their little stable one of where's the other one gone it's here and i should probably name tag these as well just in case these go missing but let's just put you in there and these striders are going to be called jeff there you go jeff and there's jeff if you would like to adopt a strider then please leave a comment with the best name for a strider and one of these lovely striders could be yours now then my little strider friends can you wear hog shoes no jeff you disappoint me in which case we need to go back to our snowy area and i'm gonna go over to the farm where my horses live and i'm gonna see if they like ancient hog shoes Shh, no i don't want to pick him up i want to get in his inventory there we go can i put you can you can you wear hog shoes no so what are hog shoes for if you know what hog shoes do then please do let me know because i haven't got a clue anyway we've got one last thing to do and that is to build an elevator inside of our tower on the nether roof that goes all the way down to the bottom of the nether which means an awful lot of digging all the way down as well as all of that larvary peril that lives down there we don't really want to have to deal with that so I've got a plan. You've always got a plan. I do always have a plan. Um, you should call me Planny No Tail. But I've always got a plan. Not a very good name. It might be. It isn't. The right, first part of my plan is to remove these trap doors. And the second part of my plan is to make some mechanical drills all around here. On top of my mechanical drills, we're going to have a couple of chests. And we're also going to have a whole bunch of deployers all facing down through the drills. Which means my chests have got to move. And now I'm going to give all of those drills an item. And that could be quite tricky because they're all... Yeah, they're all, mm, I didn't really think this through, did I? If I get rid of that one there, I can give that one one of those. And then I can put one of those there. And now that all of the deployers with the iron grates as their item so now i can put a bunch of chests on here put all of those iron grates into there industrial iron grate yep and now we just need a little bit of glue and now I'm going to need power. And I've been thinking about power for this area. It would be really easy to get a steam engine and power it from all of that lava right at the bottom of the nether. And that would be nice and easy to do, but I don't want to do that. See, we've got this lovely village and this lovely tower. And I think it would be really nice if one of the faces of this tower had a big old windmill on it that provided us power. Now, that's a relatively basic looking windmill sail, but hopefully it will spin. Give that a flick. Is it going the right way, though? I don't know which way that should spin. I mean, that kind kind of looks right to me but it could also be totally wrong so now we can stick a speed controller on here and with a bit of chain drive we can bring that over pretty much to the middle of this room here and eventually we're going to have that power in an elevator pulley but right now we're not going to have it powering that because we need it to power a rope pulley so let's stick that on there that's already going down that's good let's stick it on full speed and that should there we go start sending that down through the ground and that's just going to dig a big old hole and what's really good is it should place the grates first which means that if it gets to lava or anything like that it'll destroy the lava rather than going through it and it should also make us a nice area around it why is that going out to the side oh i did my deploy is totally wrong hmm. so what we need to do is actually flip these ones on the side the other way up 
so that it places them above. Let's try that again, shall we? Pop that back on there, give it mini speed, and hopefully now it's going to create, yes, a nice area around itself as it goes down. So now as it goes through the lava, it should block that lava off, stopping it getting into the elevator shaft. And it turns out I haven't recorded all of the last few clips that I was going on about. We've dug the hole all the way down to the bottom, and I've just climbed up this rope ladder to get back out again. So we're all finished. Job done. And with these last few great blocks on this elevator shaft here, we've now got a look lovely elevator shaft that we can put an elevator in. Wonderful. And there it is. We've got a cage that's going to take us to the bottom of the world. Everything should be glued together. We've got some controls there. I've thrown in a redstone contact just below this block here at that level, which should turn into an elevator contact. As soon as I put this elevator pulley up here, extend it to attach to that, and then maybe just slow this down a bit so that we don't blow ourselves to pieces actually going up and down there. But it's not going to go anywhere because there's only one floor. So what I actually need to do now is go down this shaft and find a good spot to get to the next floor and I think that's going to be pretty much all the way down at lava level if we can manage it or will you stop it lava facing totally the wrong direction been round the right way stop it there we go put that back in oh not that one that one jeez we should be able to call the elevator down to this by giving that a signal. It is, it's coming. Excellent. Now, will the door automatically open when it gets here? I've put a normal door on it, so it might not. Oh, it's already open. There we go. We've now got an elevator that goes all the way down to lava level, all the way from the top. And look at that. It looks amazing. It looks pretty dangerous and scary, but it also looks amazing. And it would seem this door doesn't work at all on the elevator now that it's a contraption. So I guess that door's just for show. So the last thing to do is add my waystone back up here. We'll put that warp plate down as well so that we can get back to the netherite farm nice and quickly and we'll see if we've actually got any gold in here my afk account wasn't actually afk for very long at all so yeah we got a few thousand that's not too bad let's take as much as we can and we're going to hop back over there and use this to fill up the piglin bartering farm and they should have been busy they are they're still going i can't believe they're still going but they are looks like this one no he's still going as well wow okay well what a success. Even hopping between dimensions, those piglins have been carrying on trading, even though they're not chunk loaded. And now we've got a whole bunch of resources. We've got ender pearls, blackstone, spectral arrows, nether brick, loads of leather, gravel, obsidian, crying obsidian, quartz, iron. Oh, we've got everything we need. But I just want to know what these hog shoes do. Driving me mad. Wooden beacons. And I don't mean beacons made out of wood. I mean beacons and wood. That's the plan today. And in the last video, I made this piglin bartering system as well as this entire piglin village and it's all been working rather well although apparently i've forgotten to tidy this little bit up so let's just do that very quickly there we go no one would ever know and if we go in here we can see in this storage system we've got a whole bunch of stuff now we're getting plenty of drops from these piglins and well i don't really need any of them but they're nice to have and they'll come in handy at some point i'm sure but that's not what today is about today i want to build a new kind of tree farm and you might be thinking, you've already got a tree farm. And you're right, not too far away from over there. If we go over this mountain range here, you can see the monorail coming down to my other tree farm. And this tree farm, when it's working, works very well. But there's a little bit of a problem with this tree farm. And that is that you need to be here for the trees to grow. Trees won't grow even in force loaded chunks unless there's a player around to actually grow them. And whilst I did used to force load this area regularly, I don't anymore because I've got lots of wood. So why do you ah, oh, ah, so why do you need a wood farm? Well, I've got loads of dark oak. I've got loads of woods that I don't really use. I've even got plenty of cherry. I don't have a great deal of mangrove. I've got hardly any spruce and I've got hardly any oak. And while I could add those to this, force chunk loaded again, bring my AFK account back over here and get this up and running. The problem is that all of the items from here come through this processing plant. They go onto this train. That all needs chunk loading. They go onto this modder rail. That all needs chunk loading, or at least the stations do. It goes all the way over this mountain all the way down to the other side and over to the snowy area which then needs chunk loading in order to get the drops off and the items get dropped off by these they come downstairs then they end up in our little storage system underneath here and then a train comes and picks them up and apparently my wood train hasn't actually been doing a very good job of actually collecting these things it would seem because i thought i was pretty much completely out of leaves so perhaps i don't need a wood farm but i've had some ideas on how i can make a good one and one that 
be suitable not just for overworld trees, but for nether trees as well, I think, maybe, possibly. So I've been back over to the area we're currently working in. I think the ideal place for that would be here, and it's going to be built in the form of a tower. And we're going to be using bone meal, so we're going to need bone meal over here as well, and a whole bunch of other things as well, so it's going to be quite a big build. So why am I doing withers as well? Well, do you see, I want beacons, and I want a wither school factory, and that all sounds right good fun to me, and while I've been in the nether already, I might as well continue to be in the nether. Speaking of bone meal though, this place here, our biodiesel factory completely surplus to requirements now that we've got an infinite source of it, still has 109,000 bone meal. So I think we could repurpose this for our tree farm, but we'll get to that later. Right now I need to go back to the nether and I need a couple of ender pearls so that I can build a new waystone so that when we get over to the nether fortress, I can actually put one of these down and get back nice and easily. And getting over to the nether fortress might be a little bit tricky, but I'm sure we'll manage. Ah, yes, here we are at the lava level. How convenient. I just love traveling through the nether. It's the best. Why don't you use the nether roof? That's a good idea. So here we are arriving somewhere near our first fortress. All we've got to do is get down below the bedrock and actually get into this thing. So let's hope the bedrock at this point isn't too deep and we can get through nice and easily. And I'm going to build exactly the same system we had before. Flip myself under there, grab my pistons, flip that lever. Ah, I've popped out again. No, 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 no. Oh, jeez. Flip lever. Go over here, click there. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it didn't work. Click the lever, come under here, point at the edge of that block there without popping up, and... Oh, it's looking promising. Yay, we got down below the bedrock. Hurrah. Oh, and we can get straight. That was convenient. Wow, I did a really good job there. <gasps> oh, geez. And here we go. Here is the nether fortress. I found it, guys. But is this nether fortress particularly good for wither skeletons? Potentially over at this part, at least. Oh, we've got one over there. Yeah, we've got a couple of crossroads here. So we might be able to just make this work. So for now, let's create ourselves a little base. Put down a waystone. Throw a few of these around. And then remember that blazes exist. Hmm, this could be tricky. Perhaps we'll come back here later because I want to get started with this wood farm. So I've been over to my creative test world. This is the base of our tree farm that we're going to be creating today. And yes, it's just going to do single trees. I did make one over here that works on double sized trees, but there's a few issues with different types of trees and how they grow. And it just wasn't really all that good. Whereas this one is going to be amazing because you can select which type of tree you want to grow. So if I want to do spruce, I press that button and the whole thing moves across one. If I press it again, you can see the entire thing moves across and I can select any type of sapling. I've also added fungus on here, although I need nylium to grow that and not podzol, so I need to figure out how I'm going to do a swap with that. And I've also got mushrooms, so let me just move this down all the way to the end. And now that brown mushrooms are selected, if I flick that lever and turn this thing on, it's going to grow the last tree that was on there and the next one will be a mushroom. And as you can see, the little saw on there has absolutely no problems dealing with mushrooms, breaking that down, and it's not actually giving me any mushroom blocks, it's just giving me mushrooms rooms which are being fed back into the system through this little system here but it's all working rather nicely what this system isn't doing for me yet is getting me any leaves and that's one of the main reasons i want this system and you might be thinking well if you've got a leaf smasher like this one has on here then you're just not going to get any samplings and the system's going to stop but no they have a clever system in place for this although i've disconnected it all but it's able to detect how many saplings are in the system and if we've got plenty then it activates this so that we just get leaves until the saplings start running out again and then it turns that off again. So I just need one of those over here and I need a way of turning this podzol into nylium when we're running our fungus. How hard could that be? Before I do that though, I haven't actually tested if mushrooms will work. So let's just slide this along over to the fungus, turn the machine back on again and oh it does. It chops it down rather nicely. Wow, we get everything. That's pretty good. So now all of those are going into the system as well. So this is how we're going to switch the Nylium to the Podzol. We've got a couple of blocks here glued together in front of a mechanical piston. And on top of that, there's a gear shift with a redstone link. Here we've got a couple of observers above the fungus lamps so that when this redstone lamp powers one of those lamps, it's going to hit this toggle switch, which is going to send a signal through this to that. And then that's going to replace it. So if I go back to the mushroom, that's going to push out. Now we've got 
Podzo, which is backwards, but that's fine. If I push it again, it's going to do the same thing. But if I go onto something that's not a fungus, it's going to switch to Nylium. And that just means all I need to do is just put those the other way around. And now we should be fungusable. So if let's bring it back to a fungus, which is the warped one, and let's see if that's going to work for us. And it grew it, but it's not bone meal in it. Yeah, the crimson one works on the crimson Nylium. So I guess for the warped Nylium, I actually need warped warp block because that's not bone mealing at all so there's another layer of complexity that i need to deal with and just to double check things if we switch that onto warp nylium and put some warp nylium in place of the red nylium and turn the machine on would be useful you can see that those will grow on the correct type of nylium so i guess i've got a bit of work to do for that it's time to build our wither skeleton farm and that means doing a whole lot of destroying doing a whole lot of placing and then thinking about how i'm going to do a whole lot of spawn proofing yeah that's going to be a tricky one so i guess i'm going to start by making a big old platform and i've got an absolute ton of nether bricks so we could use that but the nether's dark enough and I just happen to have an absolute ton of polished smooth stone there, which is really bright. So I think I'm going to use that. There we go. Mini. Now that that's done, the next thing to do is put down a mega torch to stop things from spawning around here. And now if I go away, let's go, I guess, to the nether roof and then go back again. Hopefully anything that was spawned is now despawned and I should be pretty safe to get on with this building process. Apparently the mega torch isn't too useful with ghasts. Stop it. Will you just... Oh, there we go. Let's get rid of that. Oh, jeez, look at the platform. What a mess. Well, I've made a mess. I've made a big mess of the nether for absolutely no reason at all. I didn't need to dig any of this out because, of course, I'm using mega torches to stop spawning. So why did I spend a whole day doing it? Well, I started and then I realised that I didn't need to do it and I thought, well, I'll just carry on because why not? So now we've got this huge messy area of the nether with this farm in the middle that I don't even know if it's going to work. And another thing I made a mess with is all of these lines. If we look at our map, I made a chunk grid to work out where I need my mega torches on the assumption that mega torches have a radius of 32 blocks. That's what the wiki says, that's what everyone on the internet says, but they don't. The default mega torch radius is 64, and while you can change that, I think 64 is fine, but that means instead of needing like 20 mega torches, I only actually need four. Because a mega torch will do a 64 block radius in a square above, below, and to the side each way. So this mega torch here will actually go all the way pretty much up to the end of that green line there, and all the way up to that yellow line there, all the way up to the nether roof, and all the way down to the bedrock at the bottom of the world. So yeah, I only actually need one there, there, there and there and as you can see each one of those has got a little box on top and these boxes are called dread lamps and they just stop passive mob spawning like striders to keep the mob cap free but aside from making a huge mess and wasting an entire day have i made a good farm i don't know i know things will spawn in it but i don't know if my little system will work because what i've decided to use is these nozzles nozzles go on encased fans and they will either push or pull items and entities depending on the direction of the fan the idea here is when it's turned on it will push any entities away from this corner towards the middle and if we look down there where there are four deployers with diamond swords there's another one that's actually pulling now there are some dead spots in here because they don't quite reach all of the way but i'm hoping it'll work enough with the mobs pathfinding a little bit to work and then underneath this entire thing we've got our power plant i was going to use steam engines but then i realized you can't have water in the nether and whilst i could ship it through on a train you need a lot of water for steam engines so i've opted to go with water wheels and basically what this one 
spawn doors is it's just got those four deployers all going absolutely crazy. They can drop their items into these storage drawers and hopefully all of the items are going to come down here. Wow, it's working. And as you can see, things are getting blown to the middle. And as you can also see, a lot of things in there aren't with the skeletons. We're getting magma cubes, we're getting zombie pigmen, we're getting blazes. So it's not a particularly efficient with the skeleton farm. Although it will be because all I need to do is just gather a whole bunch of wither roses. So I think I need to improve my nozzle system a little bit in order to make sure everything actually does end up down that hole and not stuck at the edges like this enderman. Oh, and none of this is spawnable. Oh, geez. Um, okay, in that case, let's uh, just throw that mega torch on there and then run away and then hopefully everything will despawn. Oh, as if I've got to spawn proof all of that. Have we got any wither skeleton skulls? One. Oh, good. It's a roaring success. So I've still got a whole bunch of work ahead of me at this farm, but it's not time to work on this farm. It's time to work on our wood farm. And a little while later, I've now got the tree farm in place. It's a little bit more optimized than the one we saw on my test world. I put some glass over these funnels to stop other items accidentally going in the chutes and clogging up these deployers, and it all should work, although we've got no power to it yet, so I can't really tell. There's a couple of things to point out, though, and that is with the mushrooms, if we grow a big mushroom and then use a mechanical saw to chop that down, we only actually get mushrooms back. And the same thing happens with a red mushroom. So that's basically just a mushroom farm rather than a mushroom stem farm. But I've already got a mushroom farm, so I've already got plenty of mushrooms. And that is in my snowy area just up these ladders in here. So I really don't need a new system for mushrooms. The other minor problem with this farm is going to be these funguses. Of course, we needed a block swapper to make those work. But if we actually grow the mushrooms and then harvest them as much as that works, we don't actually get any fungus back. So in order to run those, we'd need a separate fungus farm to feed those into here, which isn't necessarily a problem. And I will run this but instead of using a block swapper i'm just going to come out here manually change that over to the right crimson or warp block and that just saves a whole bunch of complications and the other reason network not powered network not powered it is no water again and one of the reasons I don't want to use a block swapper is because if you grow a tree on here, often that nylium can just end up turning into netherrack. And then you need to bone the netherrack that's next to the nylium in order to turn it back into nylium again. So the whole thing would be just a massive issue. So we're just not going to worry about it. Now, I still need to add the leaf smashing system into this, which I will do soon. But before I do that, I'm going to need power. And that's going to be nice and easy because our liquid storage is just there. And if we hop down underneath this platform, you can see we've already got pipes full of nothing well that should be it should be full of lava that i got a lot of pipes full of nothing well i found the reason we've got no power in that is for some reason this keeps happening to me i don't know why but in the latest version of create occasionally when i come back to this area i have to replace my water pipes in order to refill my boilers this one completely ran out of water so that one stopped so did this one at my storage system which i turned back on a minute ago by replacing these pipes and i guess any other power stations i've got over here have probably broken as well Yep, the one in the library is completely stopped for no reason at all. I don't understand why. There we go. Flip that round and now that's going to kick back in. If anyone knows why my pipes and pumps just stop working for no reason, considering all of these areas are chunk loaded, they really shouldn't, then please do let me know in the comments. Anyway, that should mean we've now got lava flowing through these pipes that already go underneath the platform, so we can just hook into those and create a little power station. And there we go, a nice compact little level 4 boiler to provide us plenty of power. And we want that power, first of all, running over to this bit here. And we'll start with the chain drive there. We'll run a bunch of shaft along here like this. And there we go. Now we've got a nice system with the speed controller. We can stick that on as fast as we want. Next, we need to do a little bit of logic to get this piston to extend and retract when we press the buttons over there. The buttons have redstone links on the back that have either a button and a sapling or a sapling and a button. And basically how this works is if we've got the one that's got a sapling on a button on it, we probably need that to activate not just this sequence gear shift but also this gearbox as well to reverse the direction i'm not sure which one needs which yet but we'll figure that out so one of these is going to need two one of these is going to need one let's make that one that one all of these are going to have saplings on both of these are going to have sequence gear shift and one of these is just going to have the gear shift and then we just need to connect these with a little bit of redstone and now i could tidy that up and put it out of the way but we'll just test that for now it should work hopefully and of course i need to add these filters on 
onto here as well. So both with the sapling, this one with the gear shift, and that one with the sequence gear shift. And now hopefully it will work. We need the system to move this way because it's at the furthest end it can go that way. So if I press this button, what's going to happen? Oh, it moved across. There we go. And if I press that one, there we go. It moves back. Can't see it. I know it's very difficult to see. I'll pop a button on here for you and then you should hopefully be able to see it. There we go. Come across just like that. Lovely. So with a little bit of jiggery pokery later, we've now got the oak saplings going up and that is working a treat. The saw comes across, it offloads everything it's got into that there and then it grows again and then cuts it down again. Let's move that onto spruce and see how we get on with spruce. Of course, it's going to do the last one that was in the system first, which is oak, but now it should grow a spruce tree and that should hopefully grow. There it goes. And now there's a birch tree, an acacia tree. And yes, we can even grow single dark oak trees on this mod pack, so I don't have to worry about the dark oak causing a problem. Next, we've got cherry trees, which work absolutely fine. And then, of course, we've got the mushrooms, which are no longer going to plant because the pods all disappeared and turned into dirt. But we're not going to use those anyway. Good. Right, all of my tree types are working. Let's turn it off and build ourselves a leaf smasher. And there we go, we've got a leaf smashing now. I don't think this is going to get all of the leaves, but it should get us plenty. So if I make that a contraption, get rid of that, get rid of that torch and just give it a shufty over here, that should only actually activate if we've got enough saplings in the system, which is controlled by this. And that is then controlled by this threshold switch here, which is looking at the saplings boxes. So now that we've got enough saplings, that thing's going to activate, although it really should only activate once the tree's actually grown. So I need to do a little bit more logic. We know a tree has grown when we've got a signal coming out from this and we need to link that together with the output from our threshold switch, which means we need an AND gate. If both of these are active, then activate the leaf smasher. And AND gates are pretty simple. I've put both of these on the back of these blocks here. If I put some redstone across there, that's going to be lit if either one of those is on. So that's an OR gate. To turn it into an AND gate, we have a redstone torch there and a redstone torch there and now that redstone's only going to go off if both of those are lit. It. So if we put a redstone torch on there, now whenever both of those are lit, we should get that redstone torch lit. And that means we can send a signal to our leaf smasher and we just got to update that on there. And now that should only actually go if a tree has grown and we've got enough saplings. And there we go. The other thing we need to do is link up the bone meal to our bone meal processing factory. But for now, all I'm going to do is steal that bone meal, bring it in here, pop it down for a second, steal that bone meal, pop that down for a second, put that one in its place over there, and then we'll take this one to the tree farm. And I think it might take us a while to go through 110,000 bone meal. 109? It's close enough. I'm rounding up. Jeez. But eventually I will link this up to there because it's only across the road it shouldn't be too difficult at all but i got other things to do today like naming these piglins i've had a lot of comments for piglin names and strider names from the last episode so i think it's time we came over here and gave them a whole bunch of names and i was very impressed to see such a diverse range of names in the comments for all of these piglins because i called them all jeff so the first name is from throwlash who wanted to call their piglin jeff the next piglin is for taylor bertie who also wanted to call their piglin Jeff. Thirdly, we got a piglin for Break Sheathen, who wanted to call their piglin Jeff. And these two were from Robert Fisher and the tall curly one who both came up with the name Jeff. Max B wanted to call their piglin Jeff, whereas Robert Fisher wanted to call their piglin Jeff. The tall curly one wanted to call their piglin Jeff, and Johnny Kiffin wanted to call their piglin Jeff. Adina Sign wanted to call their piglin Jeff, and Ducko Gottaguno, or whatever the name is, wanted to call their piglin Jeff. Interestingly enough, Lyra wanted to call her piglin Jeff and Gian DiMaggio wanted to call her piglin Jeff 2 Electric Boogaloo. And that's it. We're out of names for Jeff. However, I did get a couple of names for the Striders too. And apparently you guys don't like these Striders shivering. Got a few comments asking me to put lava in here, but I don't want to burn their hay bale. Anyway, Tree Sam wanted to call one of the Striders Jeff and somebody called Jeff Smith wanted to call the other Strider Jeff. So there we go. Everything's now named, all with completely unique and very interesting names that will be easy to pick out in a crowd and you'll know exactly which one your piglin is because it's the name you chose. You're welcome. So back at the Wither Skeleton Farm, I've been busy adding in a whole bunch more fans to try and get everything to blow to the middle. And now it does. It all blows very much to the middle. But then it kind of gets stuck because there's so much. And I think that's this one on top sucking everything in. 
So I'm going to just disconnect that for a second. Hopefully everything will end up down that hole. Although it looks like my deployers aren't deploying, which probably means my storage system is absolutely full of junk. It is. So we need to do some filtering, otherwise we're not going to kill anything. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to show you earlier, when I was doing all of that digging in the nether, clearing out all of this, this is what I got. So we got over a million netherrack. We got a whole bunch of nether fortress. We got a whole bunch of scoria and scorchia and a few warp woods as well, as well as loads of quartz, gravel, glowstone, magma blocks, a little bit of ancient debris and even some blackstone, soul sand and soul soil. But I don't need those here that I just wanted to show you. So in order to filter out these items, we're going to utilize the lava, which means I need a filter with all of these things in it, as well as a smart chute. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here, put the smart chute there, put a filter in there and then put the draw controller slave on top and see what disappears. Oh, and there we go. All the things we don't want have disappeared. And a few minutes later, things have changed again. We've now got a hole in the floor with deployers facing upwards and we've got another nozzle there sucking things down. Hopefully now the fans will be able to blow far enough across here to get them into there and anything that spawns in there will just get sucked directly into that. At least that's my plan. Let's break the torch and find out if it's actually going to work this time. Please, we've got a magma cube in there that's dying, some pigmen in there that are dying and now we've got more stuff. Oh yes. Oh, this is working quite nicely. Now obviously I've made the floor of the bottom area out of dirt so that when we got Wither Roses we'll be able to put those down there and the reason we want Wither Roses on the floor is that means that only wither skeletons will be able to spawn. Well, this is all just incredibly satisfying. What an amazing farm. I can't wait until it's just withers. So now the wither school farm is a roaring success. It's time to focus on this wood farm and get the building built up. So cue that music. Let's do a montage. Another one. Maybe. 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 I don't think it looks too bad considering it's just a big tower with a tree farm inside. It's got a little area outside with some logs, a couple of lean-tos and some containers at the front. I decided on this build not to go for another tarmac courtyard. It does need linking to the road system so we can fetch our items and put them in the storage system. But otherwise, I think it's come out okay. It's got a glass roof so we can grow plenty of trees during the day. And I've tried to vary up the walls a little bit to just make it all look a little bit different so it's not all just the same big old building and inside is a bit of a mess we've got some catwalk above here we've got our control system and this leads through into the little granite building which is just the room for the piston extension arm to come back into so not really a lot going on in here Back out into the entrance room and going through into the main area, we are welcomed with just a big old mess of catwalks and stairs and, well, I haven't really done a great deal in here either. But it doesn't really need much, to be fair. We've got our tree growing system, which is working rather nicely. And if we go up to the top floor, we've got a little bit of a viewing platform so we can come up here and see what's going on. And we can even go out this side door over here onto this catwalk and walk around the side of the building for no particular reason. So uh, overall, I'm really happy happy with it. I think it's come out great, but as usual, there's a problem. And the problem is jungle trees. You see, jungle trees, for some reason in this mod pack, are a bit broken. They should grow and give you jungle saplings and jungle leaves, but they don't in this mod pack. Let's just switch it over to jungle quickly. And you'll see as the jungle tree grows, it actually grows with azalea leaves instead of jungle leaves, which means we're getting azalea saplings and azalea leaves, which is nice because I like azalea leaves, but unfortunately that means we're not getting any jungle saplings at all in order to regrow this thing which is a little bit of a problem and as you can see yeah we're getting the azalea and the azalea leaves but no jungle leaves and no jungle saplings but other than that it's a roaring success and speaking of successes my afk account has been afk all this time at the fortress farm and i'm hoping that that's been running all this time i've no idea if it has 
So let's head over there and see if we've got thousands. 259 Wither Skulls. And it sounds very much like things are still dying, potentially. Or not. We've just got a whole bunch of magma cubes stuck in there. Have we got too much junk in here again? Oh, we get, oh dear. Yeah, we, I forgot about backpacks. That's a nice one. I haven't had a Nether Traveler's backpack or a Magma Cube Traveler's backpack. I shall add all of these to my collection. And I think instead of using our dump fill to decide what we're actually going to get rid of, it would probably be easier just to decide the things that we're actually going to keep. We put the drill controller slave back on, so that should kick in and start working again now. It is doing. Excellent. In which case, we need to make this a whole bunch better. And that means going to the end. I haven't been to the end yet in this Let's Play. We're nearly 50 episodes in, and I haven't even been to an end portal and unlocked one. And looking at my map, it's just over there. Although I'm pretty sure there must be a closer one. Blaze powder, eyes of ender. And let's throw one and see which way it goes. It's going that way. So I'm going to do a little bit of flying go and find myself an end portal and well i suppose take out the dragon now it's going this all oh, right okay so it's i guess pretty much directly below us down here hello big cave wow this is a big cave a really big cave oh goody i love underwater caves oh but an underwater end portal is just what i was looking for and i'm gonna be smart and i'm gonna mark my way through all of the doorways i've been through with this red wall oh i found a library i'll take that smithing template then this is another library oh a chest oh diamonds a creeper here it is. I found the end portal, peeps. Let's throw a bunch of these in. Let's get this open. And I suppose I should make myself a new waystone. Break the spawner. I'm not going to break it, but what I am going to do is I'm going to move it. Just, just take this spawner. Hey, hey. Will you give up? And I'm just going to stop it. Stop it. I'm going to take it away. I need one more waystone. With my protection five on everything I've got, as well as all of my other stuff, I think I'm good to go. Although I should have probably got sharpness on my sword rather than smite, but that's fine. Let's do this. There goes nothing. We're going to the end. Just get up here and pop my waystone down. The end. Good. Now I can get in and out nice and easily from wherever I am. you stop look you're not even doing any damage to me clear off thank you very much for your pearls and there we go we got a dragon egg lovely do the old sticker torch down on the floor underneath it trick to break it into an item end is done that's good i might as well go through here and get some credits skip i want to skip thank you i want to back here well, that's fine because now i can just hop straight back to the end lovely right what's this stuff ooze does it hurt no, but it's kind of squishy. And it gives me Ender Stride. What's Ender Stride? Whoa, whoa, that, that wasn't... Yeah, it, it makes you just randomly teleport, apparently. That's not ideal. Cosmic Cod? I want one. I got one. And what's this flower? It's a glow seed. I need it. Will you clear off? So why have we come to the end? What do we need the end for? Well, if we're going to cheat... Really? If we're going to be cheesing with us, then we can use the end portal trick, which means doing a little bit of digging to get down below it and saying hello to this lovely area of bedrock that we can use to make wither fights nice and easy. So I guess let's pop the waystone down here for now. Head over to the fortress farm, find ourselves many, 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 many wither skulls. And I believe, although I may get this wrong and have to actually fight the wither properly, that if I do this and then just throw down some soul sand like this and then throw some wither skeletons on it, it should hopefully get stuck in the bedrock. And then it should just suffocate to death. I guess, no, helping it was a bad idea. Now it's loose. Stop it. Hey, you're not doing any damage to me, mate. And one wither down. So if I hadn't have hit him, that should have worked out okay. But I'm wondering, this is going to take me ages just to do this manually. Would it be possible to use deployers or some create mechanisms to just build the withers here for me, let them die, and have a hopper system to actually collect the... Oh, the Enderman hit him. Don't you... Look what you've done, Enderman. This is going to hurt you a lot more than it hurts me. You didn't listen, did you? You just didn't listen. Right, let's try again. Third time lucky. This time not being interfered with by Enderman, hopefully. And as I was saying, I'm hoping that maybe we could use deployers or something to actually just place the withers for us and have an actually automated farm. Well, he's nearly dead. He's just about there any second now. He should go pop. And there we go. A nice little nether star just for me. 
Thank you, mate. So, will these deployers be destroyed by the wither when he explodes on, well, the, the spawning thing? His spawning thing? Well, you know what I mean. When he spawns in, he does a little, he goes explode a bit, don't he? No, they, they didn't break. So we could just make a completely automatic wither building system here. Ooh, this sounds exciting. Let's do this. So this is what I'm thinking. We've got a bunch of deployers all around here with smart shoots on. We do our usual storage draw trick to get the items into those. And then we just got a couple of storage drawers at the front here, which will put soul sand in one of them and the wither skulls in the other. So all of the deployers have now got soul sand except that one at the front. And that's because that one needs to get it from below because otherwise it's going to get in the way of the wither. And I don't want to power any of this yet until I actually find out if it works because I'm pretty sure half of this is going to get blown up and I'm pretty pretty sure that that deployer at the front is going to get blown up but i guess there's only one way to find out so let's throw down some soul sand let's put another wither together and see what happens this time it spawned in the correct place so that's good but when it explodes what's going to get demolished oh nothing well in that case i better wire it up now with a water wheel a bit of shaft and a whole bunch of chain drive i believe everything is now wired together the only thing i don't have is a collection system which means i'm not going to get the nether stars if the wither dies so i'm going to need some sort of hopper minecart system underneath this or a backpack we'll steal one of mr beardstone's ideas we'll worry about that in a minute though what i want to do is flick this lever and watch very slowly as this starts to build something this one hasn't got any wither skull so that's not going to work and i guess we probably need a delay on there because that's just long the wither skull straight on the floor that one didn't even go okay ah yes that one needs a shaft that would explain things and we only want this to actually go once and then wait for a long time i think i've got this set up so i've moved the water wheels around a little bit to give us a little bit more power because everything was going a little bit slowly and i've separated the power so that the soul sand deployers are on one power line and the wither skull deployers are on another one and both of those are controlled by clutches and the entire system's controlled by a clutch as well i've added in a backpack with a magnet upgrade and that means that if another star falls down it's going to pick that up and we get an output from that and that's what's going to kick start the system whenever we get a new nether star it's basically going to place another one so that's where this comes in this gives an output this picks it up this is a pulse repeater it waits three seconds and then holds on the signal to place the wither skulls for about two seconds to allow the the deployers to actually place but before that happens we're gonna have the soul sand being placed and again that's gonna hold on for two seconds to allow that to be placed so i think that needs to be in inverted mode to keep them locked until it actually starts if i turn those off and turn the power on nothing should happen at all what i am gonna do though is just get rid of some of that soul sand so that's out of the way now this deployer hasn't got a wither skull because i don't want a wither just yet we're just testing so now if i grab one of these nether stars and chuck that down somewhere we should see another wither soul sand being built and then the skull should come out afterwards i missed it i missed it i couldn't see but they are on there we've got two of them on there so that worked all right let me just do that again so you can actually see it so a wither dies the nether star goes down the backpack picks it up it builds the soul sand and then after a couple of seconds the heads come out and they get built as well it works great okay right in that case then all i need to do is give this deployer some wither skulls back by the system again and hopefully this time when it builds a wither it's not all going to get blown up there we go a wither has been spawned oh it has dropped another wither skull which isn't ideal they're probably going to get blown up they didn't oh okay and that just means that this extender here is on for a little bit too long so let's just put that on one second instead of two and hopefully that'll work better well this wither's just about dead it's time to find out if we're gonna get another one as soon as he dies here we go drop the nether star and skulls there we go another wither that's amazing oh i'm so impressed with myself what an amazing little system and now we've got a fully automatic nether star farm oh this is unbelievable but now though i'm going to turn this system off wait for this wither to die because i'm a little bit worried if i unload him he's going to be free in the end and then i'm going to go back and check on our wither skull situation wow 
Um, we, we seem to have a lot of wither skulls. 1,145? That's ridiculous. So what about everything else then? A reasonable amount of gold, a good amount of bones, rotten flesh, coal, loads of experience, even more experience. I'm collecting it like crazy. Gold nuggets, blaze rods, loads of those. Oh, even more exp and even more. Oh, geez. Um, I think the experience may have overflowed. So there's a little bit of tweaking to do here. But I think I've got more Wither Skulls than I'm probably ever going to need. So that begs the question then, do I really need to add a load of Wither Roses to this to make it a Wither Skull only farm when we're getting all of these other very useful things like Magma Cream? Before I think about that, what I now need to do is head back to our tree farm and see how that's been getting on. It should have been chunk loaded for a couple of days. I've no idea if that means it's going to have carried on running. Let's find out. Oh, geez. Yep, this is oh, geez, this is overflowed as well. We got a lot of leaves and a lot of blocks. And, um, and now no saplings because I guess it couldn't pick any more up because the system's completely... Oh, geez. I need upgrades. I seriously need upgrades for these storage drawers. And as usual, I've got almost no diamonds and I've got no emeralds. And it's the emerald storage upgrades which are the best. And so far throughout this let's play i've been getting all of my emeralds from these guys but i'm getting so sick and tired of dealing with these guys to get a handful of emeralds we really need an emerald system but before i get an emerald system let's just throw all of those uh, with the schools in there as you can see i've afk'd here a little bit and got us a whole 21 nether stars but that's not with the roses emeralds i need them and i need them to make emerald storage upgrades because they increase your storage capacity by 32 times the base value that is the most powerful storage upgrade you can get and as you can see i use storage drawers all over the place and this one even though i've added a whole bunch of upgrades to this i've only got gold ones left so it's overflowed again which means we've got xp all over this thing which means the rates of the farm end up well it's just stopping completely i guess the good news is that we got another 610 wither skulls because in the last episode we made this amazing farm and we also made a very amazing system in the end underneath the end portal and i've had a few comments to telling me I've done this wrong, even though it works perfectly. And the reason I've done this wrong is apparently I'm spawning the wither in slightly the wrong place. See, I've got the middle block of the wither directly under the center of the end portal above us, and apparently that should be the tail. So realistically, this entire thing needs moving one block forward, and if I do that, then even if I hit it while it's spawned in, it'll die quicker. And that potentially means I can add a deployer here with the sword, which is going to deal with it even quicker than it already is. But I'm not into fiddling with that right now. I've got plenty of stuff on my plate because we need that emerald farm so we may well come to that later on in the video but now though the emerald farm we're going to be building is going to be actually in this area very conveniently this area actually holds the ability for us to create not only a bad omen farm but a raid farm as well and that is right at the end of our road just next door to our netherite factory over at this pillager tower that i actually visited earlier on in the season and as you can see i made a little tower of monkeys with the pillager captain at the top because I thought that was fun. Now, even though this is technically a modded pillager outpost, it still works. So I've spent a few hours fiddling in a creative version of this world, figuring out exactly how I'm going to do it. And it's going to be really easy. We don't need to demolish all of this. We don't need to get rid of anything around here. We don't even need to do any spawn proofing. And I've devised a system that's going to get us bad omen pretty regularly. And hopefully I'll be able to squeeze a raid farm into that as well. And in order to do that, I need to build upwards. So it looks like we're going to be having another tower on our hands so the first thing i need to do is enable my mini map and i'm going to just pile up with a little bit of dirt all the way up to y equals 184 and that's going to be a pillager spawning platform and in order to stop pillagers spawning everywhere else and other mobs for that matter we now need to go down 64 blocks at the very least and that means digging down to y equals 120 and i'm going to go a little bit further than 120 i'm actually going to go to 110 and place down a mega torch and that means mobs won't spawn in a 60 64 block radius away from that torch but it's not a sphere it's a square so basically 64 blocks in that direction that direction that direction and that direction as well as 64 blocks up and 64 blocks below it so that should mean if i disappear all of these pillagers now no more should spawn because that mega torch is there preventing them from spawning there's just the guy at the top of the tower and i don't really want to move him because i quite like him up there oh i'm a hedgehog <laughs> 
<laughs> so this tower then, we're going to go basically 10 blocks in each direction. And then I'm going to fill the gaps in with grass because I want these to be grass platforms. Now, I don't think it actually needs to be grass to spawn the pillagers, but in my testing, it seemed to work pretty well. And now that I've got one platform and slightly fewer arrows in me, I now need to make two more of these platforms. And there we go. We've got three platforms, all 21 by 21 blocks, which is nowhere near as big as I could create this. But I'm not going for maximum efficiency. I'm going for something that I'll be able to put a building round. You see, according to the wiki, pillagers will spawn around a raid outpost with a 72 by 72 by 54 block radius. So basically from the top floor of the tower, although it doesn't work with the modded ones because the modded towers are a different level to normal ones. So a normal pillager outpost top level tower, you could go out 36 blocks in each direction from the center and 54 blocks up and down and pillagers will spawn. So I can make those platforms a whole bunch bigger. And we've already got someone up here proving that my system works already. Hello, sir. So to make sure we're not bothered by pillagers while we're building the rest of this, let's pop down another mega torch. And now I'm going to place down a whole bunch of glass. And it doesn't have to be glass. It's just I've got so much of it. And the advantage of glass is it's see-through. And I'm going to build this all the way up here to that level there. And with my amazing wand, I'm going to just surround this entire thing with glass. And because I'm glass rich, I'm going to double up the thickness of the glass on each side of this thing as well. And there we go. Each side now has a full two layers of glass on it, which means phase one of our plan is almost complete, except for everything else I've got to do, which is more than I've just done. So I, I guess we're just beginning, really. For the next phase of this plan, I'm going to need a whole bunch of fans. And I think that's way more than I need. And I need to place these in very specific positions. Basically, every other block all the way along each one of these platforms on the bottom layer. The pans in the corners are going to have nozzles on and we're going to have glass up the sides there to stop anything getting stuck in those corners and anything that might be spawnable, including nozzles, even though I don't think they are, we're going to put glass on top of to stop them being spawnable. And then we need four more fans because we're going to have an extra one in the middle on each one. Just like that. And now we need a ridiculous amount of chain drive. And if I'd done this properly, I really shouldn't have put all of this glass in until I put the mechanisms in because smashing glass is a slow, laborious process. And I really should have used some sort of glass that actually emits light, like the light emitting glass from my own pack. So these chain drives are going to come all the way across this side like this. And it's going to stick right out at the end there. In fact, it's going to stick out another block on each side as well. And then we're going to have a bunch more chain drive down the back of each one of these as well, like this. And now what we need to do is bring this out a couple more blocks and stick a gearbox there. And that means when we power this one, all of those are going to be powered. And if that one's pushing, these ones will push as well. So there we go. That's now connected the whole way round. And if I power that chain drive at any point, every single one of those fans is all going to spin in the right direction. However, what I'm going to do now is probably a little bit stupid, and that's to smash all of this glass and get rid of it because I'm actually going to surround this with these lime glass blocks instead because these emit light and that means it will look a little bit more emeraldy for a start. It also means that we're not going to get other mobs spawning in this at night time. And with a couple more blocks that is this layer 100% done and rather than having to do that all over again on the other layers I'm just going to grab a quick schematic of it. Let's pop our schematic cannon down assuming it can go through walls. I'm pretty sure it can. Put our table down and if we hop ourselves down to the next layer and break a couple of those and click that there it's almost in the right place there we go i think that's exactly in the right place of where it needs to be excellent good let's throw that in the schematic cannon give it a bit of gunpowder find out what we need and it's really not all that much and now hopefully that should be everything i need yep everything except the mega torch we don't need another one of those so let's just click go i guess and hopefully that's going to fill in the layer below yes it is excellent and once this layer is complete then we'll be able to go down, do the same thing on this layer. And if I really wanted to maximize efficiency on this farm, like I said, I could make these platforms a whole bunch bigger, but I could also bring them down. If I tore this tower down, I could make more and more levels and that would cause more and more pillagers to spawn. And while this layer is continuing to fill in, I'm now going to go down to the bottom layer and add in our collection system. And this isn't a collection system for blocks. This is going to be a collection system for mobs. So basically, I need to just dig out this middle bit a little bit wider. We'll use some cyan light glass this time just to bring this down another block. Oh, and that ding was our schematic cannon finishing what it was doing. So let's set it up again for the bottom layer. That should be all in the right position. So we're going to come just a couple of blocks down here like this. Build this in across at this level here. 
This doesn't need to be glass or light blocks. I just like them because, well, it means everything can be light. We're going to grab some buckets of water and we're going to put one in each corner. But in order to do that, I actually need an infinite water source first. There we go. So they should all be pushing to the middle. And then all we're going to do is stick a warp stone down there and put that one in there, which is attuned to this warp plate. I said warp stone, I meant warp plate. And I guess for good measure, although we probably don't need them, I'm just going to stick in a couple of trapdoors around this hole as well, just to encourage mobs to accidentally end up in that water. And now when a mob falls in here, it's going to get pushed onto the warp plate. And at the moment, it's not going to go anywhere because it's not actually connected to anything. But it will be soon, just in time. It's all finished. OK, we've now got three layers on here, all pretty much complete. All we've got to do now is link all of these chain drives together. And for no reason other than symmetry, I'm going to come to the middle ones here, link all of these just like that throw a little bit of glass on the top there to make sure that's not spawnable now all we need is power so we might as well just bring this all the way down to the bottom and i'm not 100 percent sure where we're going to have our power station so i'm just going to leave that there for now but we are going to need a power station before we start worrying about power though we're going to come back up to the top and we're going to build our afk platform and i'm going to go up 32 blocks from this top platform so of course i'm going to use some light blocks from here to make sure it's nice and light and i'm going to alternate that with glass because because why not? I can't reach it. I need, I need to get up into it. I can't reach. Oh, jeez. So obviously this is going to be very difficult for me to get up to, but it's not. We, of course, just need a couple of warp plates. And do you remember the other warp plate that we've got in there? Well, that's going to come in useful now too. But before we can connect it up here, we actually need to put in a few bits and bobs. So first of all, just about, I think at this point here, we need a smart shoot. And we're going to have another one just in front of that there. We're going to have a couple of draw controller slaves under underneath those as usual and we're going to just bring a little bit of trim this way for now and for now probably just temporarily we're going to bring this trim up here stick a draw controller on there and we're going to have some storage drawers around here to contain all of the items from this raid farm and i know you get an absolute ton of items from raid farms so we're going to need a whole bunch of different ways of actually storing them and getting them out of here but that'll do for now next what i actually need to do is break both of those because i put them in the wrong place smash all of this because i put these in the wrong place and smash all of these because i put these in the wrong place then we put our warp plate on that one there. We're going to attune it to that one there. And that should make... Oh, in fact, we don't even need to put a shard in there. That means now, if I was just to smash away this bit of glass here, if anything goes into that water stream down there, for instance, all of these spruce drawers... They're just going to pop up here onto that plate and they're going to go into our storage system. So all we need to do now is just throw a little bit of glass around this. And that means our pillagers, when they spawn, are going to end right there. They're going to be stood in here like this. They can't go anywhere because the warp plate I'm stood on isn't connected to any more. And that means that I can stand here in this AFK spot and just give them a whack occasionally with my sword to get rid of them. That will in turn drop items. Occasionally it will give me bad omen and that means we'll have a bad omen farm. Now, fortunately for us, we're not not a million miles away from our amazing netherite factory and running underneath this factory is a lava line in fact this factory's actually already got power although it's turned off at the moment so we could just steal the power straight from here because there's no way we need all of this for this factory and if i stick a stressometer on here you can see we're hardly using any of it so we might as well just steal this and here we go, we have a power line coming through to our brand new area. Now, of course, it's a little bit floating above the ground, but I guess we'll probably have to extend this platform out so everything's at the same level, which means it will be underground. And really, we should probably have that chain drive coming down over here where the power is rather than all the way over there. I'm going to go and delete all of that now. Stick a cog on there, stick a speed controller there, stick a gearbox on there, and we want these blowing at about 128. Yep, they're all blowing in towards the middle, that's good. And that means I can get rid of that mega torch, it means I can get rid of these blocks, and that means the entire system is ready to go. And flicking this on, we should start to hopefully get some pillagers falling into our system and ending up up here. With a bit of luck, there's one in there, and he's about to get pushed to the middle. There's another one in there as well. Come on guys, fall in the middle, maybe I should put some more traps doors on that edge there but they're going to the middle that means they should be up here any second and here they are he's just popped in hello sir now that was a little bit slow in my test world it happened a whole bunch quicker than this but as you can see we're getting a bunch of pillagers all turning up now and they're all popping up here so of course i need to get out my sword now this has looting on it but unfortunately this is a smite four sword and not a sharpness sword and if we're going to be running this as part of a raid farm 
we're going to be getting evokers and that means you need to kill them quickly otherwise you get vexes so i could really do with a sharpness sword but let's just test this out they can't hit me but i can hit them they can all die and i can get a whole bunch of stuff for that in fact i got 16 emeralds but i don't want to pick up the emeralds we've got a captain we're going to get a bad omen in a minute even oh we got two captains so there we go a bad omen farm when they actually decide to come up here there we go there's one right then chaps it's time to get minced wow look at all of those emeralds that's a lot of emeralds makes me wonder if we even need a raid farm but we do of course we need a raid farm before we move on and start building more of this farm we've got a bunch of guys up here now but i'm actually going to change how all of this works because i'm going to steal more of mr beardstone's ideas i've got here a diamond backpack with some tier three upgrades i've got a tank upgrade and i've got a magnet upgrade and what that means is if i throw something on the floor it's going to pick that up it should also pick up XP. So if I was to kill these guys here and not collect the XP myself... Wow, there's a lot of them this time. You can see I didn't get any of the XP, but none of it's there. Because it's all gone into there. Not that there's much of it, but it's all in there. It's also picked up all of these items. And that means we no longer need this mess of storage drawers. So after letting this sit for a few minutes, as you can see, we got a bunch of pillagers in here. And they are still coming, slowly but surely. It's not the fastest system in the world, but it's working. But I really do need that sharpness. And I also really do need more diamonds. So I went down to the mine and did a whole bunch more digging, sending my giant tunnel bore off in different directions, mashing through the deep slate at the bottom of the world and uncovering plenty of ores and diamonds. I even ran it through part of an ancient city to see what i get. And for some reason, there are even more diamonds under there than anywhere else, giving me a grand total of 684 diamonds. Once that was done, I headed back to the Bad Omen farm, added on a couple more spawning layers and removed the pillager outpost below using my vein mining tools. With that gone, it was time for a new sword so in the library i spent a bunch of those new diamonds on netherite upgrade templates crafted a diamond sword upgraded it to netherite and enchanted it using my hyper experience enchanters with all of the best enchantments including sharpness six i then hopped over to hill valley to buy a couple of mending books from my villagers and accidentally triggered a raid which i then had to deal with and with just a couple of stragglers left i headed off to test this amazing new sword but it still wasn't enough to one hit kill the pillagers so i made a shoot above the afk platform for all of them to fall down in order to take fall damage which brings us to now. So the next stage of this emerald farming plan is to turn this into a raid farm. But that's going to be a big problem. If I was to create a village up here, and every time I got bad omen, a raid spawned, the raiders would actually end up in that platform down there. But when raiders spawn in, they pathfind. And anything that pathfinds against fans just won't get pushed by the fans. That's problem number one. Any pillagers within a 96 block radius of the raid, i.e. the one spawning down there, then actually actually get added to the raid so as they continue to spawn in the raid wave just will go on infinitely so that's problem number two problem number three is a raid will spawn in 128 by 128 by 32 high block radius away from the village so if i wanted a raid farm up in the sky it's gonna have to be 128 blocks by 128 blocks wide which would mean our tower would be ridiculous it would have a massive roof on it that just spread out all the way over here in all the different directions directions and it would look horrendous but don't worry peeps i've got a plan and that plan involves a whole bunch of digging i think i'll take that and i need this and this and this and this and i need to turn this system off for now and i need to figure out what's at least 96 blocks away from our lowest platform which is here which means i need this platform to be at least below level 82 which is substantially further down than our mega torch and i need to make sure that this spot here is no more than 128 blocks away from our top platform an 80 plus 128 is 208 on our top platform is a 190 but don't forget that's a sphere so it might just be that the corners of this don't quite make it but i'm pretty sure they will so let's just dig ourselves a little bit of space out of here and we need to go 64 blocks in each direction with our incredible mining machine and off it goes into what looks like water ca oh no don't tell me this is all water caves
So here we go. A massive 128 by 128 block area. In fact, it's slightly bigger than that. That's actually just this area covered by the green lights. And the green lights are to prevent hostile mobs because, of course, we can't mega torch this area. If we mega torch this area, then the raid will just vanish as it tries to spawn in. But we don't want things spawning elsewhere. So on each side of this, there's a little hole with the mega torch down at the bottom, meaning that no mobs can spawn all the way up to the edge of this platform. And why have I had to do this? Well, let me explain. Let's say on a smaller scale that this light block here is our village. Now a raid will spawn anywhere around that up to 128 blocks away on the first wave. On the second wave, they'll actually look for a space within 64 blocks and then on the third wave, they can spawn right in the middle of the village. And what you might be thinking is, well, if they'll spawn up to 128 blocks away on their first wave, then just make a small little area around the village for them to spawn in and make sure everything outside of that is spawn proof. And I was thinking the same thing. I thought we could just pop our village up here on the AFK platform above here and just build a big old bowl above it for them to spawn in. But it doesn't work. Hopping into a creative copy of this world where I've done a whole bunch of testing, I expect the raiders to all spawn in there or in that platform down there because they're both close enough. But watch, the raid bar gets to the top, it vanishes, and within a couple of seconds, I'm just going to get an immediate victory. There we go. <laughs> I've, I've won. So back on the server, that's why we've had to create this ginormous room so that we've got plenty of space for the raiders to be able to spawn in, and hopefully they'll all be drawn towards the village and we can do some sort of catchment thing here. But there's a problem. Let's Let's imagine our village is here and our villagers stood right there while the raiders could spawn anywhere up to 32 blocks above them and that's why i've cleared out a 32 block space above so they can only spawn at that level they can also spawn 32 blocks below which is caves so i need to spawn proof all of that and the easiest way to do that is with the schematic cannon if i take a schematic of this entire area we need to go all the way to this corner but all the way to the ceiling up there and now this entire thing that i've made should all be within this schematic grab a schematic cannon and now i need to load that schematic onto this blank one and this will take a while because it's a huge area so now what i need to do is move that because it's in the way smash this bit of glass and dig down 32 blocks so if i click on this spot now whoa we can load that schematic in and i can't get out of the hole and that schematic should come all the way to the top of this but it's actually a couple of blocks too high so let's just move it down a couple of blocks make sure it's set Entered, and it is because our little green square is right in the middle. Basically, what I need to do is replace solid with empty. So now if I click go, and what it should do now is actually fill all of that stone that's underneath us with air. And there we go. As you can see, it is actually filling up this area below us with air, removing all of the blocks, which, yes, is a little bit cheaty, but it's going to take ages. 18 hours later and that was with the schematic cannon going full speed if it was going at its default speed it would have taken 15 days but it's done it's all done now if i break this and go down here it is complete we have a whole new area that is completely spawn proof hopefully ideally really how did you get in here oh geez okay well i guess i got some oh my goodness there's a few of them stop it no, I don't want wardens in here, thank you. Oh, look, that's probably why. Well, I guess we've got a few holes to cover up and things to sort out. So, yeah, a little bit of tidying up to do, but that means we now have a completely spawn-proof couple of it. Couple of areas with things spawning in them. And while all that was going on, I've been busy. If we hop up to the top of this thing, you'll see that I've completely built our tower. Oh, no, I, I didn't do it, did I? I was asleep. Yeah, I was asleep while that was going on, so I still got a whole bunch of decorating to do up here. And we got a new problem. Jeez. Before we had that mega torch down at the bottom, making sure nothing could spawn around our pillager outpost at this level. But of course, we can't have that anymore because we need things to be able to spawn down at that level there and up here. And if I put a mega torch in there, the radius of the mega torch is so big, it'll either stop things spawning down there and kill the raid or stop things spawning down there and kill the pillagers. Going into free cam for a second, you can see there's a whole bunch of 
caves and things around here and all of this area around here that I also need to spawn proof to stop pillagers spawning in. I really didn't think this farm was going to be such a chore. So I've moved our bad omen farm killing system down here and I've removed the mega torches from up above. But now there's a big problem. Hopping into free cam and going up above this place, you'll see all of the pillagers are now spawning down here instead of in our spawning platform. So I guess the first thing I need to do is make all of that up there spawn proof. Wait a minute, we got one, but it's not a captain, so it's pretty useless. That's not going to help us at all. Yay, it's drilling time again. It really doesn't have far to go this time, which is nice. Oh dear. Oh dear. I may have a bit made a boo-boo. Oh, I can't. What? What? Ah, I've done it again. Oh my goodness, this is a nightmare. All I'm trying to do is just dig out a bit of area, guys. Well, as usual, mining out big old areas is annoying and it's not actually getting me the depth I need, so I've got a new plan. Well, I guess here goes nothing. Last time I did a huge big drilling system like this, it went invisible. Well, we'll see what happens this time. Let's turn on the lever. Is it too many blocks? It's not too big. Lies. Max blocks moved. 4096. Save. Confirm. Oh, and now it's gone invisible. But it's working. It's invisibly working, which is my favorite kind of working. Beat that raid farm. Okay, it's all getting a little bit laggy. Oh, jeez. Oh, and we're there. We're there. We're there. We're there. We're there. Stop. Oh, jeez. Don't. Oh, no. I've gone through. Oh, no. I've gone through all of this now as well. It looks like I stopped it just in time. Now, all I need to do is push this ginormous contraption a whole bunch of blocks the other way. Grab my myself a bit of a crank stick it on there and hopefully i'll be able to push whoa I forgot I need to empty out all of the items first before I can push it, otherwise it's just going to destroy itself like it kind of did. Oh, jeez. And now that those are empty, I should actually be able to push it without the whole thing crashing. Hopefully, fingers crossed, let's find out. No, I can't. Great, that means I've got to rebuild this entire thing again the other side. Fantastic. Cool. So way more time than I'd like to admit later. And we now have a huge hole. Everything is fixed. Everything should hopefully be working, although I haven't tested it yet. And you might be thinking, you must have crushed that big stack of monkeys with the pillager on top. I didn't. He's up there. Of course, I stuck them all in a minecart and shoved them out the way just so they didn't get squished. So the first thing I need to do is take test if this is actually the right size hole and the way I need to do that is to get rid of the mega torch that's up there. Good news the system is working it's not ever so quick getting them down here but we've just had a pillager captain and another one spawn and nothing is spawning where it shouldn't at the top which means our bad omen farm is working again and that means it's time to actually turn this into a raid farm. First of all we're going to need a bed and we're going to need a workstation and then we're going to need a villager and it just so happens not far from this area here there is a village just a hop skip and a jump across town although i didn't look after them at all but it, oh yes there's one over there you'll do perfectly you my friend oh no just start to raid at this village run away oh geez look what a mess we've made it's fine and bait is just going to live down here and now that he's in place nice and safely we need to trigger a raid i would like a captain please guys so moving things around again a little bit, I've moved my little chopping system here. We've got the fall drop again for them to take a little bit of damage. Our baked villager is down there, and I've just marked out a little area down here where I think water streams would be able to go to push everything to the middle, and we've just had a pillager captain. And that means we can start a raid and see what happens. So let's give this guy a chop. We're going to start a raid. There was one raid remaining, which obviously means there's a pillager up there somewhere, but hopefully we'll get the proper raid starting. They're supposed to be far enough away to not cause any effect. That's a problem. Hmm. That's the whole point of me being down here is that that doesn't affect anything. And why is there, why, why is there nothing here to... Oh, jeez. I think we might have a rogue pillager somewhere. That guy's going crazy. Oh, oh, Captain Villager. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Captain Villager, but you're going to have to go, I think. Yeah, he was causing a problem. Sorry about that, monkeys. But don't fret, you can have this one as the pillager captain instead. There you go. Everything's back to normal. Right, now these guys shouldn't be counting as part of the raid. But they do. Every time one spawns in, we... Oh, jeez. So it's unlikely that the raid bar's going to get to the top of it did. But nothing spawned again. Have we just got immediate victory again? What? Raid with nothing. There's nothing on the floor below. And there's nothing up here. And the raid bar's just empty. Oh, no, they're up there. No! Then, no, but the village is down here, you morons. You're not allowed to be more than that many blocks away from the village. How did you do that? Oh my goodness me. So we've got a raid. 
they're just all in totally the wrong place. How did you do this, you absolute useless morons? Well, this just isn't ideal. And there's no workstations up there, and there's no other villagers for miles. So I don't get it. Okay, the second wave has started. These ones should be significantly closer, but still we've got absolutely nothing down here, which is impossible because on the second wave, you're supposed to be 64 blocks away, not more than 72, which is this one. There's a bunch of them down here. Plus you need to, oh, jeez, we've got ravages and all sorts. You are a nightmare, all of you. And this isn't going well. So that just leaves these bunch of idiots down here. If we get rid of those, that should be the end of the raid, which is not. There's more. Where's the rest of them? Oh, well, three coming about. Out they're in this tunnel here. Of course they are. <laughs> Outside of the... Oh my goodness. Come on to the final wave, which should spawn right near the village. The village is going mad. There's a raid coming. There's a raid coming. Look out. It's going to be over there in the mountain. Yep. Oh, I won. Huh. Look, they're all here. How are you over here this far away? So they are spawning. They're just not spawning where they should be. Wow, this is a lot of guys. Oh, well, at least I get a lot of emeralds doing it this way, I guess. Oh, it's you causing all the problems, is it? What are you? A necromancer. Well, you're going to have to go. Stop it. Goodbye. Oh, there's more of them here. This one's with a funny hat. You're a sorcerer, are you? Oh, and now the raid bar's back again. So after all this, I'm certain of two things. The first one is that I don't know what I'm doing, and the second one is that everything I've done, I've done wrong, clearly. So it appears I've totally wasted my time today digging this area out, digging out the area below this, digging out the area around the raid farm, basically just doing everything. Because actually building a raid farm on Java Edition, it turns out, is really hard. I guess unless you're really high in the sky and you've got plenty of floor below you so that you can just manage everything. Oh, jeez. But there's only one way to know for sure. And that brings me back to a creative copy of the world above a giant lake as high in the sky as I can be with a villager and bad omen. And there we go. We've started a raid and they actually spawn actually near the village. Mm, killing all of these guys in this area except me and the villager. The next wave of the raid should start. And there it is all the way over in the corner over there. So making this platform substantially smaller and giving myself bad omen to trigger another raid. You'll see we do get raiders actually right close to the village on here. Well, now this is just a 16 by 16 block platform. Is this going to work? It does. Yeah, the second wave is here as well. And so is the third one. So I've just triggered another raid and now I've got a bunch of platforms below us. This one is 60 blocks below, that one's 90 blocks below, and that one is 120 blocks below. And I want to see where the raiders are going to end up now. And they're up here at the top. Okay. But what if there was a platform 30 blocks away? Now where are they going to spawn? Up the top again. And all of this is completely the opposite of what's happening on my world. Yep, at the top again, even though that one's only 30 blocks away. What? And just for the sake of testing, what happens if I take this platform away? They've appeared on that one there. Okay. But they preferred the closer one? And putting that one back there again, getting rid of all of those guys, where does the next wave spawn? Back at the top. So I don't don't get it. <laughs> if they prefer the closer bit, why are they not preferring that on my world? Is it a height thing? Do they just prefer to be at the top? I think that's the case. But if that is the case, then why when I created this test setup, didn't they spawn on there or on there? Why did they spawn elsewhere? Is it to do with this structure? Let's create a platform directly under that guy then. And now where, are they going to spawn up here or are they going to be somewhere else? No, they're not. See, it doesn't work here. Now they're all on the hill here. Look, loads of them. What? Why? If the village is all the way up there, how can they possibly end up down here? That doesn't make any sense. There's got to be some other things going on here. So back on the server, I'm not sure what's going on. I think this village may be... Ooh. Oh. Ah. No. Oh. Ooh. No, thank you. The only thing I can think that's happening is this village is a lot bigger than it should be. Even though there's only one bed, one workstation and one villager, perhaps there's a bunch of other workstations kicking about somewhere that it's attached to and perhaps it's expanded, making the middle of the village actually in line with the top of this area. And that would have made sense before I got rid of the entire pillager thing because there was a bunch of buildings on there with workstations in. But they're not there now. And I didn't make that village until after they were gone. So I don't understand what could be round here that they're connected 
attention to that's affecting the village. But it's just weird that this entire system works if I build it somewhere else. So I guess after completely destroying this entire area, making a huge mess of the world and not building a raid farm, at least I can stand here and very, very occasionally kill a pillager should they ever actually bother to turn up. And slowly but surely, I'm generating a whole bunch of emeralds. So I guess in about three weeks, I might have enough to make all of those upgrades I need. Oh, jeez. Emeralds again. Because in the last video, I built a bad omen farm and I tried to convert that into a raid farm only to find it didn't work. And after watching a whole bunch of YouTube videos and seeing a whole bunch of your comments, I can see why raid farms are now made over the ocean and not at a pillager outpost. And that's because you just can't do it. Not on Java edition, at least. And I don't really want to build a raid farm over the ocean because it'll make a big mess. So we're going to turn this into a more efficient emerald farm. And the way we're going to do that is by making this system a whole bunch bigger at the moment these platforms are 21 blocks by 21 blocks and that's not very big and that means the rates of getting pillagers in here is pretty slow even though i've got a whole bunch of the levels for them to spawn on and the reason i made it so small is because i want to be able to wrap a building around this but i think we're just going to have to have a bigger building you see with a fan going on full speed that will actually push an entity up to 21 blocks and at the moment in that farm we're only pushing them 10 so we can actually make that thing double the size add a whole bunch more layers to it and get a whole bunch more pillagers spawning and yes i've added some packed ice onto this because that does make a big difference whilst just using grass i will get pushed all the way over to pretty much the same point as this one you can see that was pretty slow whereas on packed ice i go a whole bunch faster but the question then is, will pillagers spawn on packed ice? And I guess the only way to find that out without having to put in too much effort is to go over to my test world and find out. And here on my test world, you can see I've replaced all of the grass with packed ice. For some reason, we've got a witch in here. You don't belong. So let's turn the system on and find out if anything spawns there. And the answer is yes, we have a pillager in there. And there's another one. So yes, packed ice will work. Excellent. If only I had a bunch of packed ice. I have 185 of it, but can we craft it? I know you can craft it from ice and you can apparently wash ice into packed ice. That's a bit weird. You'd think that would melt it. Fair enough. But can we craft ice? If we had an entry manipulator apparently we can turn water into ice all right we'll have one of them then but i think it needs charging up and somewhere in this maze of a building i believe i have a charger and somewhere in this maze of a building i also have a bald eagle which i should probably name so he doesn't despawn although he's been here for months and he hasn't and he's already got a name and i believe his name was ego so there you go ego you got a name now oh apparently you can tame a bald eagle with fish oil and then it can be commanded to stay follow and wander and you can use them for falconry you need a falconry glove a attack mobs on command okay you're getting distracted i'm not ah. how do i make fish oil blobfish where are you getting blobfish from i don't have any blobfish well i guess we're not getting too distracted right anyway charger charge this thank you uh, it doesn't have a gui apparently they also can't see it in my hand weird okay i have no idea how fast this thing's gonna work but i've got an idea oh man this is gonna be a good idea i think <laughs> now before i get too carried away building a contraption let's see how it works apparently if i shift click there we go i just turn things into ice okay but can a deployer use it i would imagine not oh yeah it needs shift clicking if I put it in attack mode. No, so it's only going to work with the heat mode on a deployer. Oh, that's annoying. But that does mean if we just had ice down there, it would turn it into water. It'll also turn cobble into stone. And there's a handful of things that it can do. If only I can make you shift right click deployer, you suck. And here we go, we have an ice farm. All I've got to do is shift right click there and I'm just going to turn that into ice very quickly. And that, it, that does the mechanical drill not give me ice? It Does it not give me the blocks back? Ah! I don't have a farm. Entropy manipulators is stupid. I don't want it anymore. Actually, I do kind of want it just in case. We'll keep it safe. It's just such a shame there's no recipe to make ice the normal way. What do you mean the normal way? Well, you see, when I was a child and also an adult, when it snowed, I used to make snowballs and snowballs are fun. You can grab yourself a snowball and if you squish it down really hard in your hands, you turn it into an ice ball and then you can really get those bullies that you don't like. I would not recommend doing that. It hurts. But joking aside, in my experience, snow is just cold water and ice is just really compact cold water. So why can't snow be compacted into ice? 
Oh, would you look at that? A new recipe has appeared and it looks like you can compact snow into ice. It also looks like you can compact ice into packed ice. And it also looks like you can craft packed ice with glowing sacks into blue ice because blue ice is just basically packed ice that glows a bit, right? That'll do me. Let's go make a farm. And I can't think of anywhere more appropriate to build this ice farm than our snowy area. So let's head over there and make even more lag. And here we are, this fabulous snowy area, which just happens to be the laggiest place in the world. Well, but fear not, peeps, we have a snow farm in this little shed here. We have a... Whoa, a lag... See, it's laggy. I told you it's laggy. Jeez. In this little shed here, we've got a snowman. And all of the snowballs end up in this chest down here. We've got a bunch in there already. And I've still got a ridiculous amount of snow left over from previous builds. So we just need to take this snow and turn it into ice. And we're going to do that in our little workshop. Just down these stairs in here, where I do all of my andesite crafting and all of my create bits and bobs. And don't worry, peeps, we've got a video coming up very very soon where we're going to be creating a whole factory to create all of this create stuff which means most of this is going to be surplus to requirements in the meantime though while that's not a thing we're going to have to set up a little line in here and there we go we've got plenty of space to work with now now i'm not interested in blue ice at the moment so we don't need that much of a big system we're going to have a conveyor there going into a basin here then we're just going to have another little conveyor here like this that's going to come into another basin just there and then we're going to have one last little bit of conveyor just here and that's just going to have a barrel just there these basins, of course, need presses above them. And then we just need a bunch of funnels. We'll have a funnel coming out of there. We need one going into there. That's already got an output on it. So then we just need one going into there. And then we just need one on there. Now all we need is some power. Now I can get rid of that. And I can actually join these belts together, I believe. And as luck would have it, we've actually got a bit of power just over there. So there we go. That's that belt powered. If we do the old stick the belt out at a weird angle trick, we can power that one there. And of course, we can make it all look a bit tidier with some of this trim. And now we just need power to the presses. The presses already got too much no not that type of press bike and that means we're going to break that stick a bunch of chain drive there instead and now i can just attach those with a gearbox there we go one snow to packed ice farm all done so i guess i just need a whole bunch of snow in you go lovely and look at that ice is coming out of there and occasionally we get a packed ice coming out of there it's a little bit slow but it's working this could take a while and it's going to use a lot of snow so what i'm going to do is stick another barrel up there put even more snow in that join those together with the chute so that's just going to keep that snow supply coming down there and now while all of this is processing i'm going to go see my snowman friend hello buddy is your system working it all appears to be turned on now this is still running off water wheels so it's a little bit slow we could probably speed this up a bit oh what have you got in you've got everything in there wow look at all this stuff yeah let's just steal some power for this and speed it up a bit before i start over here we've got power just down there look just the snowballs throw away and we can just steal a little bit of that power coming out of there with some of this chain drive stick a bit of shaft on there put one of them there bit more shaft there another gearbox on there and now we have all of that powered and we can get that going full speed there we go that's a that's much more efficient snowball making farm snow snow block making farm now what i want to do is also make collecting the snow see what i normally do is i just stand here at this point and i just dig away getting a whole bunch of snowballs but i believe the mechanical plow could help us here but will it help if it's just a stationary mechanical plow if i was to put a block there put that there that's not close enough but what if i put it there it gets rid of the snow but it doesn't keep going so i'd have to have it bouncing backwards and forwards so forget it no we're going to keep it manual it's faster And as you can see, doing this makes snowballs go everywhere. But don't worry, peeps. I just happen to have this fancy magnet upgrade here and I can suck all of those into my backpack just using that. So now I can just stand here and get a whole... Oh, don't, sorry, snowman. Just get a whole bunch of this snow. And now it's not going to make a mess. So one netherite shovel later. How much have I got? Nearly 8,000. Lovely. Right, okay, now we've got all of these snowballs. We need to sort this system out because it stopped. It's gone through all of that snow and created us about three and a half stacks of packed ice. And we're going to convert all of those snowballs into snow instantly. The way we're going to do that is with a smart shoot on there. Then we just need some compacting drawers. And if we lock those and put a quantify key on there, I can get all of these snowballs out of here and stick them in there. And and then combining all that with pretty much all of the snow from my inventory that gives us 15,000 snowballs or 4,000 snow blocks in there we've got a full barrel full there and we're getting a whole bunch of packed ice here lovely 
Now, if you're concerned that this recipe is a little bit cheaty, as in it only takes four rice to make one packed ice, because on your crafting table you need nine, don't forget on a crafting table you can craft a whole ton of ice into packed ice instantly, whereas this method requires both time and power as well, as well as crafting the resources to actually produce it all, as in like the presses and the basins and the conveyors and everything else like that. The trade-off is it's slightly cheaper to make this packed ice, but it also takes a long time. Anyway, the good news is we've got a whole bunch of packed ice now and this system is going to keep producing it while we're away although there's really not all that much left in there to produce and that should be plenty for us to start getting on with at our emerald farm so the first thing i need to do back at the farm is delete pretty much everything the whole thing's pretty much got to go because not only are we replacing the grass with the packed ice we're going to be making the platforms bigger and there we go everything except for this last bit of grass is gone so let's delete this and fall down to our doom ah! oh i got um special backpack and now we can hop over to here and start putting the back in again but i really don't think this is going to be anywhere near enough probably not even going to do one layer i've run out of ice all of that's not even done half a platform hmm gonna need a lot more ice but we don't actually need all that much ice because going back oh i took them away well going back to our fan system anyway it didn't give as much of a speed boost at the start because the fans already do that it was only towards the edges where it was really a problem and in terms of our farm up there what that means is we only actually need the inner few blocks maybe four or five to be packed ice the outside ones can still be grass or stone or something else so having the packed ice a little bit like this is going to be a lot more suitable for us because it means our packed ice is going to go a lot further but before i start adding it into the layers above there's something else to consider and that is that the reason i built this so high up off the ground before was because i hadn't dug out all of this area here the reason i dug this area out here was because that stops the pillagers from around where the outpost was which was around about here somewhere from spawning anywhere else other than the platforms and that means if i bring this down significantly i'm not not going to need such a massive tall tower so in order to work out where we're going to have these platforms i've taken a world download which is why i've got no armor and no tools and just to prove that to you here is this world and the advantage of this world is that i've added a couple more mods which i can't add to my main world because they actually use fabric so i've used a special connecting mod to enable me to use that and the reason i need the fabric mod loader for this is to get the mini hood so this mess of white boxes here is where the pillager outpost used to be and all of the little boxes are where all of the buildings used to be now of course According to the wiki, pillagers will spawn 54 blocks above and below the highest platform in the pillager outpost tower, but I don't know where that is, so it's going to be around about this point somewhere. So first of all, let's make a platform 54 blocks below the centre of this pillager outpost and see if they'll spawn down there. And whilst we've got a skeleton, it doesn't look like we're getting any pillagers here. In which case, we'll try 40 blocks below and let's see now. No, let's get rid of that and let's do 30 blocks below. And the answer is no. Hmm, that's not what I expected. What about 20 blocks below? Yes. Ah, we're getting pillagers now. What about 22 blocks below? No. And it's also a no for 21 blocks. So it looks like the lowest pillagers will spawn below this structure is 20 blocks. So that's below. What about above? So first I'm going to try 64 blocks above. And that's a no. And now I'm trying 50 blocks above. And that's also a no. So let's jump all the way down to 30 blocks above and find out. And yes, we get pillagers at this point here. Which is still pretty high up if we're going to be having a big old tower but look how many pillagers we get spawning at that level this is crazy so now i've added layers in from 20 blocks below to 20 blocks above where i was stored and as you can see there's a whole bunch of pillagers there but how many and how fast do they spawn and what this command block should do is teleport any pillagers that are further than 10 blocks away from it from there into here so let's find out here we go <laughs> many and now they're all dying from entity cramming but you can see just how quickly they spawn in and end up here but what if we have this down here where we've currently got our system so now that command block is teleporting the pillagers to this water stream and they are then falling down here where i can kill them so is this going to be efficient with me being down here doing this oh i started a raid i forgot that village was there oops <laughs> it wasn't me so i could either set up a deployer to kill them with a sword or i could stand here myself and do it depending on if i wanted bad omen or not and we could get a reasonable amount but as you can see it's not as fast with me being down here so moving this over to the side again rather than down below you can see just how quickly the pillagers spawn in and end up in this thing it's actually pretty ridiculous i think this is going to be quite the emerald farm by the end of this so let's get off this crazy creative world go back to my world and see what we can do
we go. I have two layers because I've run out of ice and I've used blue ice. I crafted it all into blue ice and I was a little bit concerned that pillagers wouldn't spawn on that, but they will. I've done testing. That's all good. And as you can see, I've changed the design a little bit. I've gone for these two platforms either side with the gap down the middle with fans so that they'll get pushed down there and fall into these water streams. The only problem here is this is very slow and I'm a little bit concerned that this is going to reduce the rates of our pillagers coming down here and actually ended up on these warp plates but once they end up on these warp plates they'll end up in here they're going to get pushed down there and then they're going to get minced by me so at the moment i've no idea how effective two layers are going to be and i have no idea how effective our water stream system is going to be so i guess the first thing i need to do is get rid of the mega torch to allow things to start spawning and then i'm just going to wait over here and hope that oh there we go We've got a bunch just spawning in then and they're falling down here oh i think my um my drop shoot might be a bit tall. Oh, that one survived. Good job. Why didn't your friend survive? I've also emptied the backpack out so we can see exactly what we're going to get from this. So let's give those a chop. And a whole bunch of emeralds already. Oh, look at that. Those two just spawned in. It's working perfectly. It's just very, very slow. And now, if I undo that, that'll do that for me. And now I'm not going to get bad omen. And all of those lovely drops are still going to go in there. So now we do have an emerald farm. Again, just like we did in the last episode. But it's not particularly quick so it looks like i've got a whole bunch more work to do are you gonna do a montage nope i'm just gonna go and spend about an hour at my ice farm getting a whole bunch more ice and then i'm gonna build a few more layers with a schematic cannon i said no montage I've been fiddling with things. This snow farm is now fully automatically generating packed ice, and that's because it's now being sucked into a backpack down here instead of that compacting system. And that backpack is going into some storage drawers, which go all the way down here, across there, through here, and up there into this much more fabulous snow making machine, or should I say packed ice making machine. So the snow comes into these compacting drawers. Four lots of it come through so that it can all get pressed at the same time. They go into some more storage drawers they come out to make packed ice and it all accumulates in here but you can't see it because i'm in free cam so literally all i gotta do now is stand here and break this snow i just wish there was a way i could do this automatically with create but i've tried everything and it doesn't work Well, I've gone through an entire netherite shovel's worth of snow. Literally. I, I had a cup of tea and I didn't watch it. I need a new shovel. But hopefully that means we've got a reasonable amount of packed ice again. Uh, 306. Not great, but it's not bad. And each layer takes four stacks. So that's enough for another A netherite shovel per layer? Jeez. I'm going to be spending a long time gathering snow. And making more shovels, apparently. There we go. I've got a decent shovel now, and this one's actually got Silk Touch, which is nice, because I like Silk Touch on a shovel. Well, I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is we've got a bunch more layers in here now, and we've got a system at the bottom to push the mobs with fans across from one side to the other instead of using water streams, so that should be considerably faster. The bad news is the entire system is overstressed, and not by just a small amount, and that's probably due to the fact that each one of these floors has 66 fans on it, and now that we've got six layers, well, that's a whole bunch of fans. In fact, according to my little stress meter, we've overused by nearly 52,000 stress units. And currently, we're just stealing power from our netherite factory. From this boiler here, which had plenty. I mean, this generates a whole 131,000. And we're only using a small amount of that for this factory. The rest of it's all being pumped to our other area. But yeah, it's nowhere near enough. In fact, this on its own wouldn't be enough. So we're going to need a bigger boiler. Fortunately for us, though, we've got a whole bunch of biodiesel over here. So it really shouldn't be too difficult to pump that underground over to where we're actually working and have a big old power station over there. And there we are, I now have my very first max size boiler giving us nearly 300,000 stress units. That should hopefully be enough. 18 steam engines to get all of that power out of there. But at least we've got power now. So now that everything's plugged in, we've got 144,000 stress left, which gives us room for a few more layers should we need to build them. Let's make sure everything's going in the right direction for a start. They're all blowing the right way and they're all blowing the right way. But what about my ones at the bottom? I'm not even sure if they, oh, they are connected. These are blowing the right way and those are blowing the right way too oh nice and you can see i go a whole bunch faster like that so it's time for a test let's get rid of the torch let's turn it on and let's see what oh wow we got a pillager captain already let's see how many we get there where we're getting way more pillagers this time oh wow 
Look at all those guys come in. That one's, that one's not going on the thingy. Why are you stuck? Why are they not going? Oh, this gl Yeah, okay. Right, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove a couple of these fans and make that entire little thing a little bit thinner. That's better. Now they can't get stuck under the glass. And here we go. Look at them. Look at them spawning in like crazy. Oh, but they, they're all dying again. Stop dying. I suppose if they've taken full damage already, falling off there. Oh, yeah, this isn't going to work at all, is it? Okay, stop. Come on, guys. It's time for a little journey. Wow, there's so many of them. The other reason why I wanted that so far away is because it is horrendously noisy. It's emerald gathering time. Oh, look at this. This is wonderful. Oh, this is great. Oh, I've got an emerald farm, peeps. We've only used half the layers. Well, it was all going well until it stopped. And that's because the deployer, even though it's in attack mode and not use mode, is destroying the warp plate. And for some reason, when the deployer destroys a warp plate, the warp plate forgets its ID. And now the mobs won't teleport to it, even though I put it back down. But here we go. It's about to break. There we go. It ends up in there. And as you can see, it's got no ID. It should look like this with that writing underneath, but it doesn't. And that means all the stones that I attuned to it that are down there with all of those pillars is on and no longer attuned to it so i need a new one and the way you attune a new one is to put a bunch of warp dust in it and then just throw a piece of flint in and that will attune it to the same code and i just need three of these so maybe i would be better off actually running this myself but if i don't want bad omen how am i going to do that without breaking the warp plate well, it's a lot easier than you might think. All I need to do is remove that backpack, remove that, then remove that, make that a block taller, put the deployer back on there, put that back with the filter that's vanished. Where did the filter go? Oh, we'll make a new filter then. Fine. No swords. There we go. Throw the backpack back down. Oh, there's my filter. Put that back in attack mode. Give it the sword back. And now it's not going to hit the warp plate because it's a block above. And now I want to do a proper five minute test. Well, the five minute timer is up and this thing seems to be a bit odd. It seems to go in fits and starts. I was watching it the whole time. We got 215 emeralds, which isn't too bad for five minutes, but you'll notice that there's a sudden wave of pillagers and then you get none for a while and you get a sudden wave more. And I'm not 100% sure why. So I think I want to watch the farm for five minutes rather than this. Well, I've immediately spotted a problem, and that is, for some reason, the fans on that layer there are not blowing. And I also noticed that nothing at all seemed to spawn on the very bottom layer. Oh, that's why these fans are not working. There we go. Now those fans are working as well. So after watching for another 10 minutes or so, I can absolutely 100% confirm that nothing spawns on the very bottom layer for some reason. But I guess I did this whole thing a couple of blocks too low. The other thing I've noticed is that when I move about, as in after I've watched, a whole bunch more spawn, which is kind of weird. It's also weird that it all seems to go in fits and starts as well, and occasionally you get someone like that trying to look at you and they won't go on the thing, but then eventually they do. Jeez, this thing's going crazy. See how many co come into it just because I'm moving around? It's ridiculous. When I stay still, it slows right down. But anyway, yeah, wow, uh, this is nearly full. <laughs> We've got nearly 2,000 emeralds already. I think I might need a filter to get rid of some of this junk. But before I get rid of some of the junk. Time to put that torch back down and move that bottom layer. Well, yet again, it's moment of truth time. I have moved the bottom layer up to the top. I've also jigged the power around a bit so that it's all nice and central. And that means we don't have power lines running across here and getting all sorts of confused. And because it's powered from the bottom now, that means that when I actually do add more layers, I don't have to keep moving all the power lines around at the top up a couple of layers because they're all running down there. Excellent. So the only other thing that I want to deal with on this farm is this. When they get sight of the deployer, even all the way from over there, they don't want to go on those walls stones and i think that's a relatively easy fix the reason they're stuck there is because the fans are only blowing that far so if i was to add in more warp stones just down here at this point here ow oh, now i put that one in the wrong place thanks mate now all of those are connected to there and that should hopefully work maybe fingers crossed we'll find out in a second let's turn it back on yep yeah, yeah that works wow that really works good excellent so next i want to repurpose these storage drawers and actually 
actually start filtering out some of this junk. And in order to do that, I need to go and shove D over a million cobblestone, which we got from digging out all of that in the last episode, into my AE2 storage system, because trying to get it out of here by hand will be a nightmare. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to actually utilize the area we've already got here where we input things into the system. You can see when these lorries turn up, they connect to these and all of these little import buses take all of the items and it puts them into the story system. But I'm not bothered about this going particularly quickly. So what I'm going to do is just hopper everything between these into the one below it, grab myself an import bus and stick it on there. And then I need some of this cable. And I've got some left over just here. So if I just attach that to that and that to that, hopefully that'll start going in. I mean, it's going to take a while, but that doesn't matter. So now what we need is another draw, a little bit of fire, and then just another one of those. And now all of that's just going to get put straight into the fire. And now all I need to do is give these a whole bunch of upgrades so that we can store absolutely loads. And now that I've got so many emeralds, I can actually craft a whole bunch of these upgrades. And that brings me to your comments. I get so many people just saying, why don't you just use void upgrades and then you don't have to worry about overflow? And I do use them from time to time. But the problem with the void upgrade is it deletes the items. And if you're trying to make a farm to gather as many items as possible, you don't want to put a void upgrade on and until you've got as many upgrades as you can in there so you can store as many items as possible because that way you're not just throwing items away what's the point in running a farm and afk in and having factories producing all of these items if you're just going to void them it's totally pointless so yeah i don't use void upgrades unless i'm 100 percent sure i don't want any of that item now for this system here we don't actually need any void upgrades because we've got this system here which is going to burn off everything we don't want and that means that i can take that out of there save myself one of those and add in another emerald one which means i can store even more so i don't need void upgrades at all so now we've got everything in place we've got power we've got a killing system we've got a storage system we've even got a massive big hole for no reason with a villager at the bottom for no reason oh i've started a raid <laughs> where's the raid gonna start where's it going to be where's the raid guys where is it is it on the mountain is it in the sky? Where could it be? Oh, it's here, look. Right, anyway, what I was about to say was now we've got absolutely everything in place. We're going to have to make a building. And also, as well as a building, I need to spawn proof all of this, fill in all of the edges, and maybe even add some more layers. And that means going back to the ice farm for another month and burning through another few shovels. Maybe I will. And by judging by the speed of this, maybe I won't. And just to highlight how successful this is, in the last episode I had no emeralds and emptying out my backpack and putting everything in there, we've now got over 7,000 and I've just spent a whole bunch on all of those upgrades. Wow, this farm is ridiculous. As you can see, I've spent a little bit of time decorating. In fact, I spent hours and we've decorated the entire thing. But before we get into that, check this out. We've got over 108,000 emeralds now because this thing's just ridiculous. And we've got a mine cart over here, but we'll get to that in a minute. We've also got a warp plate, which isn't particularly useful anymore. And this building is not the best building I've ever made, but the entire thing altogether I think is pretty impressive, and we'll get to all of that later on. So this is the little building where we kill the pillagers. As you can see, we've got a little placard on the front here on an emerald block, and inside, as you've just seen, it's mainly blackstone. All of this stuff is actually netherite blocks. We've got a bit of copper in there and a whole bunch of lime green just to make it all feel very emeraldy. And I quite like it inside. But like I say, outside this building's not particularly interesting, but it'll do. Now, our walls around our farm are not actually accessible. You can't get in. There's no door. The whole thing is a fortress locked off. And I did think about actually decorating this farm, but I actually quite like it just how it is. And as you can see, the entire thing's surrounded by lava it's only one block deep there's a whole bunch of glass underneath there and these walls do actually serve a purpose and you might be wondering why is all of that broken on fire and full of lava well for some reason as i was building these walls it turned out that all of the pillagers started spawning instead of in there but all the way around here so what i've done is i've come around with a bunch of the grass slabs and i've made all of this spawn proof and i thought it would be fun to actually have a reason why this thing was surrounded by lava and that's because this volcano snow thing 
is leaking lava through the walls and into here. And I think that works. I think it brings it all nicely together. So in each corner, we've obviously got a big old tower and these have got emerald and netherite flags, a little bit like the Piglin village in the nether, which has got golden netherite. And they are mildly decorated inside as well. This one more than any of the others. This one's got some axes and some crossbows on these shelves. It's also got these hatchets, which you can use. And these actually you can launch like, oh, no, that one ran out of durability. Well, yeah, they, they, they normally don't just disappear. They, they you get, you, you can keep throwing them. Anyway, they've also got stairs up and down, so you can go up to the very top and get right up to where the flag is and see over the edge of all of this thing. And this is entirely spawn-proof. These are slabs, these are full blocks, and they've all got copycat panels on the top. So this entire structure is spawn-proof, except for the flags. The flags are not spawn-proof, but they're far enough away to not bother the pillagers. Heading back down the stairs, past the floor we're on, to the floor below, you'll see we've got some pillager costumes in this tower, and that's so the pillagers, when they get out of bed and there's an emergency they can come and put their armor on and on the very bottom floor is where the pillagers will actually sleep down here you can see we've got some track we'll get to that in a minute but in the corners we got some bunk beds with these ladders on that you can actually go up you can get in your bed so in my head this is where the pillagers will sleep and then when there's a raid or something they'll all go up there get their armor on get the weapons and go out onto the walkways before we get to the walkways in the minecart track though down here i've moved the power station right to the far corner of the farm just so it was out of the way which does take up a ridiculous amount of space and it does look a little bit odd sticking out here like this and apparently i've left a few blocks that i haven't filled in there we go no one would ever know and again each one of these floors has stairs going up to the top however this one doesn't because there's a power plant in it and the other two towers pretty much mimic the first one with the stairs the bunk beds and the armor and the weapons because i used the schematic cannon to build everything and that saved me a whole bunch of time all i had to build was one wall and one tower and the rest just did itself so now that we've talked about that we should probably talk about this walkway and this minecart track so let's go back through here and then hop out of the door past the minecart and go back outside again so i decided to do each set of walls with two walkways i don't know why i just thought it looked quite nice it gave a lot of elevation to it disguised the farm a bit which yes it does have some more layers in that farm now so it's even more efficient and again all of this is completely spawn proof these are all bottom slabs so nothing can spawn on here and that means i can't put my bed on it i need to go down here to sleep so why is there a minecart track running around the entire bottom of this thing well as we discovered earlier if i move around it actually makes the farm a whole bunch more efficient and I think the reason for that is if we just stand in one place, mobs will spawn around the area and start taking up the mob cap. But if we keep moving around, those mobs get despawned and the pillagers can keep spawning. So what we do is we grab this controller and that controller is very important because that allows us to get off this little roller coaster. Because as you can see down here, when you come onto it and you go round, you're just going to keep going round and round and round and round. So I've added a little system with this controller that allows me when I'm in the minecart to actually just press space and that will change the direction of this bit of track here so that the minecart will go back over there and that'll latch on for 10 seconds thanks for this little extender here and just to show you that again I pull that out I press either W or space that switches over and my minecart will go back off into the little killing area so let's hop in the minecart press the button and go for a ride and as you can see around the bottom of this I've put these grills in so we can get a view of what's actually happening in the farm sort of a bit there's a bit of lava and the walls get in the way a bit but apart from that you've got a really nice view of the farm and what's going on so going into free cam we can see as i'm going around that thing this thing is ridiculous it is just non-stop spawning pillagers that all just falling onto those warp plates and they're just all getting minced and it never ever ends they just constantly spawn in fall off get minced give me emeralds it's pretty wonderful really right well anyway i need to get off this contraption so when we get onto the next corner i'm going to get out my little redstone link thing i'm going to press the button and that will switch the track and now i should come off and I should go back into here. Here we go. Look at that. How good is that? And now we've got 111,000 emeralds just for a couple of laps of that. But I want to know exactly how good this is. I want to know how many emeralds we get after, you know, a five minute run around this thing. And the only way to do that is to turn the system off for a minute, let everything teleport here and get killed off. And then we'll move this box of emeralds, put in a blank one and we'll see what we get. There we go. The timer is up. How many did we get? 1,389 in five minutes. That's almost 17,000 an hour. In fact, it's 16,668. So there we go. 
from an absolutely abysmal failure in the last episode to something I think is pretty spectacular in this one. I'm pretty happy with that. Create stuff. I need it. And currently I'm just producing everything I need manually and it's getting a little bit tedious having to go all the way back over to my snowy area, down into the laggiest basement in the world, and then just basically coming in here and pressing a bunch of stuff and mixing a bunch of stuff. It's all just getting a bit of a mess. So I want to walk make the entire thing in a big old factory and that could be tricky because there's a whole bunch of items in create but I'm not going to produce every single one my goal today is to produce all of the raw materials I need so I can quickly hop into my inventory let's say I wanted some more saws I'd be able to click on that add the recipe to this and I'd have all the ingredients I need and I'll never ever need to go and craft anything else or go mining for anything I'll just have it all on demand whenever I want it and that's going to be a tricky thing to achieve because there's a whole bunch of different ingredients that we need to create all of the create stuff and i've spent a lot of time this morning figuring that all out and most of it's achievable completely autonomously except for one thing but we'll get to that in a second over here i've got these three chests so these are all of the main ingredients we're going to need and we've got a whole bunch of this top row in bulk already or at least factories producing those so that's nice and easy we've got plenty of iron we've got plenty of gold because we've got farms for those which means copper and zinc we're going to need a process for those and that's pretty easy. And redstone is the only one that's not going to be fully automatable because that requires blazes. So in this chest, it shows you that we can create obsidian by basically doing the magma block trick that we did in the netherite factory. We can get plenty of string from our mob farm over there to create wool. And I've actually got a wool farm over at Hill Valley. We can crush tough in order to get iron and gold and the copper and zinc that we need. And tough can be crafted from andesite and diorite using lava. And we've got factories for both of those. And that just leaves us with the redstone which is a process we need to make awkward potions we need to make more magma blocks we need to crush those into netherrack we need to crush that into cinder flower then we need to make potions of strength using the awkward potion and blaze powder and then we need to mix those into redstone so back over at the snowy area in one of these buildings i think it's this one here i actually already have a redstone farm you'll see we've already got everything set up to actually produce that and this system also produces glowstone dust as well and whilst we've got plenty of cinder flower because that's very easy to make the biggest problem is the blaze powder although we've got an absolute bunch of it because i did a whole bunch of afk at the blaze farm i don't actually have any renewable way of getting that apart from being afk and that's something i'd like to resolve but we're not going to be doing that today and the reason i want to resolve that is because i think in this world i'd like everything to be fully automatable because basically the alternative is to just load up my laptop send my afk account over to the blaze farm stand there for a few hours gather a whole bunch of it and after that we've got plenty to get on with which just seems a bit pointless really because it's not costing me any time it's not costing me any resources so at some point or other i'd like a way to fully automate that but i don't know how we're going to achieve that just yet all of the other items we need we're producing we're getting string from the mob farm we're getting wood from our wood farm we're getting a bunch of stuff at our netherite farm we're getting emeralds from our emerald farm and hopping back to our waystone once more and going back to our very first area where apparently there's still a raid going on we're automating andesite and iron and gold here as well oh and wool we've got that wool farm but none of those items are in my storage system and if i want to build a fully automatic system to produce all of those things they're all going to need to be in that storage system so we've got access to them and whilst we could create a whole bunch more trains to move items about from one place to another and whilst i could build even more trucks to ferry items from these factories to our storage system this road system is already relatively congested with just the four trucks that we've got going on here and i've watched mr beardstone videos and seeing how much trouble he has with his trucks oh there's been a collision why are you down here you don't belong here so i think we'll do things differently we have applied energistics and with applied energistics we've got access to quantum entanglement what's quantum entanglement well that's basically wireless moving your items about and in order to move all of our items from other places we're going to need a couple more of these quantum entangling machines which means i need more singularities and singularities are basically produced by crushing down 256 6,000 items. And in order to get two of those, which we're going to need today, I'm going to have to crush down half a million items. 
So go into my inventory, ordering things by what I've got the most. And I've got 4.3 million scoria. So we could chuck that in because I never use that. We've got plenty of glass. Oh, yeah, we got, we got so many items in massive quantities. That really shouldn't be a problem. So let's get somewhere set up to do that. First of all, we're going to need a couple of matter condensers. So I'm going to throw one there and I'm going to throw one there. So I'm going to need a couple of these storage components, which I can just take because my system automatically crafts them for me, which is great. I can throw one of those into there, turn this on to singularity, do exactly the same thing over here and turn that on to singularity. Then I need a couple of export buses. So I'm going to throw one on top of that. I'm going to fill that full of acceleration cards. I'm going to throw one on top of that and fill that full of acceleration cards. We're going to tell that we want it to only export scoria and we're going to do exactly the same thing on this one and now all i got to do is connect these to part of our network and now the stored energy is going up which means those items are going in there albeit very slowly and now the numbers on that one are going up too this is good news so while they're doing that i might as well go and get the other things prepared and get our network set up so we got plenty of space down in the basement underneath the mob farm here i guess this would be a good place to start and of course we're going to need more power we've got a power plant here which is off because they did this one's got no water now with this stupid pipe system but we don't have a great deal of power left on this thing however However, over at the netherite factory we've got a big old power station in here and we're hardly using any of that power at all you can see we've got oodles of power left so our first quantum ring i guess can go down here somewhere and the way these work is you just basically have a bunch of those around there like that and one of those in the middle and there we go a quantum ring you put one half of your singularity in there the other one back in the other system and then you can link them together let's just throw one here and once those singularities are complete, we can connect those two things. But I actually need another one. And the reason we need another one is because we need to connect the one at Hill Valley as well so that we can get all of our iron and andesite and wool over here. But I am going to need to get a cable going into that. And we've got a whole bunch of stuff surrounding that, so that could be tricky. So I might need to do a little bit of digging here. Oh no, I'm letting me villagers escape. That's not good. Don't dig that hole there. Right, okay, we'll do it this way a little bit then. Now, all of these are going to need a few other components as well, but we'll get to that in a little while. And for all of this wireless storage system, I really wanted to use the Ender IO mod. I've used that loads of times before and I love it, but unfortunately, it's not been updated for this version of Minecraft. And there we go, it's done. So I'll take that out and I'll take that out. And what about this one? This one should be just, oh, it's done. Brilliant. We got two more singularities, which brings me down to my little mining area underneath our new area and i need to be down here because i need to be somewhere that i don't mind things getting blown up you see in order to make these quantumly entangled what i need to do is actually blow each one of them up which means throwing it down on the floor throwing one of those down and then just blowing them with some tnt just like that and that gives me two of those quantum entangled singularities and here we go nice so now we've got two sets of quantum entangled singularities. So back up on top of the AE2 storage system, I can put one of those in there, and then I can put the other one of those in there. And now that's these two things set up. And back underneath the mob farm, I can throw one more of those into there like that. And that's now entangled this to our storage system. And of course, the other one needs to go into the ring we made over here at Hill Valley, just like that. So it's all working. That system is all talking to our main storage system now. But well, that's not the netherite factory or the wood farm connected. And that means I'm going to need a whole bunch more cable running over to those places. Oh, but now it's telling me my network's not powered. Why have we used too many power? Well, it turns out we're not making anywhere near enough power in here in order to keep up with this thing. I need to add in at least a couple more alternators in here, and both of these boilers are pretty much being maxed out by what we've already got. So a few minutes later, and now I have the most horrendous noise in front of me because now I'm using these diesel generators. These are huge diesel generators. They run off diesel, obviously. And I have a zombie in the wall. How have I got a zombie in the wall? Hello, sir. You appear to be in the wall, mate. Thank you. So with the zombie removed from the wall and he gets stop fiddling with the diesel engines, Ego. Stop it. We've got a whole bunch more space in here and we're now producing a ridiculous amount of power. We're now producing 262,000 stress units. We've got a whole bunch left and that's powering all of these alternators, which are powering all of these energy acceptors, which are charging up all of these dense energy cells. And it means we're actually generating 4.32 kilo RF per tick and we're only using two. The only downside to this is obviously it's horrendously noisy. And that's with my block sound on 6%. If I turn 
turn that up, it's worse. One positive to this, though, is we no longer need water being pumped into the system, and I've replaced the lava that was in here with diesel on a big old pipe that goes all the way over to our diesel area. But that does mean the little lorry that comes here now and fills up the lava is not actually filling anything up at all. So I'll have to get him getting diesel instead of lava at some point, but for now I want to get cracking. And hopefully I can reconnect these things without causing too much of a problem. Yeah, they're online now, and if we look at that, we're now using just over three kilos rf per tick but we've still got plenty so it's all working so now we've got the netherite connected and the mob farm connected i need to get the wood farm connected so let's stick a storage bus on there sort the priority out so it's priority one again it's working oh this is wonderful so now all of my wood should be accessible from the system so we've got 33,000 spruce in here and 40,000 in there yep so we've got plenty oh brilliant if i add a little bit more cable here and stick an export bus on there then i can say for instance spruce i want exporting into here and that will take anything from inside the storage system and actually put it into here there you go you can see it's ticking up so that should be everything that we're actually collecting in this system that's now going to come through to here so with all of those farms and items connected i now need to connect the storage system at hill valley and then we're ready to start building this factory i guess after a little bit of tweaking and fiddling, everything is now working exactly how I want it to. And that means I can start working on this factory, but I've no idea how big it's going to be. So I guess first of all, I should put down a foundation, start getting things in place, and then we'll worry about putting a building around it later. And I'm going to be having a road coming down here and going that way, so we can't build where the road's going to be. So I guess we probably do something similar to what we've got going on here and start the factory foundation around about this point here. And that looks like a reasonable size to start getting on with. So, first thing we're going to need over here is all of those items. And using this view cell, I can see exactly which ones we need. And they're all safely nestled away inside of the storage system, which I, I now can't get out of the storage system. So I'm going to need another quantum ring. Oh, jeez. And what I've just realized after plugging this thing in here with absolutely no power connected to it is that it's online. Apparently they transfer power through the quantum rings as well. But now back in our power station with the noisiest machine in the world, we're now actually using more power than we're making. So I need more of these. Which is surprisingly easy to make. You just need an absolute ton of flint and steel. You need a bunch of brass sheet, which I've run out of. And then the crafting recipe is pretty simple. It's just a bunch of those. So let's have a bunch more of them. How many can I make? 13. What am I missing now? Am I really out of brass? It's a good job we're making this factory today. Charcoal, copper, zinc, brass. And now we've got a whole bunch of brass. Let's turn it all into blocks and then make a bunch more of these diesel generators. Wow, got over a stack. And with my sound now muted and all of these in place you could argue that this is a little bit overkill for just a storage system but i don't think i'm gonna run out of power anytime soon half a million stress units from all of those and i've still got 43 left and that should mean we're now actually generating power again let's find out no it's still going down which probably means instead of a lack of engines it's a lack of alternators oh man and now that i've got these i'm just gonna put them next to the other ones a little bit like that now need to get all of these plugged in they're not quite so much stress left now but we've still got plenty and now i just need a bunch more of these energy acceptors all down the sides there we're now producing 8.6 thousand rf and only using 4.48 so we've got almost double good right geez i'm sick of this place so once again now that we've got our quantum interface over here which is now stood up so that it's not taking up too much room on the floor i need to get all of the items we need out of it and i think we'll have the storage at the the front of this building so first of all i'm going to pop down a controller and then we're just going to have a whole bunch of spruce drawers and we're going to need more than just the materials coming in because we're going to need somewhere to store the materials we're making as well so we're probably going to need a big old storage system here in which case i think i'll have two now, before we start getting the items over here, I don't actually want too many of them being brought over here from the other system. And each one of these, without any upgrades, will hold 2,048 items. If I craft myself up a bunch of these storage downgrades, I can actually just make it so each one of these will hold no more than a stack. And that way, we're not going to steal too many items out of our main system at once. So there's certain items like iron and gold and things like that, where we want the nuggets as well as the block and the ingot. So I'm going to use compacting drills for those. Oh, and that 
have forgotten to put in the storage downgrades for these. So there are all the things that we're going to be bringing in and using. And now I need to work out what things we're actually going to be producing and put those over here. So these are the key components of everything that I need to make in order to make everything else. If I've got access to all of these materials in my inventory, then I should be able to just craft anything that I want from Create. And that will save me having to make a factory component to make every single thing like gearboxes and stuff like that. There's no point at all in having this factory produce gearboxes because once I've got the materials I need in my inventory, it only takes a second to craft absolutely tons of them. That said, I've completely forgotten about electron tubes, which require rose quartz and then polished rose quartz. And there's probably a handful of other things I've forgotten as well, which is why we've got so many spare boxes here. And there's a few items in Create that can't just be crafted by hand, such as crushing wheels and alternators, which require the mechanical crafter. So we should probably have somewhere for these to be stored so that we can automatically craft those with the mechanical crafter. And going through the list of everything that you need the mechanical crafter to actually make that's realistically the only one that i'm going to need and if we're going to be building a factory we're going to need power so i'm going to add another maximum size boiler in here because why not and that's made me realize that i don't actually have many straws and straws are made from bamboo so i've added them to here and i've only got one bamboo left and basically every time i need to make straws i grow a bit of bamboo with some bone meal i'll knock it down i'll put it through a rolling mill and then i get the straws so yeah we're going to need to do that as well and while we don't have a road down here or anywhere for our trucks to deliver diesel, we're going to just use pipes again and steal it from somewhere else. And while we're messing about with diesel, we might as well have a diesel generator that's actually going to power our water pumps for us. There we go. Max size boiler. Done. We just need a whole bunch of these things now. But realistically, I don't think we're going to be using all this power, so we'll just stick with one or two for now. So the first ingredient for this farm, as always, should be the andesite alloy, because we're going to be using an absolute ton of that. And that's just a case of mixing iron and andesite. We can do that in a mixer. So to make andesite alloy, we could have a system a little bit like this. Bringing our andesite and our iron in here, putting it in that mixing bowl and taking it out of there. And that would work pretty nicely, but it's quite big and we haven't even got power over here yet. So how can I make that smaller? Well, we could use a mechanical crafter and a robot arm a little bit like this, but it will also be substantially slower and there we go a little system like that's pretty much the same size as the other one but it's going to be a whole bunch faster for us so that's what we'll go for now for this factory i want to do something a little bit different you see in the netherite factory we had all of the storage drawer stuff hidden under the floor and all of the power and the pipes as well and i don't want to do that here i want the storage drawers going under the floor so they're hidden but i'd really like the power rooted through the ceiling so our roof would be there a wall would be there and our shaft would run along like that. And now I think it would be sensible to have just a whole bunch of rows of shaft running from one side of this thing to the other so that we can just access it at any point. Why not? So now we've got a bunch of power running across the ceiling. So now I can attach them to this. And the way I'm going to do that is a little bit of shaft on there like that. And then at this point here, I'm just going to put in a vertical gearbox and now we're powered and we're already producing andesite alloy. Excellent. Step one done. So brass is going to be very very similar although that needs a blaze burner as well and industrial iron ingots require iron ingots with a blaze burner as well so i think two more systems just like this one here but with blaze burners should be exactly what we need why it stopped again and now is it because it's full yeah it's for but it's because it's full well that's good then so if that fills up that's gonna stop in that case i don't need all of these threshold switches and redstone links that i've put on the back of here hmm it's just gonna stop anyway because it's full good excellent so in order to keep things nice and compact i'm actually going to do the brass just here next to this one and this arm's going to need to pick up from there and there and deposit in there and that can go there then we just need another funnel on there a couple of funnels on here with some copper and some zinc on there so let's spin those round and we can power that with just another cog under there so that's all powered now but we need something in that blaze burner to make it heated and it doesn't want to be diesel it wants to be lava although i don't know if it matters if it is superheated we'll find out before i find out though I need to extend these storage drawers under to this just like that and now that's going to kick in and it's going to start filling that with the things it needs so let's set the recipe filter for brass so it doesn't start producing something else by mistake and let's feed this thing a blaze cake and see if that still actually ends up making brass it does okay so we can use diesel for this then right in that case we need more lines up here with pipes why is my copper casing has vanished i haven't used any copper casing and i had i'm sure i had like nearly a stack of it well that's weird i guess we're gonna need to craft some more of that up then glad we're building 
to the create factory. Give me some. We're out of what? Where's all my copper gone? I mean, I've got some in my pocket, but we had way more than that. I'm sure of it. That's weird. Anyway, what I was about to say was we've now got diesel coming up this pipe and going all the way along there, which means we can now hook into that and feed our systems. But as you can see, it doesn't quite make it to the end. So what I'm going to do over here is throw a cog in there and then break that and put a pump in there and then get oh geez it's gone everywhere but now we should hopefully with that pump there get diesel all the way to the end eventually hello are you gone diesel or not apparently what what okay let's take that out a second and pop a pump in there but it stops here why this is not getting any diesel now what there's plenty of diesel here coming through and it's attached to that and that so what i think we're going to need to do is have a tank down here for diesel and pump out of that tank and i guess we can just pump straight into the bottom of that oh it's already filling up from above so that's getting plenty in it and now there's no diesel in this pipe and it's not going in anymore and now this is running out of diesel again and now there's none in here there's none all the way along here and now my diesel tank over at the netherite factory is empty and that's the one we're using to power all of this so i guess we're just using more diesel than we're bringing over we need to bring in more diesel which means i need a road going over here rather than pinching it so i think my next port of call is to abandon the factory project put in a new road and then have that but diesel tanker actually come and fetch in us our own diesel cheese always got stuff to do babe So I've added in a very, very basic road. I've added in a couple of pumps over here, one for lava and one for diesel, although they're not connected to anything underground yet. And hopefully the tanker should pull in here, go forward, reverse up to the right one of those, and then go off again. Now this is going to be lava, and hopefully they will pull up to the right one of these. So they're going to come in here. That's good. They should stop about there, start reversing in. And to this one for lava. Okay. And they've connected. That's good. Now, can they get back out? I might not have done this far back enough, which is why I need to check it. They can. Excellent. Oh, that's good. And a few minutes later, I've now got loads of empty pipes because the fluid's still not pumping into them. Even though we've got plenty of lava in here and a little bit of diesel in there and it's all connected underground, the fluids are not pumping. And I know why. But the reason these are not filling with anything is because I've got nowhere to go. If I remove that, it's going to start pulling stuff through because it knows it can pour it all over the floor. And if I put a tank there, it's going to fill that tank. And as you can see, here it comes. It's coming across nicely. So, so, um, yeah, I'm an idiot. So we've got diesel and then we've got lava, diesel, lava, diesel. And I guess we should have one more lava in between this one here to make it all fit. And I do think this might be a little bit overkill above this, but whatever we don't use above here, we'll remove. So it's not just totally just pipes and shafts. And there goes lava to the next one. Diesel's coming along nicely there and there and lava's there as well. Excellent. Now we've got plenty of diesel and lava for these systems, which means I can get my brass kicked into gear. So that needs to come up to there and then link onto that one there, just like that. And now we should get lava going down there and into this blaze burner. There we go. So now we're producing brass. Oh, good. That's two things out of many, many, many that I've done. I think this is either going to be a very long video or a two-parter. Two-parter sounds good to be mate. So keeping things similar over here it's time to do the industrial iron which is very similar except that it's a press instead of a mixer and this of course only requires one ingredient and that's iron and now we're producing industrial iron apparently we were oh are we, are we full on that as well <laughs> so why doesn't it keep going let's just remove those yep now it carries on going and we're producing industrial iron amazing but industrial iron blocks are a bit of a swizz because on a stone cutter I can make two blocks of industrial iron iron from one iron ingot however with the industrial iron ingots you actually need nine of those to create one block of industrial iron and it takes one iron ingot being pressed with heat to create one industrial iron ingot so we can actually get more if i was just to use a stone cutter to create the blocks of industrial iron i could then just turn those into industrial iron ingots and then i don't need any heat and i get nine times as much so um yeah this this little system here very very inefficient and just for testing purposes if i got myself a mechanical saw or a block of industrial iron on the recipe filter and then threw an ingot on there it works so yeah we're uh, we're gonna make the most of our iron when it comes to this and smash all of this to bits 
Instead, all we need is this little setup here. And all that'll happen now is when I flip that round, iron will go across there and it'll go straight into there. And if we take all of that out of there, it should start coming through pretty quickly. There we go. Now we're getting two of those at a time. So we're getting 18 industrial iron ingots for one iron ingot, which is ridiculous. So slowly but surely, we're making our way through this. We've got the first three things done and that's actually eight items altogether because we're getting all of those, all of those and both of those. So that's that's not too bad. And next, instead of working on the wood, I'm going to be working on these sheets because we're going to need a whole bunch of those. But we've got a bit of a problem. Copper and zinc. At the moment, they're not renewable. All the copper and zinc we've got is from what I've mined. So I've just mirrored what we've got going on on the other side over here, and we just need to get lava in that basin. We just happen to have a little lava line coming down here, so I guess we'll just attach that there and have that pipe going up there. And there we go. <laughs> now we're making tough. Which takes me on to all of those tasty ingots from the tough and I guess this would probably not be a bad area to do that just behind here. The crushing systems are ridiculously easy. We just need a short little belt like this. Underneath that belt we're going to run a bunch of trim to connect our storage drawers together. We need a little controller at each end. We have a vertical gearbox on each side. A crushing wheel on each one of those. A brass funnel on there telling us what we want to come out and a normal funnel on there going in. But now we've got nowhere for a whole bunch of these things to go because this is producing flint gold iron copper and zinc if we're low on any of those we kind of want this thing to be able to fill it up we also don't have any slots for electrum so i guess we should probably make a slot for electrum just so it's got somewhere to live we should make a slot for flint so it's got somewhere to live as well but now still if any of these are full and we're short on one of the others this isn't going to run so the way i'm going to deal with this is to give it its own storage drawer system and then feed the items out of that into to our main system that we want to keep whilst keeping a bulk of these and then we can void off whatever we don't need so that the system can keep running so now what i need to do is underneath this bring our existing storage network over so it's got somewhere to go stick a draw controller slave on there and then just put a smart shoot from that one to that one and that means if there's anything in here that can go into the other system it will and at the moment none of these can get into the system because the system's full so if i hopped over there and removed all of this flint from from here we should see it go straight back in again and then if i come back here we should see there's not much in there so that's working now to ensure that we're not just burning off loads of useful resources what i'm going to do is absolutely load all of these things up with the emerald upgrades because i'm emerald rich and obviously put the void upgrades in there as well so that they can void off anything else and the system can keep going if it actually fills up so now we've got a little nugget farm for all the things we need and those internal go into these compacting drawers and get turned into to the blocks and ingots wonderful okay so now we can get on with pressing these sheets of different varieties and that shouldn't be too difficult at all and now all of those are nicely set up none of them are running because we're already full of it all we got 64 of each of those and you might notice i haven't done the sturdy sheet there and that's because sturdy sheets a little bit more of a difficult process to do we need powdered obsidian and even more lava and at the moment we're not producing any obsidian and we haven't got any obsidian over here so i uh, probably should have thought about that however just a hop skip and a jump away over at the netherite factory we are making powdered obsidian in here but we haven't got any left wow we've got a whole bunch of cinder flour though i think my um huh that's not right that shouldn't be a that needs to be a brass funnel that's never gonna work what have i what no wonder we got no obsidian it must have been working because this farm was working perfectly but i don't remember putting that there that needs to be like that there we go or at least we're getting some obsidian powder now and if we're getting obsidian powder in there we don't actually need obsidian and over here we can just use the powdered stuff which is of course now available to us in our storage system so let's just have a slot for that and i need to stick that in this export filter over here so that we can actually bring it over now we can start processing that I'm sure when you did this before, you had to do this process about three or four times in order to make the sturdy sheet, and there was a chance it wouldn't work. So unless a recent update of creators changed this, it looks like you only need to do it once, which makes my life a whole bunch simpler. So let's just check that out before we actually get carried away with that. 
And this little setup here should do the trick. We should start getting lava in. There we are. We've got a little press set up here. So if I put that on there, a powdered obsidian should come through. There it is. It gets squirted on, pressed and pressed. Wow, it is just, it's just once now. I don't know if one of the other Create Mod add-ons has changed that, but that definitely wasn't like that before. But well, that makes life a lot easier for us. That's all I need to do now is stick one of those there, one of those there, and then a funnel on the end there, and that's it. Job done. Jeez, that was really easy. Okay, so now we've got all the sheets done we've got all the alloys done i think it's time we started working on the woods <laughs> look at this place this is ridiculous already and now that that little system's in place let's find out how it's going to work so we're going to need one of those and this should take the logs out of the system that should then go through there and make strip logs it is doing that's good then okay so that one works okay so strip wood gets turned into planks that's good then so back over at hill valley i got a little system in here that's set up to make train track which oh yeah it goes into an auto crafter right i get you i understand now right okay no problem sir so we're gonna need three of these for slabs we're gonna need two of those for sticks and we're gonna need one of those for buttons which is very convenient because that's all of the auto crafters i've got left although we are gonna need a bunch of them for other things going on and yes i know i can do auto crafting very easily with ae2 stuff but this is a create focus let's play and i'm gonna use create where i can unless i can't be bothered in which case i'll use ae2 but today i can be bothered that I think this is going to be a tall factory because we're pretty much run out of space on this ground floor already and we've only we're not even halfway through and it might look a bit weird but that's basically it we just have a storage thing on there we've got a smart chute going into there that puts the items into the crafter and once they're crafted they go in there and now we should be producing slabs we are excellent slabs sticks uh, uh why did they oh they've got nowhere to go because it's full that's fine and buttons lovely so if we remove the sticks and run back over there really fast we should see yeah the sticks are working too oh that was nice and easy so far this whole thing's been a breeze it's a bit ugly though isn't it so skipping ahead slightly we're now producing all of the casings with this little setup which is basically exactly the same as this little setup but instead of presses we've got deployers with shoots on and things above those to put the right items in but in order to move on to the rose quartz which i'm pretty much desperate for now because i've totally run out of it we actually need to produce redstone and we don't have any redstone well we've got a few redstone blocks but when i turn this into redstone dust and put it back into our ae2 system you'll see it starts disappearing pretty rapidly and that's because it's turning it all into logic stuff for our AE2 system. But once all of those are made, it shouldn't keep stealing it. And that means if we start producing it, at some point it's actually going to back up. So we need to start producing that, which means we need a system like I had over at the other area for producing that this system and it makes sense rather than just leaving all of this over here doing nothing to steal it and move it to where we're going but this is a big system so i need to think about how i'm going to minimize this but first of all i guess let's just delete everything and take it all with us so this mess here is how this is all going to work and it's not particularly compact but then i don't think i can make this much more compact but we'll have a tank full of water here so we just need to pump some water into there we've got some pipes running down from here which are going to feed our blaze burners water will get pumped into to here and this mechanical arm is going to pick nether warts up from there and put it into there and that's going to make awkward potion this smart pipe's going to take that awkward potion into here this is going to have blaze powder on it that arm's going to take it put it in there that's going to make potions of strength that's going to get pumped out into here that's going to need cinder flour on the filter which we're getting in high quantities from our factory over there which means the redstone will then just go into there so we're all pretty much ready apart from water and connecting these storage drawers and of course we we don't need a tank here to get water we can just put a little unlimited water source in the ground make sure that's actually pulling through it is now we just need to connect the storage drawers and connecting this last one here we should start getting blaze powder on there the arms getting that we're creating awkward potion now we're creating potions of strength that should be going in there and that should be giving us some cinder flat oh i haven't connected that one now we should get cinder flour coming out of there and there we go redstone is going into the system excellent now of course that's not going to give us a massive supply of redstone for all of my other redstone needs this is only for this factory that we're making so that we've got enough stuff to make redstone torches comparators and any other redstone components that we need to craft as well so we are going to need at some point a much better way of getting a whole bunch of redstone but for now i'm just happy that we've got 64 in there and that should mean that this system over here has stopped 
It has. Good. Excellent. We're not wasting that. And that means we're not burning through all of that blaze powder either. Excellent. This is starting to look a little bit crazy, but it does look very create. Looks very create indeed in here. So now we can make electron tubes. And just like that, our rose quartz production is done. So we've got this little machine set up here to take our quartz and our redstone and turn that into rose quartz. Then we've got a machine here that's taking paper and sand and turning that into sandpaper. And then we've got a machine here which is taking that rose quartz and that sandpaper and turning into the polished rose quartz stuff. But as you can see, it's pretty slow. And that's because we're constantly waiting on the redstone that's coming from there. But as soon as we've got the redstone, that can do its thing. This can do its thing. And that can do its thing. But that's still not giving us electron tubes. We need a new crafting setup to do that. And as you can see, for this floor of our factory, apart from all of this space here, we kind of run out of space. But I kind of want to leave this space here free because I think we'll have stairs and stuff going up to the next floor there. So it's probably time to put in a second floor. Oh, geez. But before I put in a second floor, it turns out all of this diesel that I run across the top here, we didn't end up using any of it at all. So I guess we can get rid of those pipes and tidy this up a little bit and then it won't look quite so weird from down below we're also not using this power line at all so that one can go we're also not using this one either so this one can go and we're not using this one so this one can go and now everything feels a little bit less claustrophobic in this area. Although once we've got a roof on it, that'll probably change. And one last thing to do before I go and put a roof on all of this, and that is that I want to take out these restrictions on here. I want to actually be able to store a whole lot more of these items in here because you never know when they're going to come in useful. And only having 64 of certain things means that, well, I might not be able to craft many of the things that I need. So yeah, all of these downgrades are going and hopefully over time this thing will fill up with many 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 items now it still means we'll only get 2048 in each one but 2048 is a lot more than 64 and now that all they're removed these machines should all be going like billy o trying to fill up all of those slots that's amazing it's all working rather well i'm very impressed with this i can't wait to get the next floor on and get all of the other things made a create factory i need it in fact we're already halfway through building one we built all of this in the last episode and this produces me a whole bunch of items that are on this wall here it doesn't produce all of them however we still need to produce a whole bunch of those but before we get into that there's a little bit of a problem and that's that we're very low on diorite as you can see from my inventory, although we've got a few chip variants, we've only actually got 250 odd left. And I do have a farm for Diorite, which is over at the snowy area. Um, oh, what, where's the, what? Where's the other half of this truck and why is it sideways? That's slightly concerning. Nope, they're both there. Okay, I guess that's just a visual glitch then. That's fine. Right, over to the snowy area. And this here is the snowy area, which still technically needs a name. It's like a ski resort, but it's also got factories. It produces a whole bunch of stuff. There's a farm over there. And the reason that I haven't given it a name is because I was relying on comments. And most of the comments were suggesting like Foxy something or other or something Fox. And I don't like calling things after my own name. So I'd like something unique and different. Anyway, these factories produce all sorts of things, including diorite and andesite and granite. And that's all done in this little process over here. And as you can see, we're producing diorite there, we're producing andesite there, and we're producing granite there. And all of those things get taken down underground into this storage system here. They get sent through here, and then they get picked up by a train, which takes them to our storage system. But as you can see from this chunk loading map, none of the chunks in this area are force loaded anymore. And the reason for that is because it's such a big area, it was just getting all kinds of laggy and just slowing down the rest of the server. And to be honest, most of the things that we're making here, I've got in bulk. Apart from diorite now, because we've used all of that. So that means we need a little diorite farm setting up over here. And we can do that because we're bringing in andesite and quartz, which are still being produced at other factories that are still loaded. So we shouldn't run out. The other ingredient of this farm that wasn't fully automatable was blaze powder. And that's what we're using to produce redstone. And the way we're producing redstone is by basically turning blaze powder into potions of strength and then squirting it onto cinder flour. And that all works really well. But like I said, the blaze powder 
gunpowder's not renewable, which means I need to go to a blaze farm, AFK there for a while, gather a bunch of the blaze powder, and then bring it into the system. But thanks to you guys in the comments, I've got a new way of doing that that doesn't involve adding any more mods or anything like that, which should be really easy. But we are going to need to go to the nether. Before we get carried away going over to the nether though, I just want to explain this factory again. The idea is that we're producing every single component that I require to then be able to just craft any of the create stuff that I need. For example, if I wanted gearboxes, I'll be able to because we've got loads of shafts and cogs. Likewise, if I wanted fans, we'll have propellers and we'll have all of the casing and the ingredients for that. If I need brass tunnels and funnels, we'll have plenty of these electron tubes and plenty of brass and plenty of dried kelp and things like that so I'm not aiming to actually produce the actual items like copper tanks and pipes but I am aiming to have all of the ingredients that I need in order to be able to craft those really quickly and so in order to help me along I made a little list here with all of the things that we still need to get so hopefully by the end of today we'll have all of these things in place and a nice big factory for them all to live in but before we can do any of that we need to sort this blaze powder system out which does mean going off to the nether over at the fortress farm, I'm reminded that this thing's actually a pretty good blaze farm as well. And as a result of that, we've got a ridiculous amount of blaze rods already in the system. 75,000 of them, which means if we crushed all of those down, we'd have over 300,000 blaze powder, which is probably more than we'd ever use in terms of turning it into redstone. But that still means that our redstone is not renewable because eventually that could run out and that means someone would have to come here in AFK and load in some more. And the other thing about this is none of this is actually connected to my storage system. And hopping back to the new area quickly, in the last episode we put a lot of time and effort into making these quantum bridges in order to transfer all of our items from our storage systems wirelessly to our main storage system. So I really should get one of those set up for the nether as well so that we can get all of those items into the system. But back in the nether that's a job for later on. Right now I need to explore the nether a bit to find another fortress in order to steal a blaze spawner. And it looks like there's something interesting over there, but I don't think it's a blaze spawner, but I want to check it out. That is in that direction, so let's go for a little fly across the nether and see what we can discover. And what I've discovered is another fortress, which is very convenient. So I guess I need to fly around here and try and find myself a blaze spawner. I'm sure there can't be one too far away. Right now, though, there's a chest with bombs in it. I'll take the bombs, thanks very much. And it looks like just down this corridor here, we've got ourselves a little blaze spawner, so that's good. Hey, hey, I'm trying to get this blaze spawner, stop it. Will you guys stop? I'm trying to make warp plates and waystones here, guys, because you're making it very difficult for me. So I need a warp plate and a waystone, and we're gonna call this temporary fortress. I'm going to use this to hop back to the new area. And I guess this new area needs a name as well, because it's not exactly new anymore. And I don't think we're going to be here too much longer. But before we get carried away with calling things names, I need to put another warp plate down here. So let's just chuck that there. Let's take the attuned shard out of that. And back over at the temporary fortress with all of these blazes, I can put that shard into there, pick up this blaze border, and then just hop back through with it. Just like that. Now we've got a splay spawner here, which is probably going to cause us a lot of problems. So I better get away from it for now. So back at this temporary fortress, I want to find that thing that we saw and figure out what it is. And it's just down there, apparently. So maybe it is actually part of the fortress. Although getting to it looks like, ah, looks, oh, there's another blaze spawner there. That'll come in useful maybe at some point. It definitely seems to be within the bounds of the fortress. And it is, oh, okay, we got a little piglin camp. Hello, little piglin. What's going on at your little camp? Have you got any chests? No, you've got nothing at all, just a pile of gold. Well, in that case, I won't disturb you. I'll leave you to it. And I'm going to head back with this other blaze spawner. And um, yeah, then we'll have two of them, I guess. I'll just take that. Thank you very much. I'll see you later, buddy. So now I have two blaze spawners over here and a whole bunch of blazes to help me run this factory. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate the help. But um, if you could not be so helpful right now, that I'd really appreciate that because you're going to end up setting everything on fire. And I don't really want it on fire. So do you know what? I think we... Oh, I picked up the... I picked up a blaze. I've never had a blaze before. I've got a blaze. Oh, this is lovely. Hello, little blaze. Um, hmm. I'm going to take that and run away somewhere where I'm not going to load it. 
Let's just stick it down here for now and let's go and get the other one. Then we can tidy all of this fire up. Right, and now we just need to deal with our factory workers in the best way possible. You should have joined a union, guys. Now look what's happened to you. You've both been fired. Get it? Because it blazed. Fired? Fired? No. Okay, jeez. Oh, my brass casings fell out. So why do we need those blaze spawners? Well, in my hand, I have some empty blaze burners. And let's just pretend this is the blaze spawner. If you click on one of those with an empty blaze spawner, it puts a blaze inside of it. And then if you put that blaze burner through some crushing wheels, you get blaze powder, cinder flour, and iron back. And that means we can put a deployer down with some empty blaze burners next to a blaze spawner. That can be constantly filling those with blazes and then dropping them into some crushing wheels. And that's how we can automate blaze powder. However, the problem with this is that if we've got a blaze spawner somewhere where I'm working, we're going to end up with a whole bunch of blazes around, a whole bunch of fire, and I don't really want to have to deal with that. And whilst I could use that to actually generate as even more blaze rods and blaze powder, I don't really want to have to faff about with any of that. And speaking of problems, we are now 100% out of diorite, which means the rest of the farms are starting to slow down. So we should really address that first after I've had a nap, because it's bedtime. And now that I'm all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, you don't have a tail. Oh yeah, well, uh, now that I'm all bright-eyed, we should probably put a second floor on this factory so that we can start getting these other things in place. And for that, I'm going to be using a combination of eroded tuff and some stone and some eroded andesite, maybe, as well just to give it a little bit of texture and we're going to be just plonking that basically up on top of this thing because I still don't know what this factory is going to look like yet so I don't really want to start building that so first of all I'm going to use the trowel to make a line of those like that and get rid of that and then I'm going to use this construction wand set to random matching any on left and right restriction and all I need to do is just walk back along one of these and place a bunch of those and see how it looks and I can already see I don't think I like the stone and the andesite in there. Um, I think if the patches were a little bit better designed that would be better but the randomness of the construction wand hasn't really helped with that at all. And instead we're going to replace all of those with this sanded tuff because I think that just blends a little bit better. I'm going to take away the sort of little bits of the eroded andesite where it's not really in patches. And I think that works a lot better although I still think that this eroded andesite is probably a little bit bright. However, one thing I need to consider here is how we're going to get our storage drawer network up here because down here it's just laid underneath the floor so you can't see it. But if this is only going to be one block thick, it's going to be very visible. So really, I should probably make this two blocks thick. And I actually think this cut tuff surrounded by the sanded tuff and then the eroded tuff makes it look a lot more like damp patches than that other stuff. So that's what we're going to go with. So first of all, I'm going to dig away all of this stuff again and replace that. Yeah, that looks loads better like that. I might even add a little bit in this little section here down here. And then I just need to replicate that on the layer above. How hard could it be? And it occurs to me while I'm added in this next layer of this roof that actually I need an air gap in the middle to have our storage drawers in. Otherwise, they're going to be visible from down here. And I don't want that. So I guess I'm going to rip all of this out and do it again. So now this layer's got a little right angle as well. I can actually come underneath the main bit and I'm going to add a few brackets onto these shafts just to make those look like they're actually attached to the roof. I'm going to do it on the pipe as well, but probably not in the same place. And I think something like this should be fine. I don't want too many on the pipes because I think they look a little bit more sturdy than the, than the shaft. And not wanting to go too crazy, I think something like that just is enough to give that a little bit of structure underneath there. And of course, we're going to need lights down here as well, but I'm going to worry about that later. For now, I'm going to rely on these mega torches to stop anything from spawning and worry about the rest of the decoration once the actual building's in place. Right, it's time to get up to this second floor then and start producing some diorite. So I've gone ahead and added a few auto crafters up onto this second layer. You can also see I've put some more shafting going across this thing and I've connected the storage drawers down the side here 
here the power is just coming from this side here and the reason I've added these ones is because these are the only ones that just require one type of item so they're really easy to make you just need a draw control the slave with a smart shoot with the right thing in it then the shape of your craft in and then they can just output back into the draw controller slaves so if I put this shaft on here they should all kick in and we should start making wool shafts and paper as well and that means all of those things are now going into that storage system down there which is fantastic so that's these things done here the other one I can do is iron bars but the rest of them all require multiple components so in order to add a new one, we just need to extend our trim along here, put one of those on there, and then we just need the shape of our crafting. And for this one, it's six items. And what I'm gonna do is go around the back and connect all of these things together so that I only need to put items into it in one place. There we go. Then we need a smart shoot on top. We need to tell that that we only want iron ingots bringing out of the system to go in there. And then we can just put another one of these draw controller slaves on there. And then we can use this trim just to bring that all the way up the back and then get that all connected. So now we've got iron bars going in. We just need some power. And I feel like maybe I should have done this a little bit further back so that it's not taking up quite so much room. So I'm just going to take it all to bits again. That's absolutely fine. Don't worry about it, guys. So adding power for this one's going to be really easy, although I'm going to do it on this side so that we can put other ones here. We just need a cog there and then break one of those, stick in a bit of chain drive just there like that and then attach it to there and then spin those round so they're facing the right direction. And there we go. Now we are making iron bars as well. So that's all of the items that only require one ingredient but it's not diorite and that's what I really need next. Now we can actually make diorite using flint and calcite in a press with a basin but the easiest way to do it is just to actually craft it up which is nether quartz and cobblestone which means I'm going to need a 4x4 crafter but this time I need two different ingredients on the diagonals and that means I can't join them all together and I have to put an individual ingredient into each one. So now the problem is that I need more brass funnels because I've completely run out of them and whilst we are producing everything we need to make them as you can see we've got no brass because that's going into producing everything else that we're making at the moment so that means I need to go back to Hill Valley into my little workshop and produce some more manually so back over at Hill Valley it suddenly occurred to me that this isn't the area I want to come to at all I need to be at the snowy area for my little workshop however it's kind of handy that I'm over here because I've got a whole bunch of raw copper to actually burn in this burning machine so let's just chuck all of that in the barrel, get it blasted, and that's going to give us a whole bunch more copper, which will come in very useful for making all of that zinky, brassy stuff that we're going to be making. Zinky, brassy stuff? Yeah, well, it's brass made out of zinc and cut. Shut up. Leave me alone. So actually back over at the snowy area again inside my hotel and down in the basement, I'm back again to make even more brass. How hard could it be? The system's eating all the zinc as well. I've got some raw zinc. I guess I'm going to go back to Hill Valley and smelt that. So let's just come back to this and then throw that in there. That'll get smelted and then eaten by the system. And by the time I get back to the snowy area, it'll have gone again. So I still won't have any, but this is not ideal at the moment. This new factory is kind of eating everything that I need. But in the long run, it's going to be a good thing because then I'll have everything I need. Jeez. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is just tell this system to stop eating all of the brass. And I believe it's the presses that's eating it because we haven't quite got enough of those. So all I need to do is just steal that press for a second. It's not going to make any more of those. And then hopefully we'll get some brass into the system. And while I was waiting for the brass to come in, I just thought I'd get this little thing set up ready. And what it's got is a mechanical arm, which is going to take items off these depots, which are going to come out out of these when we've got some more funnels it's going to put them into the funnels in the right places hopefully the craft is going to craft the stuff up and it's just going to go straight back into the storage system i hope and whilst i was building that we've managed to amass a whole three pieces oh no oh, we get more but it's going out faster than it's coming in or it's getting confused whether to turn it into nuggets or that i guess i'm not sure but anyway that's mine i need it actually i need to put it back in so that i can actually craft the funnels i need to make, craft as many of these as i can before it steals it back 46 That'll do. So of course we're going to need some andesite and some quartz for our filters and now all I need to do is come up here and get the right things in the right places. So I'm going to disconnect those storage drawers for a second so we don't have any accidents. I'm going to put a funnel on there and a funnel on there. That one's going to have andesite, that one's going to have quartz and then I need to pick those up. And we only want one at a time coming out otherwise it's going to get all sorts of confused. This needs to be on round robin mode although I haven't told it where to go yet so forget that and I've realised I've built this thing too close to everything so it's not going to work. So let's just delete 
all of these a minute and all I need to do is just bring it forward one block so there's actually room behind it to put the funnels in. So uh, now I've done that, we put funnels on the back like that. They all need to be input funnels, not output funnels, so I just need to spin them round with the wrench. And I believe we want andesite in there and there and quartz in there and there, maybe. If that's the right way around, andesite, andesite, quartz, quartz. Oh, it's cobblestone, not andesite. Cobble, cobble, quartz, quartz. Right, OK, I'm a moron. We know. So in which case, it's cobble there, cobble there, and then we just need some cobble there instead of the andesite. And now I can grab that mechanical arm back again. And now with the mechanical arm, I can say pick up from there and there and deposit in all of these and it should know that it can't put certain things in certain places so it shouldn't get it wrong i can pop that back on there we'll put that into force brown robin mode so it doesn't make any mistakes and now i just need a little bit of power on this so now with a few bits of chain drive some shafts some gearboxes and some cogs all of this is powered and this should now be producing us diorite it is now it's not the fastest diorite making machine in the world but it's going to produce it and what you've got to remember with this factory is speed doesn't matter it's always going to be running which means whenever i use items out of my inventory it will just replace them over time and because it's force low I don't need to be here it will just keep running in the background always keeping stock of all of these things and eventually we'll get everything we need before I do anything else and I forget I better put that press back on there and now we can actually start making those brass sheets again and that's our diorite system done which means the diorite is now being used for whatever that gets used for and I believe that's for crafting tough yet yeah, there it goes it's going in there to do that so we can move on to the next thing diorite done and iron bars done so before we get too carried away building everything else in this factory, I'm actually going to go back to the nether and get one of these quantum rings set up so that we can get all of the items out of there and over to our storage facility, which means I need a couple more singularities. And if you don't know how I make a singularity, then I went through that in great detail in my last video. But basically, it entails me getting something out of my inventory that I have way more than I need and then just sticking it into some matter condensers, which are not in this room at all. They're all the way through here and into the brown section, I think, maybe. Yes, the crafting storage room. Just in here. And I, yeah, I forgot I dismantled it all. Uh, I better, I better put it back. And the thing I'm going to shove in here today is flint because I have 4.7 million of it. And I've had a whole bunch of comments from the last video saying instead of pumping items into these matter condensers that I could use water. And yeah, water's free. You can make an infinite water source very easily, but I've also got way more flint than I'll ever need. And that basically means that it's free to just stick all of that in there and it saves me faffing about with pumps and cogs and power sources and all that sort of thing where everything I need is just here. So it's much easier to do it this way. And whilst it might seem slow starting off getting all of the flint into here, as in the number of stored energy doesn't go up particularly quickly, the longer that your export buses are attached to the system and the more acceleration cards they have in, the faster it will actually end up going because it takes a while to warm up. And the other comment I got was, why don't I make stack upgrades and then I can send a stack at a time into the system? And I could do that and that might speed things up slightly, but look how fast that's going into there now. It really doesn't take very long to get these things filled up. And while those things are filling up, I need to go to the roof because I need to add on yet another quantum ring into this system. And once the network has booted, that should mean this is online and now we've got still 12 of 16 channels in there that's fine and after just adding that onto the roof the singularities are almost halfway there already which means they're really not going to take very long at all to get finished so i better dash to the nether quickly and get that quantum ring in place over there so that i don't waste too much of my flint as it starts the process again and there we go we've now got a quantum ring in the nether ready for connection to the overworld and all i need to do on this is connect a storage bus to that there and then i can just connect that cable not there i don't want it there thank you i just want it connected to this quantum ring just a little bit maybe i did want it there like that <laughs> and i was going to put an import bus on here as well to actually drag all of the items out of this but i really don't think we need to we might as well just leave them in there and hopping back over here to check on our singularity process i'm pretty sure they're going to be just about done already which means if i had a faffed about plumbing in water supplies and all that sort of stuff yeah look they're nearly done well it'd have taken even longer and now we have two of these we can turn these into quantum entangled singularities with a little bit of TNT and some end of 
dust, I think it's called, and then um, we'll be good to go. And here's the mess we made earlier, or in the last video, should I say, one of those, one of those, and one of those. Done. And then one of those, and one of those, and another one of those. Done. One of those in there, and the other one in there, and that leaves us two for spares. And now this should connect. It's online. Have we got enough channels? We do. And that should mean, now if I go into my inventory, I should have access to all of those things. So let's find out. Yep, 76,000 blaze rods. And if we look at our nuggets of experience, we've got 622,000 of them. If only I could turn that into a fluid and make a big pool of it, that'd be amazing. And that's something else I get an absolute ton of comments about. Why don't I make an infinite XP source like I have done for this lava source here and for the biodiesel source that's a couple of floors below? And the reason is, peeps, unfortunately, you can't pump XP out as a liquid. If you try and do that, it just turns into the XP orbs and you end up picking it up. So we can't just pour XP everywhere and make a big old infinite source of it, which is a shame. But what we can do with it is something a little bit different. And that is to make a block that's quite pretty that I've never built with. And that is the block of experience. And these blocks of experience, which we could craft an absolute ton of and never ever run out of XP by the looks of things, are quite pretty little blocks. I don't know what I would use them for. They make a nice noise. I don't think they do anything. I don't think they give you any XP or help you mend your tools or anything, but they're quite nice. And I believe you can turn those back into nuggets. You can. So that's very useful. In that case, I'm going to go over to the mob farm because I've just had an idea, peeps. What's your idea? I'll tell you in a minute when we get there. Why are you dragging it out? Not dragging it out. I'm just going to the mob farm. Well, you should have cut. You should have done a cut rather than just making us watch. Well, look, we're here now. Got 426,000 of them in there because this is the main area where we're storing them. However, storing them like that is inefficient. So I'm going to remove that box. I'm going to put some compacting drawers there instead. I'm going to take one of those out of there and shove it in. Oh, it's got... Co Why has it got cobblestone? Stop it. No, stop putting, stop putting cobble in it. Trying to get me experience. There we go. I would be able to store a whole bunch of them as actual blocks, but I need to get them out of there and into there. So instead, what I'm going to do is just put a smart chute on there and then just grab that and shove it on top of there and those will just eventually get filtered down out of there and hopefully go into there. There's only one way to find out. Yep, they're going in. Excellent. Oh, problem solving. It's not really a problem, is it, having too much experience, but it is nice to compact them down a bit and have them not take up quite so much room in my storage system. Good. Right. Anyway, back on to what we were doing. What were you doing? I don't know. I can't remember. I got busy, distracted, doing other things. Are you going to cut this top? Skipping forward in time a little bit. I've added a whole bunch more crafters in here. None of them have got any power, but I believe all of the storage systems are linked up and I'm going to try and talk you through it the best I can. Also, none of them have got mechanical arms yet, but we'll do that as we go through. So we'll start here. We've got sticks and cobble, which are going to go into the back of these to make us levers. And then we've got something very similar with redstone and sticks to make us redstone torches. On this side here, we've got iron sheet and andesite alloy, which is going to go into the back of this system, and that's going to make us whatever that is, propellers. And although the crafting recipe for propellers doesn't actually need the corner ones, I've used these crafter slot covers in the corners so that I can link all of these ones up together, and that way I only need to put the iron sheets into one funnel and they should fill the slots rather than having a funnel for each one. And that'll save time with the mechanical crafter having to put iron sheets into four different different funnels and also saves me on some funnels and I've done a very similar trick here with the exact same ingredients again and this one is for the whisks for our mechanical mixers again I've used the corner slots there so that I can link all of those together and link those together and in fact actually on this one we don't even need those corner ones at all they're completely useless so that's all the ones down this side and a bit in the middle over at the back here we've got these ones here which are going to be making cogs from shafts and planks and this one here is going to be making the large cogs from cogs and more planks which is actually a much more expensive way of doing it because you can actually make large cogs from shaft and two sets of planks but it just means the whole thing has to be a bit smaller and it really isn't going to cost us that much more because we've got plenty of those resources and 
that leads us to this final one here, which is comparators. Again, I've gone for the corner one so I can link the redstone torches ones together. Just needing one funnel. We've got quartz in the middle and stone at the bottom. So this just needs another mechanical arm on here, putting into all of those. And I guess we can plonk that there. So now I believe all of those are set up and ready to go. They just need power. And with this last cog here, I think that is everything on this now powered. We should be producing all of the things we need to produce. There you go. You can see we're now making the whisks there. We're getting the comparators coming out there. Over here, we should be getting, yeah, the propellers. Don't seem to be getting any redstone torches, though. Oh, have I not put you on forced round robin? I have put you on forced round robin, so what's your problem? All right, we'll remove that arm and do it again. Pick up, pick up, place, place, and go. Forced round robin. Well, now it's working. Well, there we go. We're now making redstone torches, which is fantastic. We're making cogs over here, but I think we're full of cogs, so that stopped. And I think we must be full of big cogs as well, because that stopped. And that's not actually... No, that's not going to work. <laughs> Put the cog in the wrong place. There we go. Now we're making cogs. Small cogs, big cogs. Everything's working. Everything's... But my levers are not producing now. Why has my levers stopped? What are you doing, arms? Okay, try this one again then. Are you gonna do it now? It is. Okay, now we're making levers. Excellent. And updating my list, the last few things we need are electron tubes, brass hands, precision mechanisms, crushing wheels, barrels, straws, and in order to make those, we need a bamboo farm. So we're just about there and we've got a reasonable amount of room left up here to do all of those things. So I'm gonna crack on with that and I'll get back to you once I've made some progress. And now we've got a bunch more autocrafters in place. We've got one here doing barrels and what I've done here is actually made it bigger so that I could extend everything around to join the planks together and the slabs together so we only have to use two input funnels again. We've got an electron tube system over here which is pretty simple and squeezed around the back here we've got one that's actually doing brass hands and we, yet yeah, we've got enough brass to make those, that's good. The only one that I haven't wired up properly yet is this one, which is for crushing wheels, and that's because I think this is going to cause us a bit of a problem. The reason I think it's going to cause a problem is that so far on all of these, we've only had one input funnel per output item, which means the mechanical arms can pick the item up and shove it in the right one. The problem with this one, however, is that the wood that goes in these slots here can't be joined, so we actually need to have a funnel for each one of those, which means around the back of this is quite complicated. We've got andesite alloy going in at the top, which is going to go all the way around the outsides. We've got andesite in the middle, which is going to just be for one slot. And then we've got four slots for planks. And I think that means that when I put down this mechanical arm and tell it to pick up from there and put into here, it's going to get all sorts of confused which one it should actually put the planks in. Because it's going to be picking four planks up at a time and then go in, I don't really know where to put those. But we won't know unless we try, so let's link this thing up to the storage system so the items can actually start coming out of those chutes any minute now. There they are. So we've got 16 andesite alloy, four planks and one andesite. And if I tell this arm to pick up from there and put into all of these uh, funnels here and pop that down there, let's see if it actually does a good job. Andesite's gone in the right place. <gasps> it's actually doing it. Oh, good. Excellent. Now, if I put it on force ground, Robin, is it still going to do it right? Andesite in the middle. Come on, you can do it. No, you've given up again, haven't you? I don't know what to do. Okay, andesite in the middle. Planks around the outside. Yeah, good. And then the andesite at the top. Oh, it's doing it. And that means we're making crushing wheels. And that also means we're going to be making 2,048 of them, which I really don't need. So I think I definitely will have a storage downgrade in this one so that we're only ever going to end up with 64. Because 2,048 crushing reels is more than anyone would ever need. And that really would eat through all of my resources. In that case, everything that can be auto-crafted has been. All we need now are straws and precision mechanisms. And precision mechanisms are pretty easy. So I'm going to set that up right here. And now I've got almost everything in place to make these precision mechanisms, but we need to be a little bit careful here. Precision mechanisms take gold sheet that has to go round the loop five times in order to be able to create the precision mechanism. And if it breaks, it could end up giving you back iron, cogs or gold sheet. That means you don't just want tons and tons and tons of gold sheet just going round and round and round. So basically, if I connect the storage system to this now, this little funnel here that's putting gold sheet on is just going to send loads and loads of gold sheet round and they're not going to have a chance to just do the loop and actually get finished. So, the way we fix that is to do something like what we did in our netherite factory where we've got similar systems set up and we use threshold switches. If we hop over to this one here, 
we've got a very similar system going on here, which is allowing on cobblestone and taking off magma blocks, but it'll only allow on cobblestone if there isn't much in here already. And that works by having a threshold switch, looking at this barrel, checking to see how much is in there. And if there's enough, it sends a signal over to this here to actually allow that out. So that's all we need to do over at our new one. And I happen to have a whole bunch of threshold switches and redstone links that I'm not using all on the back of these storage drawers. So, uh, yeah, I guess I can steal all of these now because um, they're totally useless. And that should work. I, don't, I can't remember if I need to invert it or not. I don't think I do. There's only one way to find out, and that is to plug everything in, which just means added a bit of trim just there. And now that should start letting gold sheet out, which should start getting sorted, and it shouldn't keep letting them out. Yeah, there's no gold ingots going around, and there's only a handful of those going on. So if they actually manage to complete, they're going to get sucked up by that, and that'll let more out, as you can see. So that's working perfectly. But there is a downside to this. If the precision mechanism fails and gets turned into iron or cogs, well, it's got nowhere to go. So I also need to set that up so that it'll take those out as well. And I can do that pretty easily with a filter. We just want to accept these different items here. And although it doesn't say iron nuggets, I'm going to put those on just in case as well. And then I can replace that filter on there with that. And now that'll take anything out. What is it made here? Oh, because the iron's gone round that's failed and now it's making incomplete heat engines as well. So yeah, I need to put that on the filter too, I think. Can it take away the horrible things now? Is No, it's still not taking anything away. Oh, because they've got nowhere to go. I'm such a moron. So after a little bit of tweaking and fiddling, this thing is all working nicely. We're only allowing gold sheet out when there's not enough things on the belt for it to actually process. We're taking away all of the junk that it makes and the precision mechanisms as well. And that just means the only time this will have a problem is if it creates some sort of scrap or junk from a failure that we don't have a slot for in here. So we'll just have to keep our eyes out for that in the future and hope that there aren't too many items that come through. But realistically, we're not going to be running this for a long time anyway, because we've got loads of precision mechanisms now. In fact, we've got 48 in there, and I've got another whole bunch there. So we've got 130 altogether. I don't think we're going to run out anytime soon. And the only thing I really use them for is speed controllers, and uh, I don't make many of those. And that means all we need now is a bamboo farm to make straws. And that's going to be really easy. What about the blaze burner thing? Oh, well, we'll do, yeah, OK, we've still got to do that, but um, I don't really want to do that here. Hmm. So I've added a couple more things to this system, bones and bone meal. And we're actually going to crush the bones here to make bone meal. And I've also added bones to the little export filter over here. So any in the system will get dragged over here to keep the supply up. So we need a little setup to make the bone meal from the bones. And then we can use that bone meal to grow the bamboo to make the straws. So here's how our little bamboo farm's going to work. Bearing in mind, we don't need much bamboo because we're only using it to make straws and we're never going to need millions of those. We're going to grow the bamboo using the deploy that's going to have bone meal in it. We're going to saw it down and this backpack with the magnet upgrading is going to pick it all up and shove it back into the storage system. So that's nice and easy. Then we just need to crush the bone meal and get all of this wired up. And to make the bone meal, if we mill down bones, we'll get three bone meal plus 25% chance to get three more and a little bit of white dye too. Whereas if we crush them, we'll get exactly the same. So we might as well use a milling machine. And in order to do that, we'll just have yet another one of those with yet another shoe tie. On, with the milling machine on, with the shoot on, with one of those on. And that's that set up as well. So all we need is power. And that's it, job done. It's not very tidy, is it? I could probably make that a bit better. And there we go. We have a fantastic little bone mealy, bamboo-y thingy farm thing going on here. Taking the bones, crushing them down, growing the bamboo and chopping it down, picking it all up. And it's an infinite cycle that'll never, ever end. This is wonderful. And what's really good about this is that we're still not making any straws. We need to make straws. OK, it's, it's straw time. I think we can probably just about squeeze it in next to this, to be honest, although that's not giving us a great deal of room around there, but we can fix that later. We're just going to have yet another one of those there, yet another one of those there, and one of those there, and yet another one of those there, and one of those there, and that's going to take in bamboo. That's going to be joined up there, and we just need power to that. And I bet that's powered from the bottom, isn't it? Don't tell me it's powered from the bottom. No, it's not. Where, the, where do you put power into this? Where's the power? It's just from the side. I guess it's from the side. OK. I have used these before. I just never really paid attention to how they're powered. A bit of chain drive like that. Is that going to work? There we go. Rolling mill. And now we should be making straws. 
We are. We're now making straws. <laughs> well, it's a bit of a mess, but it's all working, and this platform probably wants extending out a bit, so we've actually got somewhere to walk around. And that is it. Everything that we need to make every single item out of Create at the press of a button, just hopping into my inventory, choosing the thing I want to build, and then clicking that and realizing we've still got no brass. We've never got any brass! But don't worry, it will come. As soon as everything else is done, it will be done. But at the moment, it's using all of that brass for other things. So once we've got 2,048 brass hands, <laughs> then the brass will start backing up, which will probably happen next time I log in. Because don't forget, this whole thing is on a server that's running 24-7, so all of these things are just going to accrue overnight while I'm in bed. And speaking of bed, it's definitely bedtime. So all that's left to do is build our little blaze burnery crushy thing to make the blaze powder to help us with the redstone situation. And build an entire factory around all of this stuff, of course, decorate it and make it look nice and sort the exterior and all that sort of thing, which could take some time. And because we haven't got much time left in this episode, and because our redstone machine's still chugging away making redstone, and we've still got absolutely tons of blaze powder in the system, and 76,000 blaze rods still in my inventory, I think we're going to leave the blaze burner thing for another time, and I'm just going to focus on doing this factory right now. In fact, in three, two, one... So there we are, a complete factory. Now I've tried to keep the create aesthetic. We've got the oranges from the copper casing and the copper pipes. We've got the spruce and the metal from the andesite casing and the andesite stuff. We've got these big cogs on the side of the building, which I think that one's okay, but that one looks a bit weird. I kind of think it works. Down here, we've got a whole bunch of different create items from all of the things that we'll be able to make from this factory. And the inside, not much has changed. But before we go inside, on the roof, we've got some big old fans that you can see from inside that also let daylight through. A couple of windows, a bit of junk on this one here, and this big old chimney above the power station there. So let's head inside and see what's new and different in there. And the answer is not a lot really it's pretty much the same obviously we've now got a ceiling in we've got some lights we've got these big old fans above and no they're not powered which is a bit of a shame but it'll do we've obviously got our storage system i've put some walls around that so it sort of matches in a little bit better and then we've got this brick building around where the power station is around the actual factory itself again not much has changed other than a few of these girders we've got some stairs going up to the top floor and we've got some lights on everywhere as well so we can actually see what we're doing and upstairs is pretty much the same as downstairs i guess apart from this little bit of catwalk here so that you can sort of see what's going on i guess but i've just noticed there is one thing that i'm missing and that is railings on the side of these stairs that we need otherwise we're going to fall off so let's just chuck those on there quickly there we go. That's that job done. I can never fall off these stairs. Oh, okay. Maybe the railings are not particularly good, but they'll do. And this has been running for a little while now, so we're pretty much maxed out on everything we've got, except for, as you can guess, brass. We still haven't got any brass. We've hardly got any brass sheets. We've nearly got enough of the brass hands, though. And I don't know why I need 2,048 of them, but I'm just going to let it go now. And because we've got no brass, and because this has been crafting so many things, we actually completely ran out of tough. And die all right, apparently. So that's why it's going really, really slowly now, because it's having to craft one die all right, then it can craft one tough, then it can get a little bit of zinc from that. So this entire factory is going to take a long time before it's actually caught up with all of the things it needs to build. But once it has done that, tough will start coming through in higher quantities and so will the brass and everything will be good. 
copper. I need it. And the reason I need it is because this big old factory we built over the last couple of episodes has eaten it all, trying to turn it into brass. And the reason it's been turning it into brass is because this factory has been making us all of these items in very high quantities. And it's done absolutely everything now to the full amount except for brass. And the reason it hasn't finished off the brass is because it needs copper. And the reason we've got no copper is because we're getting that from crushing tough. And because of that, we've run out of tough. And the only way we're getting tough is by crafting in diorite and andesite together and we've run out of diorite which we're getting from crafting cobble and quartz together very slowly in fact just upstairs we've got this little mechanical arm set up here which has been whizzing away crafting us as much diorite as possible but it's only doing one at a time which is yeah pretty slow and that means we're not getting a whole bunch of tough and because you don't get all that much copper from the tough in fact you just get a handful of nuggets occasionally from crushing tough which means we've not got any copper which means we're not getting any brass and that just won't do so today we need to make a big old copper factory which we're going to make from making a whole bunch of tough and we're going to make that from a whole bunch of diorite and andesite which means we need a whole bunch of cobble and quartz but we've got both of those things in absolutely massive quantities so that really shouldn't be a big issue at all the issue is going to be maggots apparently we've got maggots there not maggots there why would so, so many maggots no that's not the issue the issue is where we're going to build it this new area that we're in is getting all kinds of full. The road network's absolutely jam-packed and there's not really much place to have any more roads coming off from it, except for this one here. Well, I've got very big plans for what's going at the end of that road, and that'll be coming up in an episode very soon. So if you want to check that out, make sure to subscribe. So that leaves us with not very much space at all in this area to squeeze anything in, except at the end of this road. If we extend that up here, we can bake another little platform here, get rid of a bunch of those trees, and that should give us plenty of room to plonk on a big old copper factory. So I've got a whole bunch of work to do. But before we get to doing that work, we actually need to head over to the snowy area. Over in the snowy area, in the last episode, I asked you guys for a whole bunch of different name ideas for this area. Ideally not containing the word fox, foxy no tail, or having anything to do with foxes. And I got a whole bunch of comments, and the most popular one by far was to call it the snowy area. And that was by Nest the Cat, and I got 189 likes at the point of recording this video. Thanks, Nest the Cat. But that's not the name I've chosen. The name I've actually chosen comes from a comment from Panda Gaming, who gave me a whole bunch of suggestions, and the one I liked the most was actually Alpine Springs. And I like that because we've got a little hot springs over over there which is generating us a whole bunch of lava for our power station and obviously this is an alpine resort so that's going to be the name for this area so i guess we need to update this waystone which currently doesn't have the name of the area it has the name of the hotel so we're going to change that to alpine springs so now whenever i go to a waystone i'll be searching through it going where's the snowy area gone oh gee what's this alpine oh geez so with that out of the way and back at the new area it's time for me to do a whole bunch of deforestation and get this platform form extended so we can build a factory so I better get cracking and here we go we've now got a nice big platform we've even got a little yard we've got a new road we've got some walls around it and I've even bothered to extend the grass down to meet this area here at this point although I haven't done any of that over there which means we need to start getting some materials over here so we've actually got something to process. This factory diagram details exactly how we're going to process through this factory and whilst it might look complicated, it's actually very simple. We're going to take some cobble and quartz, turn it into diorite. We're going to take that diorite and some more cobble and turn that into andesite and then we're going to take the andesite and that diorite and some lava and turn it into tuff. Then we're going to crush down that tuff and we're going to get all of these things out of there which is flint, gold, copper, zinc, iron and electrum. And we don't need electrum, but well, we just get that out of the thing anyway. So we'll compact all of these things down and we'll take the copper, compact it into blocks, and then we're going to use some nuggets of experience and deployers to age it. So we first need to make the exposed copper. Then we can take some of that and make the weathered copper. And then we can take some of that and make the oxidized copper. So at the end of this, we should have a plentiful supply of copper blocks. 
and all of the variants of copper blocks as well. So I've set up a little storage system here, which should contain everything that we're going to need. But I actually need to connect this up to our storage system in order to drag those items out of here. And I would also like to produce cobble and quartz in this factory to help along with the process. Because while we've got 1 million cobble and we've got nearly 2 million quartz, that will eventually run out and we'll just end up with a whole bunch of copper. We still won't have any diorite and we still won't have any tough. So I'm going to have to be very careful with this process to make sure we're accumulating plenty of everything and I think once we've got the ground floor in with all of that stuff we can do an upstairs with a cobble generator and a quartz machine so that's my plan first thing I need to do is connect up these storage drawers over to our storage facility there so we can start getting some of those items out and I also need to drag some lava over here as well and I think the best thing to do for that is to steal this lorry that thinks it's going to deliver this lava over to our storage system which no longer runs on lava so you sir are going to need a new schedule and I'm going to need some more track laying underground to connect this to there. The track is now all in place under here. I'm hoping that I've done it right. I've put a little fluid interface on there, but the pipe doesn't go anywhere yet. And I've updated the train schedule. So hopefully this thing's going to come out of here now and just go straight in there. So let's see what happens. Off you go, buddy. Is it going to work? Is he going to have enough room to turn around and do all of the things he needs to do? And is he going to connect in the right place? You never know. He's made it to there so far. That's good. You can come in so you don't have to wait there while you're waiting there. What are you? Oh, yeah, because of the barriers on that one that I replaced. It doesn't need to do that anymore. So he pulls forward, and now he can't find his way to there. Great. Good. Oh, it'll work perfectly. So he's looking for copper drop-off, which is here. Ah, I see. His track's too bendy. In that case, we'll go from there to around about here. Smooth it out a bit if we can. No, we can't smooth it out. Okay, we'll just throw that there then. And hopefully, yeah, there we go. Now he's succeeded. Ah, yes, that's the perfect position for him to be at. So now he can't find the next suitable destination, really? Jeez, this guy. Ah, right. Because the corner that he needs to leave on it, right, in that case, what we'll do is we'll just move this station back a couple of blocks and that should hopefully sort that out. Okay, sir, would you like to try that again? And you can start off by going to that bit over there so we know it's all going to work. So assuming he's just come into the factory, he goes to there, then he should reverse up here. He should now go a block further back. Yep, that's fine. And now he should, after five seconds, be able to actually get out of here, fingers crossed. Is he going to do it? He is. Excellent. Oh, good. That's that little problem sorted then. So the lava tank is back and we're now filling up this tank full of lava, which is very nice. So let's take a quick look underground. And as you can see, what I've done is just added in some pipes, some pumps, a few water wheels so that we can actually power this thing. And then we've got another pipe going over here into a block and that's going to be to power the power station. And the reason the block's there is just so we don't end up with lava all over the floor in here. And you guys must have seen me build a million power stations by now, so I'm just going to throw one together quickly. And there we are, a nice little level 9 boiler. I don't think we're going to need any more than that over here, which means the only thing I need to bring over here now is our items. And I'm not going to be building a quantum ring today. I'm just going to link our storage system here straight over to there with a whole bunch of cable underground. So we'll just sneak a little bit of cable in here behind there like that, and we'll bring it down down here to the underground part and then we just need to do a bit of digging through underneath here hmm, apparently i've lagged out i can't press anything my inventory is not doing anything oh apparently i've picked something up <laughs> that'll be why and just putting this one back in here should connect everything up excellent make sure ego doesn't get any ideas of escaping because i've left the door open where are you ego fiddling with the diesel no doubt you normally are oh there he is you want a block to play with there you go. It's a nice block, isn't it? Oh, you're just checking out there. Okay, you just keep your eye on those engines. Make sure they keep running, okay? Good job, Ego. That was what Those engines weren't making any noise for me today. These are normally the loudest things in the world. Huh. Oh, well, that's good. So what I'm going to do is move this storage controller over to this side here. Just hop down there a second into the floor. I'm going to grab myself a storage bus and stick that on there like that. And I'm going to come up around the back of that thing with a little bit more cable for an export bus because we need to actually bring in these items from the other part of our storage system into here. Just like that. And I don't think we'll need any acceleration cards on there for now, but we might do. And I've got loads of them, so I might as well shove them in. 
There we go. Lovely. Good. Storage system done. Everything's coming in now, so that's good news. It's time to build a factory. Or the things inside of the factory, I guess. One more thing I need to do before we actually start putting this factory together is actually to put an import bus on here as well. You see, once certain items start filling up, the system's going to stop because there'll be nowhere to put any of the items. So we need to send them out of this system and back into our main storage system. And the way we do that is with this import bus. But I need to tell it what to take. And for now, we just want it to take flint, gold, iron, zinc and electrum. Everything else can stay in here for the moment. And that will leave us with copper, all the copper variants, the tuff, the andesite and the diorite. And obviously these things as well, which have all gone, which should hopefully come back in again. No, it's dead. Uh, it's... But I only... What? You're so confused, aren't you? That should... Why is it going up and down? So what I've done to fix this is turn the priority right up, which will force this to be like the main area that things are stored in and stop everything else taking it out from here. And the other thing I've done is to partition the storage to say these are the items that we are allowing in and out. But that should still mean if I connect this import bus, I can still get other items out of there. So for instance, if I chuck a whole bunch of zinc in there, that should still go out of the import bus. There it goes. Excellent. So we're not fiddling with the things we're bringing in, but we are fiddling with the things we're bringing out. And there's one more thing I'd like to bring in over here, and that is andesite. Even though we're going to be crafting that here, it would make sense to have a bunch of it on hand already. And I'm going to do the same thing with diorite too, because it just makes sense that if there's any more in the system, it can come here to get used. So there we go. That's all sorted. Now it's time to work on the machines. And this is where things are going to get a little bit complicated because we need to produce an absolute ton of diorite and an absolute ton of andesite to make an absolute ton of tuff so that we can make a few of these. Because there's only a 10% chance of getting any of these nuggets from crushing tough, it means we need to crush 10 tough just to potentially get one nugget, and we need nine nuggets to make one copper ingot, and then we need nine of those to make one block of copper. So that's 810 pieces of tough per block of copper. So we're going to need to be producing on quite a big scale. And that's going to be difficult because the only way to produce this stuff is with auto crafters, which are inherently slow. So we need a whole bunch of these and a way Way of getting items into them nice and quickly and i think i've got an idea for that and behold the craziest looking contraption to make diorite that you might have ever seen and this is only a small part of it i'm imagining this the whole way across this platform here and basically what we've got going on is a bunch of funnels up here two containing cobble, two containing quartz, and they'll all come across these belts here. And then underneath that, we've got a series of chutes to put them in the right places. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this is going to work here, because what we need is for some of this quartz to go down this chute here, land on that belt there, and get taken in by this funnel in order to be put into that mechanical crafter there. Likewise, we've got chutes above the mechanical crafters to take those, so we'll have cobble going in here, we'll have quartz going in there, and then we'll have some more quartz going down here and into this one, and some more cobble coming down here and into this one. I think it should work as long as we don't end up with items stuck on top of these funnels, which I don't think they will. Now, if it did go wrong down here for whatever reason, I could actually put hoppers in there instead, but I don't really want to use hoppers because then they're going to fill up with all of the items and that means it's going to use a whole lot of items getting through the whole way through this thing. But if we need to do that, then we need to do that. But the first thing I'm going to add to this is some emergency casing to stop any items just flying off the end there. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing there. And now I just need to connect all of these storage drawers together. And bear in mind, this isn't going to be in this position when we've built it because it's way too close to the power station. This is just a proof of concept, which means for now we can just trail all of these spruce trim all the way across here without causing too many issues for anything. Let's just do that there like that, connect all those together. And now we just need a bit of power. Well, that was easy enough for those. Then we just need these powered. Flip that round stick one of those on there that's those powered then we just need to get this powered then of course we're going to want to be going maximum speed for this so let's stick a speed controller on there and then let's just th get that connected to this with some very very janky create connections right the belts are going in the right way that's good that's all connected and as you can see we've already got items on there so that's good and i haven't powered this one here let's just power that right we're not getting items in the bottom one. Oh, look the oh geez that's the yeah, that's mm. There, that's not ideal. Okay, so that little plan's not going to work. I knew it wouldn't. Stupid little plan. I hate this plan. It's a stupid plan. Now look at all of the... Oh my goodness. Well, it shows that we can get the items out of the system very quickly. 
But yeah, this isn't going to work. So we're going to use hoppers, which means we don't actually need these belts along the bottom at all. So let's get rid of that, get rid of all of these. That means I can make the whole thing a block lower down as well, which would be quite handy because it is pretty tall, this thing. There we go. Right. In that case, let's do round number two and see how this gets on. Are we going to be making anything? That one's making it's very... Oh, I didn't do the speed controller, did I? It is on maximum speed. Oh, I've connected the wrong bit. Make sure the belt's going the right way, which it's not. Maximum speed in that direction. Here we go. Let's produce a whole bunch of this stuff. That's working. Okay, that's working quite nicely. Let's look at the belt above. The items are barely even moving on there because they're coming out 64 at a time, which they don't actually need to do, but that's okay. Let's check the hoppers. They're full, so that's good. And they're producing pretty quickly. That's not too bad at all. So that should mean we're now producing some diorite. And if I was to actually disconnect this import bus for a minute, that'll stop it going into the main system and we can see how fast it's coming through. It, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all, really. But is that from this, or is the system just sending it over? If I stop that, does it stop? It does. Okay, this system's working. So now all I need to do is rebuild it a whole bunch bigger and probably not quite so close to the power station and looking quite so janky. Give me a minute, peeps. I call it the day all right engine. Now, it's going to be very difficult to see if any of these crafters are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing, but this is the system. There's 10 of them all in a row. Everything's connected. It just needs a shaft for power. So let's turn it on and see how it goes. It's going to be going full speed, so this is going to be pretty quick, but there we go. It should start backing up as the crafters, well, are pretty slow. It'll take a while for the sides to fill up because the hoppers are going to have to fill up first, but we should... Oh, jeez, we've already got a problem. How has that happened? So, well, something... Yeah, I guess that crafter's not working properly. Okay, let's, let's stop the system. Stop. Oh, uh, we got a problem with a crafter along here somewhere. That one's got diorite in it, so that's good. So we're going to need to just get rid of these shoots for a second and investigate. Ah, yes, that craft is pointing in completely the wrong direction. That'll be why. Okay, shoots back on. One there. And then one over here as well. And let's start the system again. And let's see if we have any more issues like that. We shouldn't do. It should all go quite nicely. And we are producing. We're producing a whole bunch of dough. All right, let's see how fast it's coming through. Yeah, that's a bit more reasonable. That's kind of what I wanted to see. And now all of the belts have filled up, which means this thing should be running at full capacity. Let's check it out. Oh, yes, that's going up nice and quickly. I'm going to time it and see exactly how fast. And the results are in. Running this for one minute gave us 850 pieces of diorite, and that works out as 51,000 an hour. That's crazy. Man, we're going to have more copper than a person that's got slightly less copper than me. This is going to be good. So next, we're going to need to make andesite. And for that, we need to use some of this diorite in order to do that. And I don't want to use it all because we also need the diorite. Don't forget to make the tough. So we need to split it into two. And that should be pretty easy because we've got 10 of these things. So what I'm going to do is just disconnect the storage drawers there. That means these five are going to go into our main storage. And those five are going to go to a little storage system that's just going to feed our andesite farm. However, that means we've now disconnected these. So I need to think about that. What we'll do is instead of having this trim connect into the front section, we'll have it connect into the back section. Trim along here instead, please. So now the back section is feeding into the storage system and the front section isn't going anywhere. So what we actually need here then is another storage controller and then we can have a gap and then we're going to have our next row here, which is going to be our andesite engine thing but then if we're only using half of the diorite that we're making then we can only have an andesite engine that's half as big as this one because otherwise it's not going to have enough diorite to run it so we only need the back section for this and the andesite engine's going to be different because it only requires two crafters for each one so i don't need all of this up here but we do need to be able to get cobble in here as well so i am going to have to connect these storage drawers here too without making them touch each other oh geez this is going to be interesting 
So a few moments later and we've managed to amass over 16,000 diorite in here and in our other little system which is our andesite engine we should have a whole bunch in a little storage drawer just at the back here as well. We've got another 2,000 there. So that means that this thing just needs power and this is a right little ditty thing compared to that one. I've squeezed all of the mechanical crafters in a line next to each other. They're coming into these storage drawers which then connect all sort of squirrely underneath here to these ones and these ones connect also sort of squirrely under here to those ones at the back so they're not connected and we can prove they're not connected because when I look at this it only shows the diorite that's in there and I know I say diorite I can't help it it's habit I know it's diorite I know it's not my fault anyway this should be ready to go nothing's actually come out of these yet though which I'm a little bit concerned about but if I connect that shaft there hopefully there we go it starts to come out and hopefully the crafters are going to start crafting the cobblestone's not going in Though it's because we're full over here. I guess I should give that a little bit more space for some more andesite then. So we can see this thing in action. And there we go. We're now producing andesite on a similar scale to what we were producing diorite. And what I want to do is measure how much of it we're getting. Which means I need to disconnect this storage system so it's not being interfered with from the outside. Have a look at this and run a minute test. The results for the andesite machine are in, and it's more than I expected, actually. I expected it to be exactly half of this one, because we're using exactly half of it. But it actually generated 580 andesite in one minute, which is the equivalent of 34,800 an hour, which is not bad at all. So now we can take the diorite and the andesite, use a little bit of lava, and turn that into crushing tough. We're turning it into tough. So compacting one andesite and one diorite with a bit of lava gives us two tough. And that means we need to think about how many of those little prezzy basin -y things that we need. Because that all comes down to how fast we're producing our andesite. There's absolutely no point in having more of the basin -y prezzy things than we can handle. And of course we're going to need enough to keep up. So I've got some fiddling around to do. So I'm going to do some fiddling around. So each one of our basins is going to need lava in it. So first of all, let's just run a lava pipe along the floor here, and then we'll put the basins on top of that like this, all next to each other to save as much space as possible. And that's 10 of those in a line. Then what we can do is actually have these item drains on one side like this, and item drains on the other side like that, and that's how we could get our items in there. But if we did that, then there's nowhere to get our items out of. So we actually need three sides on each one of these open, or we could use mechanical arms, but mechanical arms are pretty slow when they're picking up from multiple sources. So in order to keep these going fast, we'd need a bunch of them, like one for each ingredient. And that might not be a bad thing, since they were so rich from our create factory. So something like this could work, where we'd have two items coming out for each of the basins, and one funnel going in for each of the basins, then we'd just need a mechanical arm to pick up from there and there, put it in there, and then we could plonk that on there, and then we'd just have mechanical arms for each... Oh, for each one of these things. That might work, but it does look a bit of a mess and it's not ever so tidy. Both of those things mean the same thing. What if we did something like this instead? We don't need half of the draw controller things on this one. We're just using belts instead and we just have a bunch of mechanical arms that take from their point on the belt in front of the basin, deposit into the basin like that, the items will come out of here and they go into there basically on a loop. They're coming out of the system, then going straight back into the system. And then we've got a little conveyor at the bottom that would take all of the finished items out. I think that could work, but I'm not sure we're going to need 10 of them because I've really no idea how fast this is going to be. So I guess there's only one way to find out, and that's to get it all plugged in and turned on, I suppose. Well, I think I'm just about ready. What we've got here is that system that I just said that I was going to build conveniently. We've got all 10 of the basins down here we've got all 10 of the mechanical arms there i've dropped it all down into the floor a bit we've actually got lava in these already coming over from a pump but this is only running off one pump and i don't know if that means the lava's not going to get over here quick enough but it might do we've also got everything else ready and powered the mechanical arms are each going to take off their section of the belt and I'm a little bit concerned that this one's not going to have time to grab anything because it's going to go into these funnels too quick. And I'm a little bit concerned that this one won't be able to grab anything because it's where the funnels are. But we'll find out in a second. All I gotta do is stick a shaft in there and we should start going. The mechanical arms are already going crazy, that's good. The items are not getting much further down though, which is slightly concerning. And the presses don't seem to be doing anything at all. 
Why the press is not going? Well, oh, that one's going. Well, that was weird. Do they need a whole bunch? Oh, because they're only getting one type of item in because those arms are stupid. Yeah, that, these all need to be on forced round robin. Otherwise, this is not going to work at all. And there's the last one on forced round robin. And yeah, the, the items are not coming out of here anywhere near quick enough, which could be a problem. So I guess instead of having one at a time come out, we'll have 16 at a time come out. No, we will have 10 because there's 10 basins. That makes more sense. And now they should all be able to get stuff. This arm trying its best, but it's just not fast enough. That one's not doing anything at all, but this one is. And now we should be creating a whole... Wow, we're actually creating more tough than the system can deal with. But these last three are not doing anything. And that means we're probably generating more tough than we are doing obsidi obsidian? Obsidian? Diorite and andesite. So yeah, I don't think we need half the amount of this going on here. So I'm just going to get rid of five of them for now. And see how we get on with that. That's still a crazy amount of tough coming through. Oh, this one's not doing anything either. Okay, right, we don't need that one then. We now are down to four basins that are still producing an absolutely ridiculous amount of tough, but we need to know exactly how much because we don't want it to be more than the andesite coming through. So I guess we need to go and do a timer. Well, it turns out it's way too fast. In one minute, we made 970 tough, which in an hour is the equivalent of 58,200, which, which is faster than our diorite machine. It's faster than our andesite machine, which means we need to slow this right down by at least half. So let's just get rid of two of those. Why is it stopped now? Is it, is it full again? No. Why is it stopped? We've got... Oh, uh, we've run out of cobble? No, we're not using cobble. We've run out of lava. Oh, we chewed through all of the lava. Right. Has my lava truck given up? Where is my lava truck? Oh, they've got themselves all sorts of confused over here. Yeah, that'd be why we've got no lava then. Right. You absolute morons. How have you managed this? I guess I need to make a couple of these these brassy ones to stop them doing stuff they shouldn't be doing and, uh, and I'm just going to do it on all of them and see if that helps because I really don't know what I'm doing. Right, now you, lava bogey, you're going to have to come back over here out of the way, I think. Let's just chuck you, I guess, down here. Now the other one can go in. Okay. Maybe you're on the wrong side of the road, are you? There we go. Excellent. Good. Problem solved. Oh no, that one's going in reverse. Oh gee, where are you going now? Now you're going to be facing in the wrong direction. It's all well and good being here, mate, but if you're facing the wrong way, you're not going to do any good. Let's just spin you around, buddy. Oh, I broke the track. Oh, this isn't going well at all. There we go. Right, okay, those things shouldn't have a problem anymore, so we should start getting lava over there soon, and that means the system should be working. So I guess I've got a couple of minutes to wait. And while I was waiting, I decided to compact the entire thing and move it over here in front of the andesite machine so that we've got plenty of space over here, and now everything should be in place. We've still got, lo we've still got no lava in there for some reason, but we've got loads of lava over here. So I can only assume my pump's not working, but I have attached a pump. But other than that, everything should be ready to go. Ah, and we've got no lava in there because I haven't connected the power. That makes sense. Right, uh, yep, that's all good. But we have no power to this belt because I'm a moron. Jeez. Just a little bit more jiggery-pokery here. But my... Oh, jeez. My thing's in... Oh, no. Okay, we'll move the pipe a bit. Right, pipe, you've got to come directly down underneath that bit, please. And that means all I need to do is extend that chain drive down there, which is now going backwards. And we'll put the other type of gearbox just there, and now that should be going in the right direction. So if I extend that belt, there we go. And look at the speed of this thing. And the arms are taking 16 at a time, so they'll never, ever stop. Those things will always have absolutely plenty, and they're just going to keep going and going and going. Finally, we got somewhere, but I need to time it again. Jeez and walk into things, apparently. It's time to do a timer. And this time we got 480 in one minute, which is the equivalent of 28,800 per hour, which I think is better suited for our entire system. That's still a whole bunch of tough that's gonna come through, and that means that we can start actually reconnecting all of this to our main system, get some cobble and some quartz back in here so we can actually keep up. One little connector there, thank you very much. Can I have some more cobble and quartz, please, system? Oh, it's trying to come in, but we're using it faster than it's coming in. That's fine, good. Full lava. 
full lava lorry, all of the systems we need in place, which takes us all the way up to this point here where we need to start crushing that tough. And after that, it's pretty easy because these are just compacting drawers. Then it's just a case of having a few deployers. We're nearly there. But how many crushing wheels are we going to need to crush this much tough? And I'm going to guess one. And it makes sense to have these crushing wheels just about here because they really don't take up too much room at all. We just need a belt across there, one of those gearboxes there, one of those gearboxes there, one of them there and one of them there and that's pretty much it. So what are you doing now then if that's it? Well, I'm making a mess of it all for a start just so that I can put me... Um me trim in mate and there we go we're already off to the races we've got a little storage funnel in there which is taking that tough and it's grinding it down although it doesn't seem to be doing anything at all right now it should have been doing they're all going in the right direction but i'm not seeing anything going there ah yes we're accumulating copper very 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 slowly which is what's to be expected i guess so it is working we just can't visually see it but i don't want to use all the tough See, I would like to have some tough left over for the other things, and in order to stop this using absolutely everything we're making, I'm going to get the old redstone links out. So we're going to have one on there in receive mode. We're going to come behind here, and we're going to get to the tough drawer, which is that one just there, and we're going to put one of those on there. We're going to put one of those on there. And because I'm really good at thinking of these things, we're going to have tough tough. And over here, we're also going to have tough tough which is quite a fun thing to say. So now that's only going to allow tough out of there if we've got plenty in there, but it won't because it needs inverting. So if we switch that over, now it's only going to allow tough out of there if we've got plenty in there, and this will consider a whole bunch plenty. So maybe we can turn these things down a bit. Let's say if we've got more than 10%, then we'll allow it through. Now, I'm not sure of the exact capacity of these drawers. With one storage upgrade in there, it says it increases it by 32 times the base value. And the base value is 2,048. And 2,048 times 32 is 65,000. It says we're at 8,400, and we are currently at about whatever that is. Less between about 15%. Oh, so, yeah, it's going to be about 60 odd thousand. Jeez. Right, okay, good. Well, anyway, once this gets above 20% of however many are in there, it will then move to this lane, which means it will then start producing copper. And then when it gets below 10%, it will then go to this lane and it'll stop producing copper. So as soon as we've amassed a good amount of tough, we will be in the copper business. So we've just got to wait for this thing to build up. And while that's building up, I might as well get on with our copper processing side of things. As we've done now everything all the way up to this one here. We've got our copper blocks in our little copper block machine. We've got a whole one of them so far, so I just need to do a bit of pokey on them. A bit of pokey on them? Yeah, a bit of pokey on them. That's all we need is a bit of pokey. So let's assume for a second we're going to get copper blocks coming out of there. They can go onto a conveyor here and they're going to get poked once with a poker. Otherwise known as a deployer in the technical circles, but I like calling it a poker. And that's going to have nuggets of XP. And because we want to keep a stock of each type of one of those things, we don't just then want to put XP onto all of those and then create those and then all of those and create those. We need to split this up a little bit, so we're going to use tunnels. So at this point here, we're going to have a tunnel. We're going to have another belt coming alongside this one here. And then what will happen is the half of the stuff is going to go through back into the system and the other half of the stuff is going to get poked with another poker. And then we just need to continue this down a little bit all the way till this point here and that's going to take in our oxidized ones so copper comes out then we're going to get the exposed copper going into there then we're going to get the weathered copper going into there and then we're going to get the oxidized copper going into there and this system should keep a stock of everything except for the main copper block or should i say the just normal copper block and we could do the threshold switch thing here to stop loads and loads of them coming out and that makes sense I think that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's grab a threshold switch, stick it on the back of the copper one, get one of those on there, grab a bit of copper, our only one, and stick it on there. Come all the way over here and grab another one of those redstone links and stick that on there, put it in receive mode, and then stick that copper on there. Now we just need a handful of funnels. This one's going to have copper coming out, obviously, and we only need to do one at once because the deployers can only handle one at once. These need to be on forced split, so they'll send two out either way. Then we'll have just normal funnels on all of these, and these need to be on forced split as well. And there we go, that's that sorted. So all we need over at this point now is a little bit of power and some shiny brass casing to make all of this belt just look a whole bunch nicer. 
And once again, we're ready for action. All we need is a little bit more shaft on there to connect that. And this system is now ready to go. But it's not going to do anything because we haven't got enough copper in the system to actually run it. So I'm going to cheat a little bit by using some of my personal supply that I keep in my backpack and filling up the system with that. And now it should have enough to actually kick in and do something. And here we go. The copper's coming through. That's gone in there and not gone anywhere. That's gone in there and not gone anywhere. And oh, I haven't connected these storage drawers. I seem to have figured out what the problem is in my expert level 99 way. All right, that can go in there and that will allow that to go through, hopefully. No? Yep, there we go. Then we just need to bring that along there and that should allow that to go in eventually. There we go. And then we just need to bring this one around here like this and that should allow that weathered cover to go in there. Amazing. And I keep saying coffer instead of copper for some reason. That's just how my mouth works. There we go. Look at that copper being processed in the processing machine, doing all the things it needs to be done, giving us all the juicy good stuff going on in here. And for... what? But did, I've still seen stuff going in here at this point, so... Why weren't they over here? I guess I'll chuck in another bunch of copper and hopefully it'll work this time. Let's actually see if we get some weathered copper through. Oh, this one's not poking it. Did I mess my recipe? Oh, I messed my recipe up. That should be, um, yeah, that should be weathered copper. The recipe should now be fixed. So if I chuck some of this down here, there we go. That should actually be creating us the right stuff now. Is that going into here? Yes, excellent, good, right. Okay, in that case, I'm gonna chuck half a stack on there and get all of that process. Look at it go. Many, many, many oxidized copper. Going into the system, ready to have a lovely factory wrapped all around it using all of this amazing copper that I've made. No, I've hardly got any copper. Hmm, gonna need more copper. And the other thing is, I want more of that than I do of these. We hardly need any of those, but the way this goes, we're gonna get a bunch of those, half as much of those, and then half as much of those as those. So we're gonna have the fewest of those, which is not ideal. So the other way we could do that is with more of these threshold switches, and then just letting a certain amount of those out. But, meh, we'll leave it for now and see how we get on. So I thought I'd leave it running for a few minutes and see how we got on. But as you can see behind me, something very strange has happened. My power station has disconnected itself from all of the shafts, which means nothing is running now and I'm accumulating absolutely no copper. We've got three blocks. But why has this happened? How has this happened? What could possibly go on to make that happen? It's ridiculous. And speaking of power, we're hardly using any stress considering we've got all of these contraptions going on. And I've also been thinking while I was taking that little bit of time, I don't think I want any of these types of copper. We might as well just have this one because then we can just use an axe to put it back to the other stage if we want to anyway. But what would be nice would be to have honeycomb. But I don't have a bee farm and it's far too late in the video to be making one of those. So what I think I'm going to do with this little setup here is instead of having it how it is, is smash it all to bits. And then we can just have three deployers in a row like that, all with these smart shoots on top, all with those on there, which are now going to get all sorts of stuff in there they're not supposed to have. Can I have those a second, please, so I can put the right filters on? Thank you. And then all we need is a funnel on there and I don't need any of this other stuff at all. And that's just going to turn all of the copper that we're not holding back with that threshold switch into weathered copper and I think that's going to be much better or at least it would be if these things hadn't picked up a oh geez look at all this copper stop it so now that's a whole bunch smaller what I'm going to do is just chuck all of this copper on here and hopefully this will all get processed and turned into the good stuff why oh no 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 it's not going to work I need to spin those round oh no I'm making a mess those need spinning round and we need the power from the end geez all right, let's try that again, shall we? All of that, all of that, and all of that on there. Poke it, poke it, poke it, poke it. So it's doing that on the weathered copper, but when it gets to that oxidized stuff, two of these should start going with a bit of luck. And then it should all turn out to be the right stuff. There we go. We've got two of them on the go. This is good. So we're getting all weathered copper now, which means we don't actually need these two storage drawers at all, but I might as well keep them just for the sake of keeping them. And now we've got, wow, an absolute ton of oxidized copper, but we've still only got seven blocks of copper because 128 of that came from my own personal... Oh, jeez. Right, power station, no more break-in. Time to build a factory. So a very quick cut for several hours worth of work. I've been working on this for a while and I've tried all sorts of different designs and things and shapes and 
well, basically I spent ages on it trying to get something out of this. I wanted to have this sort of vibe for our liquid storage building that we've got over here, sort of very modern factory-ish, but I also wanted to keep with the sort of colors of copper with the reds and the dark bits, like the copper casing we've got around here. And I think it almost works. It's not too bad, it's okay. You can tell it's an industrial building. We've got a little bit there for lorries to turn up to, although that doesn't work, that's not where they go. We've got our front door over here and round the sides. Not much has changed really, other than the building. I have extended this around here because I could get rid of a whole bunch of that foundation that we weren't using, so I've been able to minimize the space that we've used. And I'm actually relatively happy with it. We've got some more doors over here which lead to inside, and inside not a great deal has changed at all. We've got some walls around our storage drawers here and a little ladder onto that little mezzanine there. And that's about it, other than a few lights dotted around. And the reason for that is I was going to put a second floor in here, but because I've actually added in this second crushing station here for the tough, because we were generating more tough than copper and we weren't generating enough copper, I don't think it'd squeeze in ever so well, because it would need to go at this level here below the glass, and I just think it'd look all kind of weird in here, and I kind of like this openness of this factory. It almost feels sort of like airplane hangar manufacturing type size scale thing we've got these skylights so we can get daylight in here which is why it's not too dark and otherwise i think i've done a pretty reasonable job but the big question is how much copper have we got after all of that time 98 blocks plus so still that hasn't changed okay so um it's not the fastest copper farm in the world but when you're dealing with a 10 percent chance of one nugget from one piece of tough, you know, it's it's going to be pretty slow going. But as I mentioned in previous videos, this server stays on permanently. So in the background, while I'm not here, this will be ticking up slowly and surely we'll have a whole bunch of copper. Unless the power station decides to delete itself again, which is actually done three times while I was building this building. First of all, we had the similar sort of thing again, where just a couple of shafts disappeared. Then I had a whole bunch of these disappear, and then I even had the chain drive disappear. So what I've done is I've just attached these ones, and it's been fine ever since. But for some reason, when I plug them all in, it just disappears. And I was lit. I was standing here. I was actually recording a video of these going up because I was going to have a little time lapse of the numbers going up, and it was worth. Working. all the numbers were going up i turned around and then all of a sudden that was missing and all of this was overstressed so i haven't logged out the server's not closed down i haven't gone out the area i haven't unloaded any chunks i was just facing in a different direction but what i think it might be i think it might be lag i think we've finally built so many things in this area in this world that the server's struggling to keep on top of it all and i'm not surprised because i've done an awful lot of work in this world I've made an awful lot of things, we've made a lot of vehicles, we've made a lot of factories, we've made a big old storage system. There really isn't much I haven't done, except for one thing. A diamond factory! I don't actually need one. In my backpack I've already got over 60 blocks of diamonds, and it's ridiculously easy on this create mod pack to just go mining with my huge mining madri madrill drill and get loads more. But a few episodes ago, I asked you guys what you wanted to see me build in this world, and an overwhelming number of you said you wanted to see me build a diamond factory. So I ended up fiddling with my own mod in order to create a process that's so convoluted and awkward that it makes diamonds in what I consider to be a fun way, and a realistically not too overpowered way too. Now, the reason I'm heading over here is because in the last episode, we built this copper factory that basically takes all of the cobble out of my system and all of the quartz out of my storage system and turns it into copper via means of turning it into diorite first, then andesite, then making tough, and then crushing that tough. And it's been working. It's been running for a couple of days. However, we still don't have all that much copper because we've completely run out of cobble. Last time I looked in my inventory, we had over 1 million cobblestone, and now we don't have any. We also had nearly 2 million nether quartz, and now we've got less than a million. So that now means I'm hardly producing any diorite. We've got a reasonable amount of andesite now, and we've got a reasonable amount of tuff. As I'm sure a whole bunch of you watching this will know, I've already got a couple of massive cobble generators in this world, so why have we got no cobble? I mean, in this factory alone, we've got this absolutely ginormous thing which has stopped running because it's got so much cobblestone in it nearly 90,000 so why can't we use this cobblestone we can i've just got to get this cobblestone out of here somewhere useful at the moment all this is being used for is to either turn it into quartz and gold up here 
which we could really do with the quartz, but this is not running anymore for some reason. And it's also getting turned into iron downstairs by means of being turned into gravel first. And this is not running for some reason. In fact, it all says it's overstressed. And that's because of a problem that I've had to deal with on this mod pack for the last few, well, months, I guess, since I updated all of the mods a while ago. We've had all these problems where things like this, they just don't pull in water anymore. And that just, well, stops everything from going. And because this is a self-powered boiler, even when I fix the water issue, it doesn't actually start up again. So I'm gonna have to do this one manually. And after a little bit of fiddling about later, we've now got a big old water wheel powering the pumps in here, which is, oh geez. Um, hmm, oh. Uh, there, there appears to be more than one problem in here. Pardon? Where's, what? Why is that all just going on the floor? Oh, well, I might as well collect all of this cobblestone and all of this cobblestone, which is now just... Oh, all my belts are... Oh, speed. It, it, uh, it's going the wrong way, apparently. Suddenly, all of a sudden, this is all going backwards. Let's uh, let's have it going the right way, shall we? There we go. Put a gearbox in there. That should get everything spinning around the right way now. And fixing all of this up, I have discovered that there's a belt in my hands now. So somewhere along here, we should have had a belt which attaches to things. Now we... Oh, I see. There's power over there. Yeah, I... Th I th oh, that's how we're getting the cobble. Yeah, okay. Right. So we need a belt on here i get why have we got two bits of shaft there i'm very confused right now but i guess that we need that bit of shaft there and a belt on there but that looks like it's going the wrong way let's check all of the belts in here these should all be speed controls so they should be going the right way they are that's good is this all going the right way or is it going the wrong way that's all going the right way so we're now producing gravel again so that's good okay then in what in that case all we need to do is get rid of that gearbox put that there and that should get that belt going the right way yes it is doing good so i can put that funnel back up there that can fill into those and all of those items should be able to go down along here and into the storage system at least i think oh no these are going into the andesite system so that cobble's not going anywhere particularly useful other than getting turned into andesite but at least now the quartz has now kicked in so we're generating golden quartz again so that's good and that should also mean that the iron system downstairs has kicked in so let's go and check that out yes this is all working now as well so now that we're generating vast quantities of cobblestone again how am i going to get them out of here and over to where we need them well we just need them moving to our main storage system and our main storage system is connected to the storage building in this area over here through a quantum link so all i should need to do is get that cobblestone into here somehow and it looks like we've already got a whole bunch of it in here but it is going down again and all of this is connected underground to all of the other farms via means of many, many conveyors. And as you can see, we're already getting the quartz and the andesites and the clay and the gold coming through this way. So we just need to get cobble onto that belt as well, I guess. Currently, our iron, quartz, gold, flint and clay all come down through these storage drawers and onto this belt here, which goes back to the storage system. So all I've got to do is get another few belts and things linked up to that from our cobblestone thing here. And in fact, instead of having chutes and conveyors, what we're going to do is just use our storage drawer system like we normally do. So what we're going to have here is a controller there, one of those there. That will get the cobble into that. We've just got to connect that to those other storage drawers now. Let's bring it across here like this a little bit. And then we should start getting cobble going into there as well and onto that. There we go. Wow, look at that. Loads of cobble. But we don't want to drain all of the cobble out of the system to go into there because then we'll have no cobble, which won't be ideal. So what we're going to do is stick another threshold switch on here with a redstone link on it. And we're going to say if there's more than 90% of this filled with cobblestone, then send a signal through that. And then what we'll do is we'll receive that signal over here. And this won't let anything through that chute unless there's more than 90% of it in there. But we do need to invert this signal. There we go. So that's not letting anything out of there now until this is full. Which brings us back to the copper factory, which should now have cobblestone in it and should be able to start producing all of those things again. And I got some comments about these crafters. Apparently, if I have them all facing down on the top row and then across on the bottom row, well, that should mean they work a whole lot better. So let's find out. Let's remove that. It's exactly the same, I think. I don't think it makes any difference. So it's going down, across, and craft. Whereas how I had it before, 
it goes across and down and craft. So we're all kicked back into gear again. We should start producing some more copper over here and diorite. So with the copper factory now sorted, we can go and concentrate on this diamond factory. And of course, we're building that at completely the opposite end of this area behind the library near the netherite factory, near the create factory at the end of this road here on that platform that I haven't built yet. So I've got a little bit of terraforming to do and a little bit of block blazing. So not too long later, we've now got a big old platform for a big old factory. We've got a yard, we've even got a lava system here, and I've already got the lorry coming in to deliver the lava to this system, which means we've got nearly a full tank of it. Now, I might need the biodiesel over here as well at some point, but I'm hoping we can get away with blaze cakes, which we've got 89,000 of, and we're producing even more of those over at the snowy area when I turn that on. So that leads to how we're actually going to create diamonds, and for that I've created this amazing factory diagram and it's quite a complicated procedure all starting with cobblestone so we're going to take the cobble crush it down into gravel we're going to take half of that gravel we're going to crush it down into sand wash it into clay balls compact them into clay blocks turn those into terracotta turn that into red sand and get dead bushes which is going to create thatch we're gonna, then going to age some of that thatch with some XP nuggets into aged thatch then we're going to age it even more into old thatch using XP nuggets and then we need mud which we're going to get from creating dirt. We're going to need a dirt factory in this factory. And the way you get dirt is basically by making coarse dirt and hoeing it, and you actually get more dirt back from the dirt you put in. So basically, we're going to take some of that gravel, crush it down, combine it with some dirt we've already got, turn that into coarse dirt, and then process that back into dirt with a hoe, and then go back round to the gravel. And we're going to continue that little circuit there, slowly but surely filling us up with dirt. And once we've got plenty of dirt, we can then wash that with a bit of water into some mud, and then we can combine that with our old thatch into mulch. So mulch is basically just bits of sticks and mud and stuff stuck together. The kind of stuff that many, 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 many millions of years ago could sort of maybe a bit have been used to create coal. Although coal was technically made from wood, so we're going to ignore that completely and carry on. The mulch is then going to be turned into compressed mulch. That's going to then be turned into aged compressed mulch with some more XP. And then we're going to put some lava on that to turn it into one piece of coal, which we then need nine of to turn into a coal block. That coal block then going to be superheated with either diesel or blaze cakes into a hot coal block and then that's going to be compressed down into coal blocks using lava and presses and then we're going to convert that into rough diamonds which then with a bit of sandpaper will turn it into diamonds so yeah a big old complicated thing that we've got to build that includes various farms including dirt farms sand farms gravel farms terracotta geez we've got a lot to squeeze in this area which is why i've built such a big platform and we're probably going to need multiple floors obviously we're going to start at the bottom with as many processes we can fit in there and work our way upwards and we're going to start with cobblestone generation and probably the mud farm so starting with cobblestone there's a few ways that we can create it we can have a static system with drills with lava and water near it which generates cobble and then breaks it we can have one on a contraption like we saw earlier in hill valley or we can even use a mixing bowl with lava and water in there to create cobblestone and we've got one of those mixing bowl setups over here in the netherite factory and it's the least laggy of all of the systems but it does use a whole lot of lava which means we're going to go through our lava very quickly but as you can see this process just stirs the lava and the water together and generates cobblestone and considering my my little lava truck doesn't come down here very often filling up that lava tank it's probably not going to be the best system for doing that so i think that leaves us with either a stationary system or a moving system on a contraption that takes me to my test world and here we are just like that so these two systems here don't require any more lava than the stuff that you already put in there this one is just a mechanical drill version it's got a chute underneath putting all of the cobble into that barrel and this is only of course one cobblestone generator which is relatively slow and does require a bit of power whereas this one on this contraption requires no power at all and is a little bit faster generating us a whole bunch more 
but that's because we've got four cobblestone generators instead of just one. So now this one has four generators on it and it is substantially quicker than that one and that's because these drills are on max speed whereas that one, although it requires no power, the drills run a lot more slowly because it's on a contraption. But power's cheap in Create. But what I'd really like to know is can we scale this one vertically because horizontal space is going to be expensive for us in this build. And in terms of expanding vertically, there's no reason on this one why we couldn't have drills just fixed in place instead of a contraption breaking those. The only problem there is actually collecting the items. You see, we don't want the items ending up being burnt in the lava or floating up the water to the top. And with Create on its own, that could be a bit of a problem. But fortunately for us, we've got a whole bunch of other mods we can play with that'll help us out with this. And one of those is the sophisticated backpacks. If we put a magnet upgrade in that, you'll see it'll just suck out all of the cobblestone from that range without us having to do anything at all and then we can just put a chute underneath that and we could then put all of that cobble directly into a barrel or something like that meaning that we can just build this vertically upwards as tall as we wanted or at least within range of this backpack but what is the range let's find out so the range on this is one two three four five blocks by the looks of things it'll pick up from there but it won't pick up from there so we could only really do this five blocks tall from the backpack but if the backpack was let's say in the middle of all of this then we could go five blocks below or five blocks above so i think something like this is going to be our best way forward So there we go. Now we've got a double system for generating cobblestone with a backpack in the middle that's linked to this new set of storage drawers with cobblestone in it. So if I put this chain drive in here, that should all start to activate and we should start getting a whole bunch of cobblestone being generated in there. And that's going nice and quickly and hopefully all of it's going into this backpack. Let's just check that out. Nothing at all in there, but oh, there we go. Look, it's going immediately into there and that's generating a whole bunch of cobblestone nice and quickly. But how fast? And the answer is flies. C clear off. Why is there always flies? The answer is 48,600 an hour. That's a good amount of cobblestone to be getting. Now, are we getting any leftover in the backpack? We're not. Good. That's not backing up. And is there any kicking about on the floor anywhere? Oh, the, oh no, there are other items that I've dropped in there. But it doesn't look like we're getting cobble in there. So it looks like it's all working rather nicely. So we've done one thing of our incredible big plan thing that we've got to do. Now I need to get that cobble, crush it into gravel, and then split that in two different directions. How hard could it be? What could possibly go wrong? One cobblestone crusher, two cobblestone crushers. And what's nice about this is this one goes that way and that one goes that way. And it's very compact and tidy. It just needs a bit of power. Then we'll throw a little bit of chain drive in there. Sneak this one down that way a little bit and hopefully they're going in the right direction, but it's very difficult to tell. Uh, it is. We've got gravel. Excellent. Oh, well, that was easy. Jeez. There we go, mini, mini gravel going in, which means we're not going to have many, many cobblestone. In fact, it looks like we're going to using more cobblestone than we're making, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but um, that could... Hmm, might as well have them going at a similar speed. If we're generating 20 cobblestone at once, maybe if we just set that one to 10, and then we set this one to 10, and then we've got 10 on each one, Will that keep up now? So if that number goes up or stays about the same, then we're winning. And it looks like it's staying about the same, so that's good for me. In fact, it's going up slightly, which is also a good thing. Excellent, we've got those matched. Good. So dirt farm and then sand, clay, terracotta. Oh, I think we'll do the dead bushes first because that should be nice and easy. And here's a little system to visualize what we're going to be doing here. We're basically taking the gravel, crushing it into sand, washing it into clay, compacting it into clay blocks, blasting it into terracotta, crushing it into red sand and washing that into dead bushes. And we'll get a bit of flint and gold from this as well. And I'm just going to set that up back here and I've built loads of these before. So if you want to see the build process of this, then I guess you go back to my earlier videos on this series and check those out. So this little crushing system here I've just extended from that one to keep things nice and compact and that's just going to take the gravel and turn it into sand and we'll get some clay and maybe even flint I think from that so let's just plug that in and find out 
And over at my storage drawers, we've got a new few new slots for things. And as you can see, the sand's going in there nice and quickly. And yes, we're getting flint from that as well. And clay. Good. OK, next process. So this little system here should take sand from there and wash it into clay balls. We've got some fans at the back here, which are going to be powered by this. And that's basically all it needs. Although this system so far, I don't have any power to that belt. So let's just stick another shaft in there, get rid of that shaft, put some chain drive there and then finish that off there. And I'm getting sucked into it. It's going the wrong way round. But apart from the fact that it's going the wrong way round, everything, I shouldn't be getting sucked into that at all. Well, let's fix the direction. And we'll do that by sticking a gearbox in there, which is now going to... It shouldn't be pushing me. This copycat pack, maybe they need... Uh, maybe they need covers in to stop it from pushing me. Yeah, that's better. OK, fair enough. But now we need power to the belt. So I guess we'll just get rid of that one there and then stick those there. And there we go. Now we're getting sand washed into clay as well. Excellent. And this system's just about in place now. We've got our clay blocks on there. We've got the terracotta on there. We've got the fans blowing in the right direction. We just need a gearbox in here. That should make the belt go the right way round. It is. Now we've got clay on there, and that should hopefully get turned into terracotta. Oh, this is good. Are we going to get any in there? There we go. Two stacks of it already. Nice. And just moving our little blaster across a few blocks to make ourselves a bit of space in here, we've now got the crushing system that's crushing the terracotta down into the red sand. So we should now be getting some red sand over here as well, which we are. Excellent. So now just dead bushes. And that's just washing the red sand, and we're going to get gold too. And with this final washing machine here, our dead bush processing plant is complete, and it's not too big. All of that just for dead bushes at the moment, and all this is doing is it's taking that red sand and we've got a filter on there saying not red sand so when that washes down we'll get golden dead bushes but there's only a five percent chance to get a dead bush from washing red sand which means it's going to take around about 20 pieces of red sand in order to get one dead bush so this isn't going to be the most fastest system in the world but wow we're already getting a bunch we've already got 44 of them and we're getting a whole bunch of gold as well so all of this is working nicely we've hardly got any gravel left we've got loads of cobble so we can speed that up a bit if we need to we've got loads of sand and uh, yeah that's all going into this so that's basically this entire bottom section of this done already that'll take us to thatch which we're not ready for yet because next we need a dirt farm well, technically, we need a mud farm, but in order to do that, we need to make a dirt farm. And we need to consider numbers, because there's no point having a dirt farm that makes way more dirt than we can use. And considering how slowly we're getting these dead bushes through, we don't need a very big dirt farm. Back in my test world, I think a little system like this might work, and this might look really complicated and like a bit of a mess, but we can tidy it up. Basically, what we've got here is gravel from an infinite supply in this creative crate, and that just reflects the gravel we're making from our cobblestone generator. We've got a handful of dirt to get us started off with, and we've got no coarse dirt at all. Over here, we've got a system that's going to craft coarse dirt from that handful of dirt we've already got in our infinite gravel supply. That just needs power. And then coming around here, we've got a deployer that's going to take coarse dirt, place it there. This plow's going to turn it into dirt. It's going to detect that it's been turned, push it across, and that drill's going to break it and put the dirt back in the system. And the reason this should work is that when you craft coarse dirt, it only costs you two pieces of dirt, but you get four pieces of coarse dirt. So when you turn those back into dirt, you've now got four pieces of dirt to make more coarse dirt. So you should end up being dirt rich. So the only way to find out is to power this mechanical crafter with a little bit of this power just here like this. That's going to start crafting us up some coarse dirt which should make its way back into the system. It isn't doing because it's all going into the deployer. Yeah, the deployer's getting some coarse dirt in there now. That's good. So now all we need is a little thing on there and you can see this in action. So the coarse dirt gets placed, it gets turned into dirt and farmland apparently, but that's fine. It gets broken and it goes in the system. So we should start accumulating more dirt than we're using just here. And there you go. You can see we've already got more than a stack in there now. Now, of course, the other way we could do this is with a deployer and a hoe. And that would probably be a much smaller system, but then we're going to have to keep replacing the hose because of the durability. So this is just infinitely renewable. And if we look at this now, we've got over 80 dirt in there. And with this last gearbox here, that should be everything done. We're now crafting coarse dirt. Thanks to this mechanical arm and this amazing crafter. And now we're deploying the coarse dirt we're breaking it and this backpack should be picking it up but apparently it's not oh and that's because we seem to be getting coarse dirt down here as well as dirt so i need to update the filter for that to allow it to pick up coarse dirt too 
But I don't really want coarse dirt there, so why is that happening? There we go. That's a better rhythm. So putting that on eight ticks seems to stabilize that a lot. I put a stack of dirt into the system and we've already got a whole bunch. Excellent. Dirt machine done. But we need mud, not dirt. And the problem is, if I then take all of that dirt to make mud, we're not going to craft any more. So I need to be very careful with the quantities here. I also need to be careful with the quantities of gravel and make sure that we're actually getting plenty in here and not just all of it being turned into sand. And one of the ways I've done that is to limit these crushing wheels to 10 at a time because we're processing 20 gravel at a time from our cobblestone making machines. So while they're only processing 10, We've got 10 more that can go through this. So hopefully with that, we shouldn't... Yeah, we are using all of the gravel. And this machine's got plenty of it by the looks of things. It doesn't look like it's ever run out of gravel. So that's good. So mud then. Well, we've already got a little mud making machine way over the other side of our platformy area, right over at the liquid storage building. Oh, geez, it's not even rendered in. It's so far away, right over there in that corner. And that's where I've been getting all the mud from in order to make these tarmac roads and areas around of our factories. So I do come in here relatively regularly, and it's just in here, and it's just past these little tables, which I used to actually turn the mud into the rough mud for the, for the roads, and in here, here it is. I just dump a load of dirt in there, it adds water to it from this infinite water source, and it turns it into mud. And this is much bigger than I think it needs to be. So let's go make a smaller one. And here we are, a little mud machine. And it's not tiny, but it's not too massive. We've got our mixer above our bowl. We've got a little water source down there with the pump bringing it up. We've got dirt that's going to come out of here and the mud is going to go in there, which means we need a space for mud in our storage system. At the moment, I've got it set up so that it'll only actually send any dirt through if we've got enough in that drawer over there. So as you can see, nothing's coming through. And that's because we've mainly got coarse dirt rather than dirt. And that's because we're crafting our coarse dirt a whole bunch quicker than we're turning it back into dirt, which is not a bad thing to do. But I could really do with this coming through a little bit faster, but it's fine. Anyway, I'm just going to turn this down a little bit now just so that we can actually get it running. If it's more than there and less than there, and then that should kick in. And there we go. You can see the dirt coming through out of there. It's getting turned into mud inside of there, and it's coming out as mud there, which means we're now making mud. Excellent. Oh, good. That means we've now done the majority of what we needed to do on this factory diagram, which means we've literally just got this top line left. And that is thatch, XP, bit of coal, bit of diamond, maybe some blaze cakes. Easy. We've got so much space. I can't believe I've done all of that. All of that in this tiny little area here. Talk about compact. Jeez. Mate, I thought we was going to need like several layers of this factory. I don't, I don't think we're going to even use half of that. Maybe I could have made it bigger and even faster. But I don't, I don't want too many diamonds, mate. I wonder what to do with them. And just when you think everything's running swimmingly, there's always a problem. And you might not be able to spot it instantly because it's working at the moment. But if I go away from this stupid plow and just, un well, not even unload it because it's in force loaded chunks, but if I just step away from it for a minute and then head back over to it, it no, it's working again now. Well, it keeps forgetting that it's a plow and it keeps not tilling this dirt, which is a bit of a problem because without that, we got no mud. Without mud, we got no diamonds. So I need a new system. So the way I've resolved this silly little problem is to take away the contraption and add in a sticky mechanical piston with a plow on it and a drill underneath. And with a little bit of a clock going on there that's not too fast, otherwise this gearbox pops off because that makes sense. This system now plows, then drills it immediately, which means that when the deployer places it, it really doesn't have very long before it gets turned into dirt and then, well, broken, and then it all ends up in the system. What it does mean is this is a little bit far away from there now, not really optimizing our space very much, but it seems to be working. And in the whole time that this thing has been running, we've managed to amass a whole 446 dead bushes, which equates to about 49 blocks of thatch. And if we go back to our diagram over here, that's not very many coal. In fact, it's 49 pieces of coal, which is five and a half coal blocks, which means that's 
five and a half diamond. Yeah, so uh, it's been, been a couple of hours and we've generated effectively five diamonds worth, which doesn't seem quite right because we're generating way more cobble than anything else. So I think what we need to do is get these things sped up so we can burn through our cobble a bit faster. And I'm just going to allow as much cobble through on these as they can handle. And that should speed up the amount of gravel coming through. That should speed up the amount of sand coming through. And that should make it does have a few more dead bushes because we don't need cobble. We need dead bushes. So letting this thing run for a few minutes, as you can see, we're slowly chewing through that cobblestone. But we're now accumulating gravel, which means we're not turning it into sand fast enough, and we're not turning the sand into red sand and terracotta fast enough. And that means we need more crushing wheels for the sand, and we probably need a better washing machine system and a better blow-drying machine. Blasting machine, that's what I'm on about. But I've had enough fiddling about with factories for the minute because I've got a whole bunch of work to do that's not in this factory because we're very nearly at the end of this phase of the Let's Play. And that means all of these platforms that are floating around this area all need joining to the landscape and making look nice. And as you can see, there's an absolute ton of work to do doing that because this is very low compared to that. So that's going to take me a very long time. And what is also going to take me a very long time is getting everything else done. I need to sort this area out behind our netherite farm and make all of... Oh, we never used those blaze burners, did we? The blaze spawners. Oh, well, we'll come back to those. And yeah, all of this area around here where there's just grass is very flat, not very interesting. So I need to sort all of that out as well. And I want to sort out this area around the storage area, which is just flat and grassy. So I've got a bunch of work to do before we get to the end of the next video. And I think now's a good time to start. So I guess it's time to cue that music and start placing a lot of blocks. Oh, geez. <laughs> So after that little time lapse, I really do feel like I've managed to bring the entire area together a little bit more. I've blended the terrain from the horrible flat platform down as best as I can, throwing down a whole bunch of grass, bone meal and flowers to try and blend it in as best as I could and variating the sort of depth and shallowness of the terrains and trying to make it look a little bit more natural. At the back of the Inferno building, I extended that, added in a few dead bits and then blended the sort of muddy gravelly bit down into the grass and then we moved on to the emerald farm where I built a big old cliff wall because that just felt like the most appropriate way to blend that landscape. For the cliff wall I used a variation of stone and tuff and andesite and right at the bottom a little bit of cobblestone and then I finished all of that off with a whole bunch of leaves dripping down from the sides because that's an emerald farm and I felt it just didn't feel green enough and I'm actually really happy with that wall, how it's come out. Moving on from that all the way over to the other side of the area, I finally blended in the land between the storage system and the grass around that and then I went round just adding a whole bunch of bone meal to places, just adding a few tufts of grass, the odd flower here and there before going on to the railways, smoothing out the area around the liquid storage building. Finally, we built those cliffs before we even moved into this area and it's taken me all this time to smooth them out and throw a little bit of variation in the gravel in there and some grass as well and I extended that all the way around the liquid storage building making the train track feel a whole bunch nicer and more natural I added a little patch of dirt and a little pond as well which I threw in some seagrass and some lily pad variations a little bit of reeds moving on from that I decided why not make some custom trees so the main strip of our road going all the way from one side to the other has all of these trees 
They're exactly the same shape as each other, but I've used a variation of leaves using the trowel so that they were randomized. And I think that gives them sort of a, almost a little bit more natural feel. Some of the leaves are a little bit dark, some are a little bit bright, but I think it kind of works. Again, bone mealing around those just to make things feel a little bit more rough and not quite so perfect. And that moves us all the way down to the other end of the platform, near to our diamond building that we're building and just sorting out the roads over here. Again, a few more grass tufts to blend everything together. Going over to the emerald farm, I decided I wanted to just make sort of a muddy path through the field here, add in some sort of meadowy grass, a bunch of flowers, and the grass is a little bit taller in the middle of the fields and a bit shorter nearer the path and near the edges. And I think that kind of works. I really like that area. It reminds me of sort of a field in the countryside where you might walk your dog or, you know, go to an emerald farm and kill lots of pillagers like you do. So that's all of the things I have done, but what I haven't done still is the back of the hotel. That still leaves a whole lot to be desired. I'm still not 100% sure what to do there other than maybe just blend it in the terrain. And also the main grounds of the storage system. I've done absolutely nothing there. Again, I don't really know what I want to do with that. I kind of feel like I want something going on, but it's also a really sort of clean building with really straight edges. So just leaving the grass nice and flat might be the way to go so if you've got any ideas for that throw them in the comments and let me know so after those four and a half hours worth of terraforming we must have a whole bunch of like things over at our diamond farm now that's been producing so let's check it out what have we got we've got um, a lot of gold and we've got a lot of mud and we've got a handful of dead bushes. So this is going to be a very slow diamond farm. One other thing I have done is just to double up all of these things because we just weren't getting through the sand quick enough turning it into the terracotta and the red sand. So yeah, I've just doubled up all of these and added more of them into there. So we've got absolutely no cobblestone left at all now or gravel or sand or terracotta or red sand. It's all going into gold and a couple of dead bushes. But that's not the only thing I want to check out because right at the beginning of this video, we were fiddling with our copper farm and I really want to see how that's been getting on because, well, after we fixed the cobblestone generator at Hill Valley, I've still got no cobblestone in my inventory. So that copper farm must have been eating it all. Let's go find out. Have you eaten all my cobblestone? There's no cobblestone in here. We've got a whole lot of diorite now, though. We've got no andesite in here. What? It's eaten all of my andesite, too. I had loads of ant... Oh, jeez. We've got a lot of tough, though, and um, uh, we still... I don't think that's actually moved at all since this morning, maybe slightly. So where's all my cobblestone and my andesite going? Oh, I, I bet I know where it is. I bet the Create Factory is eating it all, turning it into brass. It has. We've finally got 2,048 brass now. That means everything in here is finally filled up to the max. But I still don't understand why we've got no cobble and no andesite. You can see the andesite's ticking up. So something's using it. But what? Diamonds again. In the last video, we built half of a diamond factory, which probably doesn't look like a diamond factory because all at the moment it's doing is creating mud and a handful of dead bushes. But those are gonna be incredibly useful towards our diamond making process. Let me explain with this factory diagram that we've pretty much completed most of apart from this top line here. All we gotta do is turn those dead bushes into some thatch, age those a couple of times, mix it with some mud in order to create mulch, and then do a couple of things with that in order to create coal, then compress it a bit, eat it up a bit, and turn it into rough diamonds, and then sand those down into diamonds. But there is a little bit of a problem, and that is that the cobblestone generator that we built in the last episode is probably not the fastest. I mean, it is a nice fast one, it's producing 20 cobblestone very, very quickly, but as you can see from our storage drawers, we've got absolutely no cobblestone, which means we're getting no gravel, which means we're getting no sand, which means we're getting no terracotta, which means we're getting no red sign, and that means we're hardly getting any dead bushes. And we're going to need a lot of dead bushes to make diamonds. So I think the first thing I want to do is double that up on the other side of the platform. Why not? Why not shove it over there, miles away from everything else? There we go, the new cobble generator is in place. We've got power to it, it's connected to the storage drawers. It just needs one more shaft to activate it and that should all kick into action now, hopefully. 
it has done, which means we're generating even more cobble. And as you can see from the storage drawers, that actually means we're occasionally getting some in there, which is getting turned into gravel very quickly, and then that's getting turned into sand and the rest of the stuff very quickly. But that should double up our dead bushes, and that's going to be very important next. So I've took a little time to lay out this factory diagram, which actually shows us all of the machines we're going to need to do this process. And we're first of all going to need to start off with a press to turn the dead bushes into thatch. So that should be nice and easy. And I think I'm going to dedicate this area to this part of the factory because that's the part of the factory we've got left. Oh geez. Right, let's start with the press then. So I've put this little setup together which is going to do exactly what we need. It's going to take dead bushes out of there nine at a time, put them into this base and they're going to get pressed into thatch blocks. And normally at this point I would just have everything going straight back into the storage drawers. But I think I want to continue this line so it's one full continuous system. So instead of doing that we're going to build the next bit which is aging the thatch. And we do that by deploying nuggets of XP onto them. And that's nice and easy. So instead of these item drains, we're going to have some belts here instead. And we don't need too much because we only need a couple of deployers. So let's just extend that belt that way. We're going to put one deployer there, another deployer there. And if we spin those round, that'll be easy to connect the power to them. We can tidy up the belt a little bit. And both of these are going to need smart shoots on them and connect into our storage drawer system to get nuggets of XP out. However, you'll notice over here, we don't actually have any nuggets of XP. Well, we've got one. And that one only happened because a fly fell into the system and got crushed. So where are we going to get those from? Well, currently all of my experience is being stored over at the mob farm underneath the ground in the basement in some storage drawers that are connected to my main storage drawer system. And what we've done to save a bit of space is actually convert those nuggets into blocks of experience, which, well, basically just saves us a bunch of space, really. But then the question is, do I want this diamond factory to be fully autonomous, i.e. generating its own nuggets of experience? And there's another item as well at the diamond farm that we're not generating that it's going to need, and that's a relatively simple one. And all it is is basically paper for sandpaper, because we've got to turn the rough diamonds into diamonds with sandpaper, which is going to require a whole bunch of paper. We've already got sand coming into the system, and if we felt like it, we could even use the diamonds that we're making to make diamond grit paper and do it that way, and, and that way we're not going to use as much paper and sand. But without sand in the system, or nuggets of experience, and in fact, all blaze cakes, this system's not going to be fully autonomous. And I think that's okay, because it's for diamonds. All we need to do is just load an absolute ton of paper into here, an absolute ton of experience into here, and an absolute ton of blaze cakes in here, and the factory will take care of itself until all of those things have run out. And I think that's the best way forward. And now that we know all of that, we've got to get those nuggets of experience in here, I guess. And I think around about 10,000 should be a good start. And I think 10,000 of those should do. So all we need now is paper, and we've only got 2,048 of that. But as I take those out of there, you'll see they start going back in again. And that's because our little create factory over here is actually producing that for us. In here, we've got all of the ingredients we'd ever need to create create stuff. And one of those is paper for sandpaper. So yeah, we don't need to worry about paper. This is just going to produce it in vast quantities for us and it'll just keep coming. So if we do ever run out over here, we can just chuck a whole bunch more into there. Which brings us back to these chutes, which we now need to connect to the storage system in order to get those nuggets of experience in. And a few seconds later, we've now got our storage system connected to those. Those have got nuggets of experience and have even got the belt powered. So we can move on to the next stage of the process, which is taking that aged thatch and then mixing it with some mud into mulch hmm okay let's do that then so first of all let's shove on a mixer let's stick a funnel on it to take the items coming off there have a quick snooze because this is all very hard work and then add a couple of item drains that are going to take the mud out of our system and put them in there as well now we need another funnel on there facing inwards ideally and another funnel on there to take the mud out and i guess we want these coming out one at a time rather than too many at once because otherwise we're going to get way too much stuff in there. So now that we've got a line that takes us all the way from dead bushes to mulch, we need to think about what's next, and that's compressing the mulch blocks into compressed mulch with a press. So that's nice and easy as well. We can extend this line and bring it this way a bit. This thing is wildly irritating being in my ear hole the whole time I'm building this, so for now I'm going to turn that off, because it's driving me crazy. Shut up. Let's just put that there so I don't lose it. 
And for now, what we're gonna do here is just take that straight out of there, straight into there, press it, and put it back into the storage system, only because I wanna test this is all gonna work before we start moving on to the next section. And in order to make it work, we're gonna need a whole bunch more power connecting to these bits, which shouldn't be too difficult. And yeah, what else is not difficult? I want these storage drawers on the other side. Chain drive all the way up to there, that's the press powered, and then we just need to get this powered. And with the cog on top, that's all of that done. Excellent. Right, we're all powered and ready to go, so I guess let's test it out. First of all, I need to spin this round and then change the number on that so we're just getting one mud coming through at once. And then I need to spin this one round and just get nine of those coming through at once so we're not getting too many of those either. And so far, absolutely... Oh, I need to spin that one round, I was going to say. There we go. And there we go. We're now turning those dead bushes into thatch. They are not getting aged. Did Oh, I didn't power these. Oh, I've made a boo-boo. Bit more chain drive then, coming out that way a bit. Another vertical gearbox there. There we go, now that's powered. But we've got stuff that we don't need in other things, so let's take all of this thatch out of here if we can. There we go. And now we're aging the thatch. That's going through into there. That should then be coming out of here, and there we go. We've got mulch in there. We just need a whole bunch of them, I think four, in order to make compressed mulch. And there we go. We're now generating compressed mulch into the top slot up there, which is temporary because we're going to just extend this line to do the other things as well. But that's all working. Lovely. Right, okay, let's smash this first section of this to bits all the way up to that point there. And now there really doesn't seem all that much left to do. And letting this thing run through all of the dead bushes we've already accumulated, you can see we've only got seven of those left and that's made a whole 184 compressed mulch. And just to remind you, there were over 6,000 in there and each one of those is gonna create us one piece of coal and we need nine pieces of coal for every diamond. So this is the, the well, geez, we're not gonna get many diamonds out of this at all, mate. Geez, right, anyway, worries about diamonds aside, it's time to create a spout and a press system to turn all of those things into coal. So let's do this. And before we let's do this, I actually want to get rid of these item drains here and just extend this belt out towards that. Pop a shaft in it so it can actually get going. And then that way we just have one continuous conveyor line going all the way from the start, all the way down to here. And we're now going to extend it a little, a little bit. A little bit? Jeez, I can speak today, honest guys. I've been practicing and everything. Right, I don't want this running though while we're doing that. So um, let's just delete that. And we're going to delete that and that as well so that we can extend our storage drawers and the belt. And we don't want to come any further than this line here, which is fine. A little bit more belt this way, please. A spout on there and a couple of presses and that should sort that process out. I can connect those presses with this gearbox and some chain drive and now we just need some lava into that spout and our lava's all the way over there. I guess I've got some digging to do. And we can just steal it straight off the source that's going to our power station there. That'll bring it this way. Ah, jeez. Oh, yeah, quite a lot. Jeez. Ah, stop. Oh, no. I love working with pipes. And that should get a reasonable amount of way over here. I'm not sure exactly how. Oh, is it going to go all the way? It did. It's gone all of the way. Oh, good. I don't have to muck about with any pumps then. Excellent. In which case, the next part of this little plan is done. We just need this to go somewhere, and what we need to do next is then... Oh, we need to put it back into the storage system so that we can actually turn the coal into coal blocks using compacting drawers. So we're going to need some more compacting drawers here. So what I think I'm going to do is scooch things about a bit. Let's take that one away for a minute, put it up the... Oh, jeez. Put it up there, grab the dead bushes, we'll put those there. We'll steal these compacting drawers here and we'll just shove those in there. And then this one here can go down. No, can go down there. There we go. And we'll just preload this with a bit of coal, lock it and quantify it, and then take that coal back in. You can't steal my coal, mate. That's mine. So now all I need to do here is just literally bring these storage drawers up here with a funnel going in like that. And that's this system done. Right, OK, let's get it started again then. We'll replace that. We'll put one of those back there. We should see some dead bushes coming through. They should get turned into... Oh, jeez. Oh, there we go. Hmm. We got one. But the problem here now is that we actually need to get all of the stuff that we already put in the system over back over to it because this is just temporary. So let's just take that out of there by hand. And I'm just going to shove it all onto this belt a stack at a time without picking it up ideally. No. Nope. <clears throat> That's just on the floor. Onto the belt. 
No, that's also on the floor. Okay, onto the belt. But it's not doing anything. Oh, I've missed a stage. We need to turn that compressed mulch into aged compressed mulch, which means we need another deployer with some more nuggets of experience at this point here. So we need to scooch all this down one block. Okay, everything has been successfully scooched one block, so let's pop a deployer in there. Let's stick a smart shoot on top of that. Some more storage drawery stuff, and I guess we can just run this straight across the top all the way over to this one but i don't want to connect it until i've put the nuggets in there so it doesn't get the wrong thing and then we're just going to need to power that as well so i think spinning it round would be a good start spinning that one round and then just nabbing a little bit of that chain drive there we go so let's just filter it with nuggets there nuggets there and then put one of those in there and now we've got that system in place so this should work let's grab our compressed mulch and test it one on there yep ah there we go now that's working okay good right let's sling it all on and this is the point where i realize i've made a big mistake all we're doing now is successfully creating hot compressed mulch which is not what we actually want and as you can see that's all going in there hot aged compressed mulch which is fine but what we actually need to do is send it around five times in order to create coal so this little system here whilst it's all fine and dandy is not going to work for us at all because it actually needs to be on a loop that shouldn't be too difficult actually normally i would make a completely separate little setup for that but because our dead bush system is so slow coming through we really don't have a great deal going on on this belt so what we can do here is do something a little bit sneaky Bring our storage drawers over this way a little bit like that. Grab another one of those, get some more item drains and put those on there. And we'll just send them back out of the system straight onto this belt and that should work. Assuming they don't just go flying off there. So let's grab one piece of this, take it back over here, put a funnel on there, stick that on there and then spin it round and let's just have one at a time coming out. But yes. There we go, that's worked. So we've now got a cycling system. It's gonna take those in there. They're gonna go back into there. And once they've been done five times, we should get the actual right item now. And that means that these do actually need a permanent storage drawer in this system. So they will take those out of there and put them in there. Oh, but they're different because they've got different MBT. Yeah, each time they go around, their MBT data is going to change. So they're going to need a drawer each. In which case, we'll just have some sneaky drawers around the back set up just for these. And now that's all working. They're all going round and round and round and round and doing everything they need to do. And they're all coming out over here into these bits here. And as you can see, this is the first stage, second stage, third stage, fourth stage which means the next stage should actually be the thing we want, but we haven't got any of those yet. So let's keep an eye on it and see what happens. And as you can see, occasionally we're getting a piece of coal through here now, so that should be going into the system it is. And for some reason we've got mulch in there. How did we end up with mulch in there? That shouldn't be in there. Let's just give it a slot just in case that happens again. But yeah, we're getting coal now. Look four coal blocks already and the reason we're getting mulch back in the system is because that process can fail so we do need a way of getting the mulch back out of the system if it's failed and putting back in again we also need to be able to get this compressed mulch out of there and back in again and that needs to come out next to this one so let's just have another one of those there and this one can be for the compressed mulch let's spin that round and set that down to one so that should get aged again and then sent back in again okay good but then the mulch, where does the mulch go? The mulch goes in at this point here. So we need another one of these set up here. Oh, geez, this is becoming a bit of a spaghetti mess. Stick it on there. Spin that one round. Set that down to one as well. And now everything should be able to get back through onto the system. Jeez. But providing it doesn't make too many mistakes, it should all be okay. And after giving all those blocks a few minutes to go through, you can see we've now got 20 blocks of coal. So after all of this time, we're going to have produced a whole 20 diamonds. Well, by the time we've finished off the rest of these processes. But before we get to the rest of these processes, I've got a question to ask you, and it's quite an important one. Believe it or not, this is episode 50 of this world, and that's a lot of episodes to do in a world. And because of all of the crazy contraptions, farms and factories we've built, there really isn't a great deal left that I haven't done, in terms of producing items at least. There's still a whole bunch of mods on this mod pack that I haven't explored, such as Enlightened, which fiddles about with the end. Uh, no, can we even get to it anymore? Over in the distance somewhere, there's a whole bunch of new blocks and biomes and creatures and items and things that I haven't 
never seen and never explored. But I don't think they really add a great deal to this Create Let's Play, if I'm being honest, and there's nothing I particularly want or need. Although maybe a nuclear furnace might be good. Or even a nuclear bomb. Not sure why I'd need one of those. And speaking of nuclear bombs... Oh! I'm back at spawn. I haven't been here in a long time. Alex's Caves, which there are none of around here because this world was loaded a long time before he added that mod, also has the ability to make nuclear bombs. And a whole bunch of other stuff as well, like magnets and things. But again, doesn't really help me with this create mod pack so much. In fact, having spent some time looking at both of those mods and all of the blocks and things that you can create, there really isn't a great deal that I would particularly need or want. And whilst in the next phase I could add more mods and do a whole bunch of exploration episodes, I kind of feel at this point that everything's just got a little bit creative mode. For one, I'm flying around with a backpack. Two, I've got access to just about any resource I could ever want in massive quantities through my Applied Energistics 2 wireless system. And three, this armor and stuff that I've got, I'm just invincible at this point. There really aren't any challenges or problems, like even if I fight the Wither. I don't take any damage. And if you're interested in seeing that, I did a video on that a few videos ago where I made a whole bunch of beacons. Or at least I got a whole bunch of nether stars. So that brings me to my question, and I think there's three possible answers. So answer number one would be to continue this world onto the next phase and basically carry on what we're doing. Which could involve adding some new mods potentially and exploring some of the things that I just haven't explored in this world yet. Like the end and like oceans as well. We've not done anything in oceans, we've not built any ships, have not even been to an ocean monument and played with the guardians and got prismarine and if you want me to do that then type hashtag continue into the comments and that way it's easy for me to see how many of you want me to do that answer number two is continue but restart and what that means is to basically stay on this world move to a new area but get rid of everything and i don't mean tear down all the buildings and things i mean things like getting rid of my ae2 storage interface so that i've got no access to all of these items getting rid of my armor and my tools and equipment and basically having to start from scratch rebuilding farms and systems in place probably more efficiently and better than I did the first time round in order to eventually build up so that I can connect it all back to this again and have a bunch of other new areas in this world and if you want me to do that type hashtag restart into the comments and then I'll know how many of you want me to do that the final answer is for me to start a new world and a new pack effectively a season two because this world is running on forge and whilst forge is great because it's got access to a massive amount of different mods it's also missing a few that I'd really like. You see, after all of that time playing Create Astral with Mr. Beardstone, I kind of got used to having Replay Mod. And Replay Mod's fantastic and really does enhance your experience, and there's just nothing like it for Forge. So I've been working on a new mod pack that's based around fabric, and whilst it is missing a whole bunch of the things that we would need to continue this world in it, it's also got a whole bunch of new mods, which I think are really exciting. So it would be very similar to this, but also different, new, and I've also got a whole bunch of ideas for how a new season would would go rather than just doing what we've done here and building a whole bunch of different areas with big old factories in i've got ideas for how we could make it really interesting which would still involve building lots of buildings with factories in but if you want me to do that then type hashtag season two in the comments and then i'll know how many of you want me to do that and being perfectly honest, I really don't mind which option we end up going with. Whilst I am quite keen for something new and something a little bit different, I'm really enjoying this world and everything it's got in it. Although it is feeling a little bit cheaty and OP at this point, especially with the fact that we're now going to be crafting diamonds, which is a particularly cheaty and OP thing to do. But I do love it. So uh, let's make some diamonds, in which case we need to continue our process, and that means turning coal blocks into really hot coal blocks with superheated blaze burn and blaze cakes and then turning that into compressed coal. How hard could it be? What could possibly go wrong? And the answer is nothing because I'm pretty much invincible at this point and I've got access to absolutely anything I want. So skipping forward slightly, I've put this system in place which should take our coal blocks, superheat them into hot coal blocks using this little system and then compress four of those at a time down into compressed coal blocks and then they're just going to go flying off the end over there. So in order to prevent them flying off the end over there, we need to set up the next stage of this which is another loop system which is going to put more lava on them and press them a bunch of times and that should turn them into rough diamonds. So that system is pretty much identical to this one over here. So we're going to need a spout there 
here again. Another couple of presses, a way to recirculate items back on there. And we're going to need to stop the belt here in order to get the items off. So we can pop a funnel on there. We just need to get some power onto these and we can do exactly what we did over here. So a bit of chain drive on there, spinning that one round with a shaft coming down from that and a vertical gearbox in there. Oh, and we've overstressed the system. A little power station's not keeping up. That's okay. We got another three steam engines on this we can add on to there. And we've got a bit of stress left now. That's good. And now all I need to do is connect a bunch of pipe to this down into the floor and ideally connecting up with that line over there. I've just got to bring it down under here, bend it around there a little bit and then connect those there. And that needs just turn in. There we go. Now we've got lava going up and that should hopefully reach it all the way it has done. Excellent. Let's just cover up that hole, make it look a little bit more tidy and that system should be just about ready to go. Let's find out. And in order to find out, all we got to do is replace these things with some of those. So that should allow blaze cakes out of there any second. There we go. And the mechanical arm's already... Oh, you put it in the base and you're supposed to be putting it in the blaze burner, mate. Jeez. Pick up from there, deposit in there, go. That's better. Good job. Now, this little blaze cake system could be a problem because that's always going to run regardless of whether we've got any items to be processed or not, which means eventually it's just going to burn through all of those blaze cakes for no reason. So what we should do here is have a threshold switch system on the coal to say only do it if we've actually got a reasonable amount of coal ready to be processed and say only activate if there's... Well, oh, geez, there's hardly any in there. That's the only problem. OK, the way we're going to make this easier on ourselves is we're going to put a storage downgrade in there and that means that a lot less can go in and that makes it a lot easier to actually control the threshold switch. So we want to say if there's none in there, then lock it. But if there's more than 10% in there, then unlock it. So it should be unlocked at the moment. So that means it can go so all we got to do is get rid of that and put one of those there and we also need to get oh no i can't do that one yet because we don't have the items but there we go coal blocks are going in hot coal blocks are coming out they're getting pressed wow and they just went straight through but now we're going to have that problem where they've got the mbt data going on which means that we need to fiddle about with our storage drawers again because they're going in here which is great but there's going to be four different varieties of them so me so we need more of these secret ones behind here so we'll just put them up there out of the way then we can come around here and grab those out of there put those in there instead and then we need to take these and tell this that they can come out of there to go back around again and then that needs converting into one of those and they should then start coming back out of there again any second now there we go lovely good and then we're going to get the second tier of those going around there which don't appear to be going anywhere at all well they've, they've gone in everything's gone in I'm very confused. We've got nothing out here. We've got none in there. So where did all of those go? Huh? Now there is a 50% chance on this process that those rough diamonds fail and you end up getting random salvage back, which in this case, I believe is just a piece of coal. So um, that it's not impossible that all of those ended up as a piece of coal. And now we've got no coal blocks left. So I'm going to grab a whole bunch of coal out of my inventory and shove that all in there and see if we can get this going a bit better see what happens this time let's just get rid of that and then we can see what's going on nothing at all okay different plan then instead move it fly instead of move <laughs> instead of that we're going to put a filter on there so it only allows those through and then we can see if anything else is happening here because they shouldn't just be vanishing this into nothing they should keep going round until they fail so now we've got a storage drawer for each of the stages of that and so far nothing's going on here because oh we've actually got a rough diamond so that can't go through and coal can't go through so yeah we've had an error there so let's unclog that filter allow those things to go through that means the rough diamonds should now be in this chest which they are so let's give them their own chest and let's keep our eye on this and see how many rough diamonds we actually get from all of that coal that I just shoved in there, which was 64 blocks worth. Well, that all seemed to go pretty much OK. We did get a lot of coal back instead of rough diamonds. But if we look over here, we got a whole 24 rough diamonds worth from that. So that's pretty good. And you might be thinking, well, this is a really rubbish way of getting diamonds, Foxy you Notel. Know, you hardly get any back. And I think if you look at the maths of this whole thing, you'd be absolutely right. 
So taking a second to actually do the maths on this, I think my diamond processing system is pretty fair because in order to get one rough diamond, which is the equivalent of one diamond, we actually need to process over 875,000 cobblestone. And the way that works is because there's a 50% chance of getting a diamond from a compressed coal block, you need four hot coal blocks to create one of those. You need nine coal to create one coal block. There's only a 95% chance of getting coal from one of the compressed mulches, so you need extra of those. You need four mulch to make one compressed mulch. You need nine dead bushes to make one thatch. You only get a 5% chance of getting a dead bush from a red sand, and you need four clay balls to make one clay block, and there's only a 25% chance of getting a clay ball from sand. So if you work all the way through this, doing all of the maths from start to finish, Finish, to get one diamond you need nearly a million cobblestone which is pretty crazy but I think that makes this system a lot more fair than well other systems I've seen where they just turn coal into diamonds and as a result of this we're probably not going to get many diamonds from it and in order to work out exactly how many diamonds we should expect from this over time we really need to know how fast our cobblestone generators are going so I think I need to do some tests and the way I'm going to do some tests is to disconnect these two things to stop them pinching any of that cobblestone and then we can just let the cobblestone filter into here and I can time it over five minutes and then figure out how many diamonds we might expect from that or more likely how many hours we could expect to wait per diamond. So in five minutes, we got exactly 8,000 cobblestone, which is quite a lot. And that means we get 96,000 cobblestone per hour. And in terms of diamonds per hour, that is one diamond every nine hours and seven minutes, which means it would take a week to get 18 diamonds with the server running 24 hours a day. So perhaps my system is a little on the slow side. Jeez, I didn't realize it was gonna be that slow. So maybe we should make this system go a little bit faster than that. So we're getting a little bit more than 18 diamonds in a week. And there was me worried about how much sandpaper we were going to be going through earlier on. It's so mad, guys. We'll probably use a piece a week. That's fine. Jeez. So I've loaded the system with a bunch of sandpaper instead of paper and I've made this little system which is gonna sand our rough diamonds and turn them into diamonds. All it needs is a little bit of chain drive and off we go. We're now producing diamonds from our rough diamonds and once that's run out we can wait another week until we get some more. There we go, it's done. That was easy. So now we got diamonds. We have officially done an illegal thing in Minecraft and we've created a factory that automatically generates diamonds very, very, very slowly. I would like it to go a bit quicker. And we've got all this space over here. But if I add a whole bunch more cobblestone generators in, we're going to be overstressed because we don't have much more stress over here. So uh, without further ado then, this factory obviously needs a building around it, so I guess it's time that I built a building around this factory and hopefully by the time I've done that we'll have a whole bunch more diamonds. I doubt it. I doubt it. Maybe 27. We'll see. <laughs>
Well, there we go. That's the building done and inside. Not a great deal's changed. We've got a few girders and some lamps around and we've got a whole bunch more cobblestone generators generating us a massive amount more cobble. Before we had two creating 8,000 cobblestone every five minutes and now we're creating 32,000 every five minutes, which is over 380,000 an hour, which equates to one diamond every two hours and 17 minutes, which is 73 diamonds a week. Hooray! Uh, but unfortunately we haven't had any more even though it's taken me more than that amount of time and that's because we've just had bad luck with our coal blocks getting turned into diamonds they've all been failing and turning into coal which isn't ideal oh and for all of those of you in the comments telling me there's a better way to make coal and there's a whole bunch of different ways of doing diamonds from charcoal and things like that they're data packs and add-ons that I don't have. In my pack, there is no other recipe for coal other than smelting coal stuff, crushing down in ignite, whatever that is, and blasting coal stuff. The only way I can make coal is the way I've done it with the compressed mulch. Likewise, there's no recipe for diamonds other than doing it the way that I've done it. So there isn't really any other way of doing it, but what I can do is delve into my pockets and pull out the 11,000 blocks of coal that I've got from our fortress farm and shove them all in here that I, I can't shove them in there because we put a storage downgrade on it. We'll just shove a chute on there, stick a big old double chest on it and fill this full of blocks of coal. I don't need them for anything else. And it has just occurred to me that all of this coal is not staying in this chest. It's all getting sucked into the storage system. And I guess it's, yeah, it's just going in this spare box over here, so I could have just put it in there, I guess. But anyway, we've got an absolute ton of coal in the system now, which means this thing can run at full capacity. That blaze burner's going to just stay blazing hot, and we're going to be pr producing diamonds in no time. Maybe. I mean, this, this little process takes a while. But it's certainly going to be a lot quicker than 18 a week, jeez. Right, anyway, that is this diamond factory 100% complete. We now have diamonds for days, a whole 26 of them. What more could we possibly want other than a world download, I guess, for my patrons and an updated version of this mod pack for all of you guys that want to play it on CurseForge. Oh, and by the way, I called this building Breeze. I wanted it to be reflective of our netherite factory, which is over there, which is the Inferno, but I wanted it to be brighter and lighter, which is why I've built it out of ice blocks. I've never built with packed ice before, but I think it kind of works. I quite like the colour scheme. Anyway, this could well be the last episode of this season, depending on how you guys vote in the comments. So if you want this world to stick around, then make sure you vote. For now, though, I'm just going to say goodbye, and I'll definitely see you in the next one, because, uh, well, regardless, my little Create Let's Plays and building stuff and making Create stuff is not going away.